Last time on Racer TV, the X Factor White Tails GNCC proved to be a challenge once again. However, the determined Caleb Russell would not be denied. Jumping out to the lead early on in the tough conditions, he was able to maintain a consistent 45 second lead for nearly all day long and brought home win number three of the season and career win number 57. Today in Ohio, a place where he can literally call home on the Russell family farm, home of Sunday Creek Raceway. Caleb Russell looks to get back to his winning ways here after suffering losses the last two years. It's the historic 30th running of the Wisecoat John Penton GNCC and home to many of the greatest stories ever told about GNCC racing. What greatness awaits the hills of southeastern Ohio today? Stick around. GNCC Live is next. CC Racing Series presented by Specialized, an AMA National Championship. Well, here we are, Landon, Millfield, Ohio, for the 30th Wiseco John Penton. A lot of history has been made here over the years. We may have some more of that here today, but first, let's get a recap of what happened just a couple weeks ago. Yeah, a couple weeks ago, we were in uh, Peru, Indiana at the X Factor GNCC. Um, I had some really good racing. We had some gnarly conditions. Caleb Russell was able to come out on top again. Thad Duvall in the number two spot. I know Thad probably wasn't real happy with, uh, with, with the distance that was between him yeah. and Caleb all day long. I know he wanted to be there uh, applying pressure for the lead and uh, just didn't work out for him. So I know he's going to be wanting more today. Um, in third place, though, we had a, uh, a new podium finisher yeah. for XC1. Fantastic. Josh, Josh Toad is impressive. Big, big finish for him. I'm sure he's pumped. I'm sure he's going to want to continue that yep. into today. Carried into today. And, of course, the uh, the XC2 class, uh, Ben Kelly, who has been consistent all season long, takes another win there. But Craig DeLong finishing out on the box in second. And in third place, Austin Lee rounding out the box in that XC2. And, of course, the FMF XC3 a couple weekends ago. Yeah, we had uh, Jesse Ansley grabbing another win. I know he grabbed a few wins there at the beginning. Uh, Cody Barnes was able to sneak yeah. in and grab a few wins. Uh, but now Jesse Ansley, I think that's two in a row at I, least now. I believe it's two, but um, I, Cody Barnes still with that points lead. Yeah, we, uh, we really have some good racing there in that XC3 class, especially between those two there. And uh, I think we're in for some good racing today. It's going to be a treat. Will history be made today? Here at the Wise Co. John Penton. We'll find out in just a second. But first, let's go down to Jared Bolton with the Yamaha track description. Thanks, guys. We're here at the 30th annual John Penton GNCC for this week's Yamaha track description. For 30 years of racing, that means there's a ton of history at this event. And there's a reason we keep coming back. People love this place. This is a great track. There's a lot of different trails out there, a little something for everybody. There's some really fast sections. There's some really tight sections. There's some technical stuff. And there's some really easy stuff. When you get down on these bottoms, you find these big rocks, down these big creek runs. It gives something for the technical guys to enjoy. Get out in these fast field sections and out here on the Sunday Creek Motocross facility. It gives something for those high speed guys to enjoy. Got a little bit of rain Thursday night and uh, Friday morning. It's going to be a little slick at the beginning of the weekend, but everything wears on. It's going to be a great weekend. I think we're going to see some of the best conditions we've ever seen here at the John Penton. That's this weekend's Yamaha track description. Back to you guys. Well, thanks, Jared. Now let's take it down to the start line with Rodney Tomlin. lot guys and down here on the starting line now as we're getting set to roll for this like we said a lot today the 30th running of this Wiseco John Penton GNCC and why do we keep touting that well it is the longest standing GNCC on the circuit and of course it holds a lot of special memories and when you celebrate three decades anywhere you know something special we've got some special here today as we did yesterday in the ATV side of things and well as today goes we're a little behind schedule but nothing like what we saw in yesterday's ATV racing action uh, right now it was uh, being swept from the uh, morning class races and uh, and the uh, 
are on their way in to get our course description so these riders know what to look forward to. Will we be running the John Penton section this year? Will we not be running the John Penton section? That question will be answered coming up here in just a few minutes. And, of course, as we roll into this Wise Coat John Penton GNCC, follow me on over here. It w no John Penton GNCC would be complete without the man and the myth and the legend himself, Mr. John Penton, as we make our way over here to say hello to a 94-year-old man that, that kind of set the standard and set the stage for what we have here today in off-road racing. And, John, welcome once again here to, well, to uh, Millfield, Ohio, Sunday Creek Raceway and what we call the John Pinton GNCC. Well, good. Hi. <laughs> Hi, John. And it's good to have you here. You know, you and I talked a little bit earlier. We did an interview a little bit earlier and talked about, uh, you know, uh, how it all started back uh, when you were racing in the 40s. I mean, you would literally ride a motorcycle, a street bike, to a uh, field. You would take the uh, street tires off, put knobbies on, and go racing on that machine. Yeah, we had to do about everything to get through the mud. <laughs> and, of course, uh, you were able to make it happen. But uh, just being and, uh, so glad to have you out. Anything you want to pass along to the masses that are out here? No, just good luck. And that's all that you're going to need is good luck. And, and John knows all about good luck, and he knows about making his own luck because that's what it takes in order to be a, a great competitor. And you see, he made his own great luck by creating the uh, Penton Motorcycles, which eventually become the KTM, which we celebrate here today with our KTM Youth Day. He celebrated a lot of things, and one rider that came up through the ranks on a KTM, he's riding a, a KTM sister brand motorcycle now, and it's a Husqvarna, but we're talking here with uh, Lane Michael, whom, well, Lane, I got to tell you, we haven't had a chance a lot this season to talk to you this year because, well, you just haven't been around, and what times you have been around has been kind of exciting, but uh, you're back, my friend, and, uh, but again, not dressed and ready to go race, and what's going on? Yeah, so just some complications. Uh, you know, I broke a collarbone there in uh, preseason and uh, had to miss a few, came back, and then, uh, you know, I had an okay finish um, at uh, Camp Coker, I think it was. I tried racing Steel Creek, and unfortunately, I busted uh, my arm open, had to get some staples, but uh, it's just been one of those years for me. I mean, I've uh, been fairly good throughout my, uh, you know, career of racing uh, with injuries, but this year, it's kind of all tackled me all at once here, so... I can't do nothing but laugh now. I mean, it's 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 been rough. Uh, don't get me wrong. Like I, I want to be out, bad, but uh, unfortunately I can't. So, just got to stay positive here and uh, you know work on what I can. Um, you know I'm able to kind of get back on the bicycle next week, so I have that to look forward to now. Uh, as of right now, I've just been twiddling my thumbs or something. So, yeah, I had, had the surgery done. I'm two weeks uh, post op now, so it's uh, just a waiting game. Got to wait on it to heal and. I thought I did that right the first time, but uh, unfortunately, my body just didn't heal the bone. So, you know, we're uh, we're making progress. They did a bone graft this time, so everything should be should be smooth. Just gotta wait it out, and uh, whenever whenever I get released this time, I'm <laughs> I'm gonna give it a go. So, uh, hopefully, I'll be back before summer break. I might uh, make it to the, the the round after snowshoe, but um, you know, if if I don't feel ready, then uh, you know we're not gonna do it. Cause, you know, realistically, I've only had 10 rides on a motorcycle, even with the races that I've raced this year. So it's kind of it's just it's been a whole year. Yeah, it's it's hard to believe. You know, you motorcycle for a living yet you aren't racing motorcycle it's got to be tough on you man yeah especially this year you know i was kind of really excited for the year um and just you know it's been one thing after another here but you know it's kind of it, it i think it might be a blessing in disguise a little bit just kind of you know it realizes how much i want to be out there and uh you know i'm not able to so just have to uh, stay positive and, uh, you know, when I come back, just be patient and, uh, you know, be ready for, for after break. When, when I come back, that's when I can come back and uh, just be ready to battle. I mean, I, I want to be up there with those guys and uh, battling with the rest. And unfortunately, I haven't, um, you know, been able to do this year nor last year. So I have a lot to prove and I uh, just haven't been able to, to do so. So just got to put in the work and hopefully when we come back, we'll, uh, we can be up there. All right, man, stay hungry, okay? That's the plan. All righty, that's Lane Michael, 523, if you've uh, recognized that number in years past. And, uh, of course, uh, unfortunately, we don't get a chance to see him out there. We have our AMA, the American Motorcyclist Association, off-road racing manager, Eric Kudla here, who's probably got the coolest hat in the place right now. 
ISDT USA. What's that all about, man? So that's what actually our ISDE used to be called. Uh, when it first started uh, in 1913, it was the ISD, uh, International Six-Day Trial. And it was more a manufacturer's event where people were trying to see how long their machines would last. Um, and since then, it's evolved to the ISDE uh, after, you know, a hundred years or so. It stopped during World War One. stopped during World War II. Um, thanks to John Penton, we actually started going in, in uh, 1970, or 1964. Um, and it took all the way until 2016 to take the win. And actually, uh, Lane Michael was on that team. Um, so yeah, that's a very, in a sentence, that's what it is. Wow, and uh, a rather good history lesson there as well, to be honest with you, Eric. And, uh, you know, uh, good to have you out. Uh, as we introduce you, you are the off-road racing manager, and that's the one thing that we like to talk about uh, whenever you're here and the, your duties there. Uh, you know, the American Motorcyclists Association, we know as a governing body for racing, but it's so much deeper than that, and th that's something we've talked about a few times this weekend already. But these guys that are here today, maybe not realizing just exactly what is going on and what the depth of the American Motorcycles Association is. Yeah, I was in the same boat myself, actually, because I was just a member, just a racer the same way until I got more involved and, and went to this position. But one of the biggest things that we do is government relations. And so what we do, what it, Basically, what we are is a giant organization, all of us as members, that help to keep our sport alive. Uh, simple things uh, like the lead laws that we were able to get overturned, uh, like the Bikes for Beef thing that we have going on right now. Uh, we have another thing with uh, tariffs and uh, the larger KTMs. And like I mentioned yesterday in Ohio, uh, we have a noise ordinance that's uh, regarding concerts, but it's, it's lumping all of us in with it and gun ranges and drag strips. And so that's something that we do um, as an organization to make sure that we can all keep racing, um, be competitive and have somewhere to go from four-year-olds to 80-year-olds to beginners all the way to pros. And it goes past 80-year-olds. We had 82-year-old Jake Strayton uh, racing here last year in the ATV side of things. That was pretty impressive, huh? Oh, absolutely. We got a lot of these guys that just keep on rolling. And, uh, you know, if you're doing things like this that you love, it doesn't matter how old you are, you still get to do it. Th that's great. And, you know, and it's because of great organizations, the great organization of the American Motorcycles Association and all the people that work there before you and, and obviously the, uh, you working there and all the people that are working together right now. You guys got a lot on your plate. You got a lot of work to do, but you, you seem to make it happen. And uh, uh, I hope that you guys continue to do so. Oh, absolutely. That's the goal. We're coming up on our 100th year, uh, coming up here pretty quick. And uh, one of the things that I uh, you know, mentioned yesterday is it's not just us at the office. There's only 55 people at the office, 11 in the racing department, two in off-road. But it's really all of our members, all of our clubs, all of our districts, all of our organizations, all combined, all teamed up that really makes the AMA what it is today. So I'm glad to be a part of it. And one thing to, to point out, we want folks to remember that, you know, the AMA is here uh, from an individual to a group, group an organization, uh, you know, locally, uh, regionally, statewide, or nationally, or even internationally, if it becomes that, I imagine. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the AMA is actually the uh, federation of the United States. So if you're going to be, you know, Team USA, if you're going to be going overseas or anything like that, that's through us, or vice versa, if they're coming here, uh, like with Daniel Milner and those guys coming out this way, um, it's, that's, that's who we are. Is we're the federation to the United States, so it's, it's awesome to be a part of it. So glad to have you guys as a voice. Keep speaking loud and making uh, off-road racing and in motorcycling in general, uh, keep, it, uh, keep it alive. Same to you. All right, thanks a lot, Eric Kudla, once again, the off-road racing uh, manager from the American Motorcyclists Association, still waiting on uh, Jared Bolton and Ryan Eccles as we find one of our fine sponsors here with us this uh, weekend, talking about Rob Fox from Dunlop Tires, and Rob, welcome out. You know, we uh, had the opportunity to speak yesterday out here during ATVs. You said, hey, you know, we don't even uh, produce those right now, and uh, we're still out here uh, supporting the sport, and uh, good to see you guys out. Yeah, no, always uh, fun to come out to the GNCCs and check out the racing and all the people. I mean, this is the uh, core of the of motocross, so we're happy to be here. I was hanging out yesterday, helping change some tires and checking out the scene. So uh, just because they don't make ATV tires anymore doesn't mean we still don't support it. So we're here for everybody. If you guys have any questions or help, you know, we're here for you guys. And you're here, obviously, for the two-wheel guys. I mean, uh, you, the one thing about Dunlop tires is, you know, it seems like every year, year and a half, there's always some new advancement in tire technology that you guys are, are, are introducing. Yeah, we don't, we don't just sit back on our morals, what we have. We're always looking to improve our product to make it better, and there's always room for improvement. So uh, this year, our big news was our MX-33 soft intermediate tire. And uh, doing our t my tire survey just now, you might have seen me walk around. I see a lot of you guys have found that tire and, uh, and trusted and use it. So uh, we're really happy with that product. 
um, is available for 50s all the way up to big bikes and also for 18 inch for you guys that are running the 18 inch rear wheels. So we're really happy with the product. It uh, replaces our MX3S for the soft intermediate terrain and a little bit more durable, a little bit more performance. So uh, we're happy with that. We also have our AT81, which a lot of guys are running too for the off-road stuff and a little bit more durable tire for the all-terrain uh, tracks you guys have. So I'm um, always working on something. We always got stuff up our sleeve. So uh, make sure you keep on checking us out uh, if you need any tire needs. Always a great incentive to buy also. Great price, prices, track side, and even contingencies. Yeah, no, we uh, bumped up our contingency this year. Uh, we want to help you guys out. So uh, we have the best track side pricing, uh, better than online pricing. So make sure you come on by and see us at the Gear Racewear trailer. Uh, we can uh, see all of our products. And uh, if you need anything mounted, we can uh, take care of it for you. All righty, sounds real good. Rob, I appreciate you being down. Now, you're located, your home office is right here in Ohio. I guess Dunlop home office is up here in Ohio, huh? Uh, Dunlop's actually located in uh, Buffalo, New York, but um, I'm actually up in Cleveland now, so uh, we're just working out of there. I travel so much, I, they have me work from home. So for me, it's only a three-hour drive down here, so I uh, couldn't miss it for the world. Hey, man, glad to have you out. Rob Fox again from Dunlop Tires. Make sure you stop over and check out the great things that they've got going on at, uh, well, it's your local dealer, also here at the gear store uh, at the GNCC's itself. And again, uh, finding ourselves in a, uh, a, a holding pattern once again as we wait for our uh, trail bosses, our junior trail bosses of uh, Ryan Eccles and uh, Jared Bolton to make their way in and uh, check the uh, many great things that they've got to check on the race course to make sure it's ready to go for this afternoon. Uh, they must be putting in the John Penton section. It's the only thing that I can figure. That must be what's taking them so long. They must have taken it out and getting ready to throw it back in. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm gambling on right now, and that's what I'm hoping for as to uh, why it's taking so long for these guys to get in here as uh, we were expecting to get underway about 1.30. Unfortunately, uh, like yesterday, uh, the trail seems to uh, have a little different idea. You know, we talked about it yesterday, this being the 30th anniversary of this Weisco John Penn GNCC, uh, a big race celebrating three decades. You have to think that something big is a brewing. Uh, with these uh, late times. Yesterday it was a two-hour delay before we were able to get underway with the ATV racing uh, for the uh, pro program and today I'm beginning to wonder if it's not going to be close to, <laughs> close to the same <laughs> bracket there as we are now approaching I guess the uh, one hour mark which still uh, that's nothing out of the ordinary for uh, GNCC on a day like today so uh, we were just hoping and uh, anticipating being able to get started a little earlier but like we said uh, roll the dice. We roll craps this time, so uh, we're just going to have to bear with it and uh, kill time until the boys get over here, and uh, we'll have to find some great folks to uh, roll it, run out here and talk to. You know, I had a chance to stop up and talk to some folks uh, earlier during the uh, Pro Pit interviews, and some folks I didn't get a chance to talk to as uh, we'll head down through here. And a couple of guys that I really wanted to talk to were, uh, well, this guy right here, Mike Wachowski, and uh, Mike, uh, welcome back to the XC2 Pro-Am, row number two out here, or I guess it's not Pro-Am, it's XC2 Pro 250s. Uh, and uh, welcome out here, big season for you so far, man. Uh, you know, we keep a close eye on you, and one reason is, is because, well, you've been a, a big factor in GNCC for a, a lot of years. And not only that, you, you, you've taken a bike that was unproven, man, and, and you're starting to make this thing, well, you're proving its worth, and you're proving your worth as well. Yeah, honestly, this uh, Beta 250RR is a really good race machine, and uh, I think we proved that this year. Last year was a big learning year with the bike and just myself and learning it, and uh, now we're on the right track, and uh, the bike's feeling good, and just hope to put it on the podium again. There you go. And uh, let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, here we're at the John Pinton GNCC, man. Uh, you, you been through a lot of GNCC's about everything that uh, GNCC has to offer. As we roll into Ohio, you've been out checking things out. What are you expecting out of today's race? Uh, I think it's going to be tough for sure. Um, I've just got to look at a little, a uh, couple sections and uh, they look pretty tough. And But I mean, the, it's dry now. This, this weather is awesome right now and it's nice and hot for us. But it's going to be a tough three hours. But yeah, I just hope to put it on the podium and just have a solid three hours and uh, just don't want to get stuck. Well, we wish you all the luck in the world, but I do have one question to ask you. We asked all these other folks when we were talking to them earlier today, uh, what's your favorite John Penton GNCC memory? Uh, I'd have to go back to the amateur days when I was in 250A. Um, 
it was like one of my best tries. I just went out and had fun, and I think I ended up like 14th overall, which was pretty good then. And uh, I won the A class then. But yeah, it was just like a kind of unreal day, and just kind of I just remember I had a ton of fun. So that's that's a big memory. Well, that sounds like a good one. Mike Witkowski, and real quick, I want to talk to this guy right here who's riding red, the 123 of Austin Lee. Austin, you know, uh, congratulations. It looks like uh, things are really coming together now on this uh, Honda machine. I know you had your struggles. A brand-new machine at the beginning of the season. Took you a couple races to get it uh, dialed in, but it looks like it's working well now. Yeah, for sure. I think just needs a little time, and uh, we're, we're learning, and we're getting better each and every weekend. So uh, as long as we keep doing that, I'm, I'm happy got to be happy yeah the results have been coming uh, talk about the first few rounds of this season yeah the first few rounds was a little rough you know just trying to figure out figure things out and uh uh yeah we we started clicking clicking some things off there at the, uh, the last couple of races we've been on the box so uh hopefully we can stay there my goal is to be on the box for sure and uh yeah, just put in a solid ride. Well, I'll tell you, probably some big anxieties heading into this year. A new team, uh, a new bike. Uh, you had a lot to, to look forward to, and it seems to all be falling into place. Yeah, for sure. Just uh, a lot of work to do, and, uh, you know, just put in the work, and uh, the result will come. So what are you expecting out of today? Today's going to be good. I love this place, and I love when it's routed like this. So, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be great. All righty, man. And your favorite John Fenton GNCC memory? Uh, probably when I ate it over there and was able to jump up and uh, keep going uh, back in the amateur days. So, uh, yeah. I remember that on the moto track, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Uh, you know, I was thinking that just before you said that. But that's uh, Austin Lee, folks. And uh, that, my friends, is uh, what uh, where we are as far as this. Looks like we're going to shift gears a little bit here again today. And we're going to try to be prepared for when Ryan Eccles and Jared Bolton make their way in. We're going to turn things over right now to Mr. Ricky Towery as he asks a blessing on today's race. Thank you, Rodney. Hey, let's go, Lord. And let's have a word of prayer together this afternoon. Heavenly Father, once again, we just thank you for bringing us all together safely so we can come out here and have some fun together. We just ask you, we'll watch over these riders this afternoon. Lord, you'll keep them safe. Let them go out there and have a good time together. Once again, we ask you bless on our military men and women throughout this whole world fighting for our freedom so we can have a beautiful country to live in. Lord, watch over our leaders each and every day. Lord, we thank you for Mr. Penton and his family, what they mean to us, what they've done to this sport. Continue to watch over that family and be with them. Lord, we just thank you once again for all the blessings that you give us each and every day. Take us all home safely when this is over with. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen, and thanks a lot, Ricky. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you would, please remain standing. Stand at attention, remove those caps, and cross those hearts as we honor the greatest nation in the world with the playing of our national anthem.
Well, there you have it, folks. The stage is set, and GNCC is about to resume here in the hills of southeastern Ohio. And as we get set to roll through these uh, Athens County, Ohio hills, we got an Athens County, Ohio native right here that actually took his first and only GNCC win right here in 2010. We're talking about the 121 of Corey Buttrick, a product of GNCC racing through the youth ranks, through the amateur ranks, and right into the pro ranks. And I'll tell you, Corey, it's, it's been a, a little bit tough for you the last decade or so but since that first win here at uh, at the uh, John Penton GNCC, but you're still here. You're still coming out, and you're back for another season of GNCC racing, another year of John Penton. Yeah, man, it's pretty wild that it's been that long, but um, we're still digging. It's still how bad we want to be here, you know, just like everybody else. Uh, we work hard, and we've had a good year. Unfortunately, you know, results haven't shown that well, but um, we're going to keep clicking away, though, and, and it's, they're going to come. I mean, no matter what, when you're working this hard, it's bound to pay off. How hungry are you to be up there today? Man, I'm starving. Well, that, that's all we're going to say right there. Corey Buttrick starving to get back up there in the thick of things. And what better place to do it than right here in his home state, in his home county, in his backyard, the wise coach John Penton GNCC. We'll see if he can do it. But first, let's meet our starting lineup. Rolling to the line first today aboard the number one, hailing from Boonville, North Carolina, on an FMF factory KTM. Caleb Russell! Rolling to the line second today in points aboard the 989. He won here one year ago from Williamstown, West Virginia on a Rockstar Energy Factory Husk Barna. Bad, bad Duval! Rolling to the line third today in points. He opened the season with a big win, and he's been a threat ever since. Riding aboard the 514 from Hodges, South Carolina, on a Teeley Energy Racing KTM, Stu Baylor. The 739, rolling to the line fourth today in points from Morganton, North Carolina, on a Rockstar Energy Factory Husqvarna Racing Machine, Trevor Bollinger. The rookie, ranked fifth in points, aboard the number 206 from Winstead, Connecticut, fresh off a third-place position podium at the X-Factor, riding an FMF KTM factory racing machine, Josh Toad. Up next, aboard the number 114, he was a big key player in last year's racing here at the John Penton, and he's going to see if he can make it happen once again. Hailing from Australia on a Babbitt's Online Kawasaki Monster Energy Team Green Machine, Josh Strang. Rolling to the line today, seventh in points. He rides aboard the number 127, also on the Babbitt's Online Monster Energy Kawasaki from Livingston, Tennessee, Jordan Ashburn. Up next, eighth in points aboard the number 410. He's a red rider, my friends, on the factory Honda, backed by Phoenix Honda Racing from Birdsboro, Pennsylvania, Andrew DeLong. And up next, he is a true product of Athens County and of the GNCC Racing Nation. Riding aboard the 121 from Logan, Ohio, on the Husqvarna XFXR Thornhill Automotive Husky, Corey B. Corey Buttrick. Up next, riding aboard the number 212 from Duval, Washington, on an Ampro Yamaha. He's rough. He's rowdy. Ricky Russell. Rolling to the line next, this rider literally took a win here, I believe his first win three years ago here at the John Penton GNCC, riding on the 314 from Belton, South Carolina, on a Teeley Energy Racing KTM, Grizzly Grant Baylor. Rolling next aboard the number 31 machine from Australia on a KTM IMS FMF back machine, Daniel Milner. And last and certainly not least, aboard the 78 machine, also from Australia on the IMS FMF KTM, 
Lyndon Snodgrass. And that, ladies and gentlemen, your opening or your starting lineup for this 30th running of the Wise Coach John Pitton GNCC. And as our riders find their way onto the starting line in their final start positions before the drop of the green flag and the start of this race, we're going to ask you guys to shut them down. As we've got uh, finally our course description that we've been waiting on here is uh, Jared Bolton. Last time I heard about you, you were just at the six and a half mile marker getting ready to hit the seven. Sounds like it's been a, a heck of a track for you since then. Tell us what we got to look forward to. Yeah, Rodney, it got a little interesting there for a little bit, but guess what? After that, it got really good. And uh, there's a lot of places that are really good out there for you guys, and there's a lot of places that are a little slick, a little nasty, but you guys are uh, you guys are the big show of the whole weekend, and uh, it's nothing you guys can't handle. This is true GNCC out here. So you're going to take off from the start, uh, work your way over here to the road crossing. Uh, you got a little uphill on the other side of the road there. Uh, up to the top of the hill, go right, and you can pick up some faster trail, take you down to a little quick field crossing. You guys are going to run out around, up around the three-mile mark. Uh, good open stuff. You're not going to see the four-mile mark. That's some stuff we took out yesterday. Uh, it was really nasty in there, and I would think you're probably going to be glad you don't see it. And I really hate to do this to you guys, but there's no Penton section this year. And, uh, you know, that's probably my personal favorite part of this whole track, but it was underwater on Thursday before it rained. So you guys can only imagine what it's like out there now. Uh, so you, when you get out past that three, you're never going to see the four, or you'll never see the four. You're going straight to the five. Uh, good open stuff. It gets a little slick in there right before the five, and then after that five mile mark, you're going to drop down in a little uh, rock creek crossing. There's a couple of different ways up. You can go right. That's the fast line. Uh, a little harder, or you can go the easy way, which is straight ahead, and it loops up and ties into the youth track. Uh, nothing too hard there. That'll bring you back around. Got some double track trail with a couple of little ups and downs in it. Uh, there's one valley in there that's really rutted out. It's going to be tough, but the same thing. There's a bunch of different lines up it. You guys shouldn't have any trouble. The morning made it through it, no problem. Uh, that'll bring you all the way back around to some more double track trail over the six mile mark. You gotta drop down a little hill, out around a little bench. Uh, it's a little rutted out, it's gonna be a little tough, but you guys can handle it. Uh, you'll drop off the hill there. Uh, nothing too hard there. Uh, more back and forth, ups and downs. There's some really good stuff. That's where the trail starts to get really good is out around the seven mile mark. Uh, good stuff there, and then you'll pop out in the field real quick, head over to the FMF PowerPoint. You got Good uphill there, uh, and then you're going to come back down the hill, work your way around, uh, drop down off of the little valley, get the big flat rock uh, uphill there, go up the hill, come back to the track side, just after the eight mile mark there, that'll bring you back around, more track side pitting over to the nine mile mark. Uh, right past that nine mile mark, you guys are going to turn left, and you're going down a super, super technical rocky uh, ravine, and that will bring you down to that big creek run we always do out here. You'll run down the creek run. You got a big climb up out of there. Uh, nothing too hard. The quads didn't have any trouble with it yesterday. You guys will come back out of there. That'll run you out to the 10 mile mark. Good easy trail all the way to the 10. And then just a little bit after the 10, you're going to pop out in the field. And then you're going field, woods, field, woods, back and forth a few times. It'll bring you all the way over the motocross track to the 11 mile mark. Run out and around that motocross track, in and out of the finish. Back off the motocross track, up and around the pro pits. You're going to come back across this hill directly in front of the start here. When you come back, you're going to drop off the hill, come back across the road, and run all the way back around the start. Run out around this uh, grass track to the left of the start there, around the mulch pile, and head back away from uh, where you're at there. Big piece of woods back here behind the uh, start. That'll bring you the two-mile mark. So uh, that'll tie you back in where you started at. I'm going to call it uh, just a little bit of stuff we cut out. You guys are still right at 11 miles. Uh, like I said, there's some really, really good dirt, and there's still some really, really slick dirt. But overall, this is going to be a great course, and I think you guys are going to have fun. So good luck, be safe, have fun, and pay attention to those arrows, everybody. We blocked a bunch of stuff, and we went back and double blocked stuff. Just stay on the track, pay attention to those arrows, and you won't have any trouble. All righty, thanks a lot, Bolton. Just want to remind everyone, safety first. GNCC racing, like all motorsports, can be dangerous. Racers, now that you've had an opportunity to inspect the course, have heard the race procedures and the description of the course. If you feel that either you or your machine is not...
time for you to withdraw for a complete refund of your entry fee, no questions asked. Remember, it is your responsibility to operate your machine in a safe manner, maintaining control at all times. Extreme caution is required when approaching areas with high concentrations of fans. Do not take unnecessary risks that endanger the safety of fans. You will be penalized for reckless racing. Race fans. Due to the nature of GNCC racing, there is no fence barrier around the race course. It is your responsibility to keep yourself and your children a safe distance from the race course. Never turn your back on oncoming racers and remember, stay off the track. And finally, for the safety of everyone, unauthorized drones are prohibited at GNCC and will be confiscated. And with that, my friends, we're about ready to go as we turn our attention to Ricky Towery. Yeah, I'm still here, Adam. I just, I was just told to wait, so I was waiting. <laughs> so uh, right now we're waiting on a couple little things out on the race course. Uh, Jared, uh, again, man, I, I got to tip my hat. I know that you've been a, a part of this, uh, the trail crew that's been out dragging the, the guys. But, I mean, there's a crew here that uh, not only are you guys trying to help guys out of the woods, but there were guys that were working 12, 1 o'clock last night. I saw, I, I know at midnight I saw the dozers still out on the trails. Yeah, uh, Ryan Eccles and Bob, we call him Bob the Builder, those guys, uh, and of course Jeff Russell, you, you got to take your hat off to all of those guys. They, uh, I know, I, I think I laid down about 10.30, and I uh, woke up at 11.30, and those guys had just come back in to grab something to eat real quick, and I think they ran back out and did a little bit more. So those guys were out late last night trying to make this as uh, passable as possible, as I like to say. And, you know, uh, talking about this, you know, deceiving whenever you're looking at this race course from this area if race fans haven't gone a little further back into the woods they probably don't know what to expect and, and what uh, what these riders are dealing with kind of give us a, a little idea of what's out there for these riders well we kind of stayed out a lot of the really really technical stuff but it's become slightly technical with the ruts the roots and the exposed rocks so it's it's just gotten a little tougher as the weekend's gone on but the good news is is the soil itself has actually gotten way better as the weekend's worn on so uh this this race here this is going to be the best the dirt's been all weekend and uh even though there's still some slick spots there's also some spots out there that's really really fun so uh any real deep troublesome mud holes or anything like that no there's really no deep mud holes it's just where we got the rain leading up to the race uh, it really stuck in that soil and it stuck around all weekend, but we're finally, finally, finally starting to get rid of a lot of it. All right, he sounds good. Mother Nature is certainly helping take care of that, of course, and uh, as we wait, uh, as soon as we get the all systems go, I'm listening to Ryan Eccles trying to figure out where we are in this process. Of course, uh, riders, you need to be fa focusing on uh, Ricky Tyree at this particular point. Uh, he is our maestro at this juncture, and uh, he will orchestrate the rest of the start for you guys, so uh, just pay close attention to him. Uh, right now, we are in a holding pattern, and as soon as Ricky has been given the all systems go, he'll give you your next instructions as to what to expect and what to look for as far as our sequence of getting underway here at the uh, 30th Wise Coach John Penton GNCC. And again, I, I can't help but say it one more time. I feel that something big is a brewing as we wait for these uh, extra moments and anticipation of what the race day is going to bring. Thought that and felt that yesterday. We had an amazing battle yesterday afternoon, and I believe we may be looking at exactly the same case scenario here today. Something big's brewing as far as GNCC is concerned, and we're going to take home some great memories. We hope that you do as well personally as well on a uh, grand scale for the GNCC race and nation. Well, Mark Hyde, King of the Blackwater, former GNCC racer, racer that raced right here at uh, John Penton the first time, back then known as the Burr Oaks. And, of course, uh, Mark, I know uh, being on the starting line out here as a, as a rider, you understand what these guys are going through. They have uh, charged themselves up. They've got themselves mentally prepared. And here we sit on this starting line now in waiting and anticipation. What's this doing to these guys? 
you know, for guys like Caleb Russell, Thad Duvall, they, they can handle pretty good because they program is so rock solid. Uh, some of the younger guys, especially XE2, XE3, they're a little nervous. And, you know, and too, with the way the course has changed, people not really sure what they're going to get to out there. The, you know, the guys that didn't walk the course. So they're probably the ones that are most nervous. I can imagine. Now, you yourself, as uh, you're here helping out, uh, you, you got a rider here this weekend from South Africa, I understand? Yeah, Bradley Cox is over here. He came last year. He got sixth at uh, Powerline last year, so that was a great result for him. Most people, if they followed the Dakar Rally and the Erzberg thing, his dad, Alfie Cox, won the very first Erzberg they ever had, and he was second at Dakar Rally, so he's got some big shoes to fill. Wow, that is uh, pretty big shoes. I think you kind of referenced him as the South African John Penton earlier this morning, right? That was his dad for sure, and uh, Alfie's doing, or Bradley does great over there in South Africa. He's winning a lot of the off-road activities over there, and he wants to come over here and test himself against the best riders in the world. So what better place to do it than, you know, home of KTM and uh, uh, GNCC Racing. Amen, right here in southeastern Ohio, too. Where, where, uh, what we would talk about, the, the uh, used to be a big mecca of all road racers here, and some of the, the greatest races, I mean, uh, even National Enduros used to come through this area. Oh, yeah, there was Nationals all over the place, you know, here, and, and it was because of John Penton and all that he brought to the plate, and it looks like you got work to do. Let's go racing. No doubt. I just seen him walk through with that sign, start him up, fire him up, so we're less than two minutes away now from going GNCC Racing as we finally have reached this point in the program, folks. So here we go, folks. Moments away from the start of the big 3-0 as far as GNCC here in the hills of southeastern Ohio are concerned. A part of the 45th annual Grand National Cross Country Championship Series year and season, I guess I should say. It all began with the Blackwater and here we are today. And speaking of Blackwater, we were talking with the king of the Blackwater right there, Mr. Mark Hyde, a few moments ago as he's got his uh, rider poised and ready to go from that XC2 Pro Class. And here we are, poised and ready to go. As clouds begin to start to move in here this afternoon. The humidity the heat and clouds and wind like that, you often wonder in southeastern Ohio, is there a storm a brewing? Are we going to see more rain before the uh, day is out? I know we were looking at radar a little bit ago, and about three hours away in Cincinnati was uh, some rain showers moving through that area. It was tracking what we hoped to be north of Athens by the time it reached here, but the way the skies are starting to look and the way things are starting to feel, who knows what's possible as far as weather is concerned, and who knows what's possible as far as this day is concerned as we are now less than 30 seconds away. Shut them down, guys. Shut them down. Shut them down. Shut them down. NCC Racing here in the heart of it all, the great state of Ohio. And I got to ask you, Ohio race fans, are you ready to go GNCC Racing? All right, much better than our ATV crowd yesterday on their first try, but I, again, got to employ you guys to dig a little bit deeper, if you will, because, again, we're in the mecca of off-road, southeastern Ohio, the Wise Coach on Penn GNCC. So I'm going to ask you one more time, Ohio race fans, are you ready to go GNCC Racing? Seconds and row number one, the XC1 Pro will be up and rolling at this Wise Coat John Penn GNCC. Rounding the first turn toward that hole shot, all balls, hole shot over 127. Jordan Ashburn gets the strike, but Caleb Russell gets the lead. Ashburn in second, the 206. Josh Toth back in the number three spot. XC2 250. Craig DeLong, Ryder Lavity, Austin Lee, Liam Draper, Mike Wachowski, Hunter Bush, Ben Parsons, Alex Teagarden, Evan Smith, Bradley Cox, Brewer Colley, Benjamin Kelly, Matthew Keeper, Mason Atherton. Also, uh, Samuel Evans, Zach Hayes, and Jonathan Johnson in ten seconds. turn now. Oh, it's a drag race and it's going to be the 44. 
grabbing the hole shot right or Lafferty and the early lead as he rails the outside of that uh, start. Of course, all the way from Dorothy, New Jersey on a solid performance moose racing Kenda Tires back machine. Up next, FMF XT3 125 Pro-Am. Seconds. Joe Marsh, Michael Beeler, Chase Colville, Jesse Ansley, Jason Lipscomb, and Cody Barnes. And Jesse Ansley grabbing traction about halfway up that start, going to grab the early lead. He's got the 700, though. Jason Lipscomb right there, and Cody Barnes as well. As we go to open A's, Nick O'Brien, Levi Keller, Max Servan, Joshua Lee, Ryan Slotko, James Murphy, Evan Earl, Jeremy Lanthier, Jake Hines, Zach Hugel, Trevor Williams, Brady Myers, Coke Beckert, Ryan Neff, Alex Biroth, and Braden Moore. Ten seconds. Good jump by the 613 machine. We'll see how that pans out for him as they go across the stripes there. It's the 221 of James Murphy from Granville, Massachusetts. Another one of those New England riders starting off strong here. 258 class, Simon Johnson, Chase Hayes, Ryder LeBlanc, Robert, Whit Robert Whitlock, Brody Johnson, Matthew Davis, Bolton Roth, R.J. Cook, Brendan Poling, Trevor Getz, Matthew Cornish, Tyler Brandon, Josh Farrell, Cole Whitmer, Ten seconds to go to the poor Andrew Gross, Paul Petron, Tristan Landrum, Bryce Coster, and Brandon Higgins. Getting it sorted out, coming out of that first turn. Look at that. The 29, who gets the whole shot. And the 897, the early lead, 29, is uh, Simon Johnson on a trail gestures. KTM, Brandon Higgins, though, out front early on. Out of uh, Colton, West Virginia. Up next is four-stroke A lights. Ten seconds. Tyler Soriano, Tanner Coward, Russell Smith, Alex Lugar, Johnny Manera, Seth Bevington, Nathan Rector, Ian Flynn, Grady Faint, Mitch Owensby, Nathan Davis, Frederick Bluen, Tyler Sylvia, Mac Reimer, and Trevor Maley. Off and rolling through that first turn, they sort it out. 597, that is 587, Frederick Bluot out of Canada. 208 bank, 200 A's coming up next. We got Sean Myers, Zachary Davidson, Dominic Morris, Max Fernandez, Logan Kiddick, and Elliot Key. Ten seconds. Zach Davidson, good jump off the line. He got buried, though, in that first turn, it looks like, as the 490 of Max Fernandez out of Ottsville, Pennsylvania, on the Mill Hill Cycle Shapers Motorsports Fly Racing Bag Machine, grabs the early lead. Senior A, 40-plus class coming up. Frank Messina also, Sean Remington, shotgun Sean, I should say. Ten seconds. Frank Tussle, John Beaver, Gregory Richardson, Josh Hackett, Jeff Houston, Jeremy Dexter, Larry Sylvia, and Jason Stickley. Well, can old smiling Frank Messina make it happen on the number 50? I think he will. Oh, look at this. Ooh, shotgun and smiling Frank going at it, and smiling Frank Messina gets the whole shot. But the 51 of Sean Remington, I think, is going to, oh, no, nope. now they're threatening needles. I think he's going to take the lead. Junior AB 25 plus class coming up next. Ten seconds. Andrew Boggs, Jason Cripp, the Jacob Christman, Nick Mellinger, Andrew Matusik, Matt Ruffy, Damon Rumble, Landon Smith, George Davis, Benjamin Lee, Colton Anderson, and Jesse Kildlow. Jesse Kildlow. Kill out. Pretty sure, but that's around the uh, first turn. Look at that. Boy, Matusik just about got it. I think it was uh, Colton Anderson, though, maybe on that Suzuki grabbing the early lead, or was it? Uh, well, we'll ch double check when we come around for the highlights, I guess. But right now, it's about 830 plus class set to roll next. Sam Forrester, Ben Conaway, Louis Oleon. It looks like Josh Wyatt, Surly Amancio. Ten 
seconds. Nathan Alring, Luenzo Sanchez, Steve Lebruno, James Bauer, Tom Trotchell, Matt Modick, and Bill Zavendi. Seven, going to get credit for the whole shot crossing that strike first. That's Louis Oleon from Lancaster, Ohio on a JDP. Scott Dunlop, and I believe he grabbed the early lead as well to get to the 200B class. Mac Rust, Gino Bonacci, Colby Dunham, Xander uh, Garoni. Ten seconds. Also Tanner Collins, Ezra Judd, and Patrick Murphy. Gino Bonacci out of West Mifflin, Pennsylvania, and a low jack cycle, Moose Racing and Micah Metals machine. And next we go to the Bet B30 Plus class. Ten seconds. Ernie Martin, Daniel Ingold, Gary Vesang, William O'Brien, Brian Rico, Sam Bishop, Kyle Madison, John Switzer, Mike Swartz, Drew Gorey, James Mayhew, Jimmy Johnson, Joshua Webb, Chad Myers, and Dave Hill. That be 30 plus class. And a 279 with a 406 helmet tag number X. Actually 405 William O'Brien from Whispering Pines, North Carolina on a Kenda Kermitar Griffiths uh, and Flow Vision back machine. Open B class, Matt Sorge, Peyton Harden, also Evan Maynard, Christopher Stevens, Brendan Bishop, Isaac Cole, Greg Tenney, Junior Smith, Greg Oberholzer. Seconds. Colton Hawk, Zachary Sanders, Brian Shell, Michael Modica, Drew Norris. And Cold, uh, Craig Oberholzer. Listed from North Carolina, actually formerly of Jackson, Ohio. Coming back home to uh, race this John Penn GNCC. Up front, 222, Peyton Hart now the Stamping Ground, Kentucky on the Trigger Concepts Fly Racing FMF back machine. As we go to the senior B class next, Gene Swilla. Uh, Wes Morris, Leon Whitaker, Benny uh, Tomic, also Frank DeFeo, Chad Miller, Igor Sodres. Ten seconds. Mike Horwatz, also Darren Hutchinson, Darren Darmos, and Scott Matheny. Seven, seven, four, or is that seven, four, four? Nope, it's 227, or 327. Chad Miller from Belfry, Ohio, getting the whole shot. And they've already changed about three times, I think, in the lead is concerned in that class. Uh, Four-stroke B lights, Alexander Patterson, Zach Cars, Bryce Alkire, Corey Mihalik, Tyler Palmer, Tyler Daniels, Cody DeLucci, and Ethan Schultz, ready to roll in 10 seconds. Or Deleuze, but I'm going out on this one, and this old hillbilly is going to even go French with that and stay Deleuze. But who's going to get the lead? 122, that's 424. Tyler Palmer from Denver, North Carolina, snagging the early lead as he takes it out of turn two and head towards three. We get to the 250B class. Kyle Prismont, Garrick Orbister, Austin Hovatter, Philip Dagnese, uh, Braden Sylvester, Alan Knopfling, J.P. Balzer, Nate Miser, also Damian Linder. Ten seconds. Dylan Gore, Bradley Chabot, Aaron Waldrop, Gatlin Combs, and Jesse Groves. And that 250 B class off and rolling. Our final start of the afternoon. 
189. Garrick Orbister from Stockbridge, Georgia on a Mountain Motorsports Flow Vision Dunlop back machine grabs the early lead. And there you have it, folks. Nearly 200 riders out now traversing the trails of southeastern Ohio as we roll through this 30th running of the Wise Coach John Penton GNCC. Can uh, wait, maybe uh, Caleb Russell break the losing streak here? He's not won the last two years, and if he does, he's going to take win number five, and in doing so, that's going to set a record here this weekend. But I can tell you right now that uh, one rider, well, a host of other riders don't want that to happen, including Bad Duval. We'll see if he or anyone else can stop Caleb Russell here on the family farm. Stick around. The Whitesco John Penton GNCC continues after this. Consistent clutch fuel is vital to effective starts or to confidently maneuver around obstacles on the trail. AMS Oil Synthetic Dirt Bike Oil was subjected to an extreme simulated start test. After 32 simulated race starts, AMS Oil Synthetic Dirt Bike Oil continued to deliver consistent clutch fuel and the clutch plates remained clean with no visible wear. The competitor's oil, however, allowed discoloration and significant wear after just 16 starts. AMS Oil Synthetic Dirt Bike Oil. Give your bike the protection it needs. What is your passion? Hitting the perfect line, finding the perfect trail, routing the perfect adventure, or just living and breathing the moto life? Do you feel pride for a job well done after tackling a late night in the shop? Do you enjoy time spent with friends and family in the great outdoors? Spanning over three decades, one name has taken the lead for supplying the best power sport parts, accessories, and apparel to fuel your passion. One name that knows it goes beyond getting you the best prices, quickest shipping, or largest selection. One name that builds and innovates for our industry. One name that teaches, helps, and supports our fellow riders, racers, and organizations. We are Rocky Mountain ATV MC. We have transformed a team of moto enthusiasts into a powerful teaching team to ensure that you make the best purchasing decision with your hard-earned cash. We build communities with fellow riders to provide you with all you need to make a good decision. See customer photos, reviews, Q&As, and more while you're on our easy-to-use website. Need help fast? Live chat with our specialists, email, or drop us a line. Visit us today and experience the best in OEM and aftermarket parts, accessories, apparel, and industry-leading information. We offer lightning quick shipping, free on orders over $75, a huge inventory, free apparel exchanges both ways, and customer service that leaves all others behind. Experience one name that leads all others. Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. Speed has its price. Fortunately, it's super affordable. The specialized Speed into Spring Sale with up to 40% off March 15th through 31st. The faster you visit your local specialized dealer, the faster you ride. The all-new Yamaha Wolverine X2. With a compact chassis, perfect for exploring tight technical terrain. An ultra quiet and smooth 850 class twin cylinder engine. And next level versatility with a 600 pound dumping cargo bed. No other side by side delivers this level of proven off road performance. The all new Wolverine X2 from Yamaha. 
Born of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Kemetic Gasket seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Kemetic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best. Kemetic Gaskets are constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environment. Whether it's championships on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts depend on Kemetic. Kemetic Gaskets, sealing championships since 1989. This Racer TV broadcast is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Specialized turbo e-bikes, it's you, only faster. And by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. And want to welcome you guys back to GNCC Live. I'm Mike Uwains. You've already heard from my colleague, Rodney Talman. And I'm joined in the booth right now by the one, the only, David Quella, DQ, uh, in booth with us. DQ, welcome back to the Racer TV booth. How you doing, man? It's, uh, it's good. My, uh, my rider's still hurt, so I figure I'm here. Did not know that. DQ's headset's bad. All right, let's start that over. So, DQ, you're back. You're not out there on the track, though. What's going on, man? Um, well, my rider, Lane Michael, he's still on the injured reserve list, so we're, uh, we're here and figure I might as well come over and do some talking here, get through the first first lap or so, and then hit the road headed home. That's fair. So we just got a shot, I believe that was Caleb Russell uh, riding right there through the Monster Energy Monster Mile, and that was a report we had was that Caleb was out in front. For a moment, it sounded like uh, Trevor Bollinger. That looked like uh, Austin Lee, so maybe that was Ben Kelly that went through there. I saw a number one KTM. Yeah, that's always difficult, all, all three of the <laughs> KTMs with number ones. But it, uh, it looks like the track conditions are challenging, that's for sure. It looks like a... I was in the woods yesterday, and, I, man, it looked fun to me. I don't know. This <laughs> looks like fun. Uh, one of the big things uh, that I was telling you, DQ, before uh, we came back, which you guys got a good shot of it here through the Monster Mile, but uh, from the camera shots we have at the start, it looks like, oh, it's going to be dusty. Not even close no. to the case. No, and the if woods. it's covered in shade, it's going to be nasty. It's going to be gnarly and the muddy The woods have been today. holding moisture like no other. That was Evan Smith going down just then. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're, they're rocking and rolling. They got the, the PowerPoint hill climb here. Looks looks pretty good, too. It, it is good. And one of the big things this weekend here at the uh, the 30th, Wise Code John Pitton. Yeah, I can't believe that. 30th. It's pretty That's cool. That's insane. 30 years, same facility, and still a cool facility. It still is. works. It's awesome. It's, uh, I was telling Rodney yesterday, when I think of a GNCC race, I think of this John Patton GNCC. And we'll give you guys a look here. We're going to take a look at the, I believe, the Yamaha Racing uh, track map here to give you guys an idea of what our riders are going to be on here today. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. There it is. Okay. The Yamaha Racing track map. So we've got uh, for the 1 p.m. bike race, we got an 11.3 mile course. And you can see a little bit of everything. Classic GNCC right here. The white dots on your screen, those are indications of where we have camera shots set up. And then the black rectangular box, that would be where our drone coverage is. I will say this. We, you guys had go drone coverage uh, through the start. We're going to try and keep that up as long as possible. I did hear our drone guy on the radio saying, hey, guys, it is very, very windy. So hopefully the wind kind of holds off from us and we're able to keep that going because we know how much you guys love those shots as do we but uh yeah really good course here at the wise code john penton uh, again like i said a classic gncc track with a little bit of everything to offer this being one of those the mulch pile infamous mulch pile it's that, it's nuts it's the craziest thing it catches you off guard every lap it's this you're in the middle of a field and then you're in this pile of mulch and it is one of the more difficult oh, it, things it, to go it through. It's rocks crazy. The riders. Yeah. And I think they got a couple lines. At least they had a couple lines yesterday for the ATVs through there. One seemed to be the outside line that seemed to be the one to take yesterday. But we'll see how things, uh, like the mulch pile is one of those things like this, John Pitt, that seems to change every single lap. Like you just said, it's, it's just never the same thing every time they hit it. And uh, speaking of being here at the John Penton, um, I believe we uh, had a chance to catch up with some of our riders and uh, find out what their favorite memory here in the last 30 years was at the Wise Code John Penton. Um, my favorite John Penton memory would be probably in 2014. I think that's the only year I've won here, honestly. I've had a really rough go at this track, but um, hopefully to change it around this year. Uh, yeah, I think that is funny and even funnier was my friends were at the hill too, and they're like, hey, hey, you can't do that. She goes, I'll do what I want to do, you know, and they're like, all right, whatever. So she's 
carrying buckets up and down, and she goes down the bottom of the hill, and her friends are on the side of the hill, and she's going, throw me a beer, throw me a beer. And she's hitting her chest like this, and the guy went, boom, and she got poof, <laughs> smacked her right in the chest with a beer, and didn't phase her none. There was more than just him going down on the road, so it wasn't really, it was uh, it was a bummer, but the one where I was able to pull Corey out and help him get a win, and, and I was still able to get second, I feel like that's, uh, that's fairly memorable, and then, uh, I don't know, man, this place is, this place is, always seems to produce good races so uh there's a lot of times where this place can be real dusty or real muddy the last couple of years has been uh, really hot so uh, last last year was uh for me it was a fairly good race too but i ended up in the ambulance with, at the end with an iv and and the, the 10 years i've been doing this i've never had that that's never happened so i was i was wore out last year for sure and uh it's going to be a hot one here today and the track is uh difficult and technical so uh, i have a feeling everyone will be feeling that towards the end of the race uh, for sure, this is where I got my first XC2 win. Um, it was back in 2016. Um, kind of similar day like today. I mean, it was hot, a um, little slimy, but not nothing too muddy. And uh, yeah, this place I enjoy. I mean, the ruts and the, the hills, and yeah, it's just I I enjoy. It. I'll be smiling today. Uh, I've been here three other times. Um, one way back in 2013 when it was way muddy on minis. And then uh, 17 um, was okay for me. That track was good. I finished third in 250A. And then last year here when it was super money, I, uh, I finished third in XC3. So uh, hopefully just improved from the third place spot. Seems like I've been stuck here uh, in that spot here. But um, I've been practicing here in Ohio. And uh, I feel comfortable on the soil. I feel good going into the race. So hopefully I can just put it all together and be there at the end. Probably one of my greatest memories is racing Jason Thomas here in 13. And uh, we battled all the way down to the line. So that was pretty cool. No doubt. Who ended up winning that one? I did. One that stands out to me is 2010. It was a complete mud fest here. Um, I, was, I was running XC2. Caleb got barbed wire wrapped in his wheel in the John Penn section and couldn't and was a lap down and he was sitting there and at that point Caleb and I were practically living together. If he wasn't in my place, I was at his and uh, and he was like sitting there waiting for me to come around and I and I come through and he goes, "You're in fifth, but the leaders are all right there. Everybody's stuck." So we're running together and and he got me all the way through the John Penn. And I remember I I passed up to I believe second place and Caleb was pulling me out of the mud holes like teamwork because he just broke down and. Come out and ended up throwing it away and dropping a seventh. And Caleb was so pissed after the race. He's like, after all that, I, I mean, it was a very eventful day leading up. I actually rode up to the track with him, and his, and his brakes overheated on his RV, and it was just, it was a, it was again. But it was, it was still fun and, and definitely a memory you don't forget. Well, how about that? Getting the word from uh, some of our pro riders there about their favorite memory here at the John Penton. And in the meantime, we've got some guys who have checked in. Our leader out there, how about at the 127 Kawasaki, a Jordan Ashburn DQ? I know. Uh, we make the comment his his dad's the always says it's Jordan likes the mud. Well, Jordan apparently likes the mud, and here he is at the mulch pile. <laughs> How's he like the mulch? Looks Not like he bad. likes it pretty well. Yeah, he got through there real well. So Jordan Ashburn out in front, Stu Baylor in second. That was him uh, right behind him. Uh, Stu taking the inside line, and like I said, yesterday on the ATVs, it seemed that this outside line was the, the choice. Uh, to have Stu elected for that uh, that inside line. So as it was, Jordan Ashburn out front, Stu Baylor in the number two spot, the 989 of Thad Duvall in third, fourth place Caleb Russell, fifth place Trevor Bollinger. So your top five all out of the XC1 class, sixth place the 206 of Josh Toth, Grant Baylor in the number seven spot, Josh Strang eighth, Andrew Littlelong ninth, and tenth place Daniel Miner out of Australia. Am I saying that right, Rodney? Daniel Miner? Milner? Milner. Oh, well, see, that's my eye's fault. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's my excuse. That's, uh, well, I get to use it on that one. Uh, and then you got uh, Ben Kelly back in uh, the number 11 spot, which, I mean, for an XC2 guy, that's, that's solid. But with that said, that's not really where we're used to seeing Ben Kelly this early in the race. Normally, he's up there battling with a lot of those XC1 guys. Excuse me. Most definitely he is, Mikey Wayne. Sorry about that. Hot day, uh, chugging it down before it's, we come yeah, in. Yeah, it's unbelievable. <laughs>
It's tough out here in the great outdoors. It's summertime, and things will get heated. Do you have what it takes to be part of the action? The Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship will put you to the test, but reward you with the thrill of a lifetime. Join the fastest motocross racers in the world as they endure the elements and the toughest racetracks in America for national championship glory. Tickets for the High Point National in Mount Morris, Pennsylvania on June 15th. Available at promotocross.com. Your bearings shoulder the burden whenever you tow, haul, or stop the gas. AMSOIL delivers powerful protection for bearings and other critical components so you can drive with confidence. To demonstrate, an independent lab put AMSOIL synthetic motor oil head-to-head -head against a leading competitor in a 100,000-mile test. AMSOIL provided far superior wear protection and kept engine bearings looking like new. Get your truck the protection it deserves at AMSOIL.com auto. I'm a junior pro surfer from Maui, Hawaii. I actually tried a homeschool in eighth grade and just didn't meet my needs. I came to On Track in ninth grade and from the beginning I really liked it. The mission at On Track School is to make academic success completely possible for each and every student while they're out pursuing their personal goals. Everything is just super easy with On Track. I get to take my computer on the road whenever I need to. It makes it very easy for me to get all my work done. If you're looking for a program that provides flexibility and a program that you can take anywhere that fit your lifestyle, then On Track is for you. So come check us out at OnTrackSchool.com and go get it. Even when you're the best, you never stop striving to be better. The all new from the ground up 2019 Yamaha YZ250F is available at Low Jack Cycle Sales alongside the all new YZ65 and YZ85 and refined YZ450F. So stop by Low Jack Cycle Sales today in Toronto, Pennsylvania and visit our online inventory at www.lojax.com. Yamaha YZs, it's why we ride. We are American motorcyclists. We are members of the American Motorcyclist Association. Racers, fans, and crew, we come together for this sport we love to race together, to grow together. We start young and not so young. We race motorcycles and ATVs. We become friends, we become family. We compete for weekend bragging rights and national championships. We make memories on the toughest off-road courses in the country and on the best motocross tracks in the world. Some of us aspire to the speed and poise of road racing or the fierce competitiveness of American flat track. And we honor our greatest champions in the AMA Motorcycle Hall of Fame. Through it all, we cheer. We win and we lose. We are racing. We are the AMA. Race with us. Be part of the greatest sport in the world. Be an American motorcyclist. Join us today at www.amajoy.com slash join hyphen now. And welcome back to GNCC Live. Rodney Tom along with Mikey Waynes and, of course, uh, Johnny Gallagher, I believe, out and about someplace with he, us today. Yeah, he actually he stopped by once already. I was in here with DQ. He said, I'll be right back. I've got three GBC pop-ups i got to go take care of right now, <laughs> or they're going to be kites in the wind across the motocross track. Yeah, it's starting to, starting to get a little bit windy and breezy here, as I mentioned on the start there a few moments ago. Uh, I don't know what the weather's going to do. Is looking at radar. There's some stuff to our southwest that is moving this way, but it was a couple of hours out, and, uh, well, since then, it's been a little more time passed, so it might get a little closer than what we expected. Picking the action back up on the racetrack here as we check in as uh, – we, before we left, Jordan Ashburn leading Stu Baylor, Thad Duvall in third, and Caleb Russell in fourth with Trevor Bollinger in fifth. And I'm sure you and DQ have discussed this quite a bit. Uh, wow, this is uh, kind of crazy. And, and obviously we know Jordan. Well, we've seen great starts out of Jordan several times this year. That's one thing that we can say about that Kawasaki is he's had uh, some awesome starts. So has Josh Strang. And we knew it's just a matter of time before they could, if they could put it together, they could stay up front. Well, right now, Jordan Ashburn, this is the kind of rides that we've seen out of Jordan in the past. It's been a couple of years since he's been at this level, but wow, uh, he's, he's in his way to where he yeah. is now. And who's to say that Ashburn might not be the threat we were not expecting here today in Ohio? That's exactly right. DQ kind of alluded to it. He said, uh, Jordan's dad says, Jordan likes the mud. Well, from the look of the start, you're probably thinking at home, well, there is no mud. No, there is plenty of mud here at the John Penton. Basically, if it was covered by the shade or if it's in a low spot, it's still that sloppy, tacky, sticks-to-your-machine uh, southeastern Ohio mud. 
Yes, and you probably heard people talk about it before you ever came here for the first yes. time. The, the, high, the mud in Ohio, it's, it's this. Different. It's different. It, and you, you're like, it, mud can't be that different. Yeah, it is that, mud. No, it's, it's that not. different, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, looking at the Monster Mile here right now, and this one right here, you can see there's a lot of moisture in the ground. You can also see that things are starting to dry up and tack up. And yesterday when we were watching on the ATV side of things, it just seemed to get wetter and wetter and wetter as the day uh, progressed. But today, things have, have kind of turned around. One thing that I did note, uh, even on the motocross track and in some of these areas where it's dry, uh, I've noticed that there's some wet spots. There are a lot yeah. of springs around here, uh, natural springs. And with the water table being where it is and the amount of water that we've had so far this spring, these things are free-flowing and running. I mean, it's like a bunch of artesian wells out there <laughs> someplace. And you'll be going along, and the next thing you know, you just hit a big wet spot. Yep. You have no idea where it came from. Well, it's, it's those uh, springs, uh, those natural springs that we have here in southeastern Ohio that are popping up, especially with uh, the amount of rain. And, and, and I'm not, I, I know I'm, I'm preaching to the choir as far as that goes because everybody's experienced rain as we have here in southeastern Ohio. Yeah. It's crazy. This is. I was talking to uh, uh, Mark Hyde. Uh, he said everywhere we've been this year, uh, it's rained. Uh, you know, everybody I've talked to, it's rained everywhere yep. we've been. And, and he said it's not just GNCC. I've been in ATV motocross. It's rained yep. everywhere we've been in ATV motocross. Even the Supercross guys said yeah. they had it. Yeah, pro motocross got uh, they got soaked yesterday. So well, there you go. Yeah. So. so it's just par for the course. That might be. This might be. Uh, you know, maybe the wettest season ever in, in in racing history motorcycle racing right. history we're going to have to to check into that to see for <laughs> sure but uh, it's starting out like that that's for doggone sure is that auntie no that is some ktm team members i think that may be auntie colin in there and if it's not regardless it's a good opportunity to talk a little bit about what he has going on with the uh, uh, team usa uh a captain, I guess you could say, or the uh, manager of Team USA for the ISDE. Uh, they've got a fundraiser coming up uh, the Friday before Snowshoe GNCC. It's the traditional golf outing, that golf tournament. I think it's 100 bucks a person, uh, four-man team. It's a scramble. It's going to be a lot of fun. Details and information available for you right there on uh, GNCCRacing.com. They've got the, the longest putt, the hole-in-ones. I mean, they're going to give away some big, big yeah. prizes. And... Um, in uh, heck, I don't even know. Maybe ten thousand dollars. Maybe a new car. I don't know what they've got <laughs> up their sleeve this this they year. They did have a, a hole in one challenge last year, yes. I believe, for a truck. Yeah. Nobody got it, but it, they, hey, the opportunity's there. Yeah, and uh, I think they're going to be doing something yeah. similar to that again this year. So I know Auntie was still working on a few things, but uh, sounds like we got ourselves a really great uh, uh, ISDE fundraising golf tournament once again. Uh, ready to happen Friday before snowshoes. So get on GNCC, find the information, and get a hold of Auntie Collinan, and that way you can ensure yourself a spot on the uh, links, so to speak. So there you go. And uh, with that, also, uh, since we're speaking of snowshoe, who's this? This is Thad Duvall. Thad Duvall, Thad Duvall has moved so into the Thad lead now. Front. So Duvall up from third. Last time we saw him, he was about four seconds back in the number three spot. So he wasn't real far off pace. And here comes that second place ride. That appears to be the number one of Caleb Russell. Now Russell is up from the fourth place position. So both Thad and Caleb have gotten around Ashburn and Baylor. And who we got coming now, that is a... Kawasaki, the 127 of Jordan Ashburn, now in the number three spot. And uh, Stu Baylor coming along. Was that him still in the fourth place, or was that Bollinger? I, I think that was Trevor Bollinger. Yeah, that was Bollinger that came through. Now, I will say this. I'm kind of surprised to see uh, Stu Baylor up front, you know, talking with him. Same, same scenario as a couple of weeks ago. The ruts have him scared. There was string, I believe. And Stu, you know, he doesn't seem to be so uh, excited about these types of conditions. So I expect him to be laying back just a little bit and maybe not pushing the envelope as much as we would expect a Baylor to do it here. There is Stu Baylor right there. Wow. 14. He has dropped uh, several positions, not only several positions, but a lot of time back. So right now, 20, let's see, where are we at in this race? We're some 36, 36 minutes. 36 minutes. Yeah, 36 and a half minutes, I guess we could say, into this race now. And uh, already seeing some, uh, some big changes. Lap time on the first time around 21, just under 21 minutes. That's about, if I'm not mistaken, what we were seeing yesterday for the ATVs. And uh, I think they'll increase maybe to 24 or just under 25 is what we saw the ATVs. And they actually went five laps, which took them a little over the two-hour uh, time frame 
don't know if we're going to be in that same situation, but with the absence of the John Penton section, uh, lap times will be considerably quicker this year than they have been in years past. Yeah, and I did just see Josh Toth roll through out of the XC1 class and a familiar sight. It was Ben Kelly behind him out of that XC2. Uh, used to seeing those guys duke it out last year, but uh, there looks like they're keying off of each other right now, or at least Kelly's keying off of uh, Josh Toth right now as they're moving through lap number two. Lap number two going to tell some big stories, I think, whenever we get uh, through this one. And, you know, uh, looking right now, I, uh, I, I have some, uh, I'm going to have to go look at uh, some, some notes that I have. There goes Thad Duvall up the FMF PowerPoint Hill as um, we see Caleb Russell now in the number two spot. Now, Caleb, if I'm, if I'm counting these right and if I remember right, i got to look at my notes. And I had sent an email to Adam. Hopefully we get those printed off. But... Uh, the uh, I think that uh, Caleb uh, Russell is looking and going for his fifth win here at uh, John Penton GNCC, which is kind of uh, unprecedented. He and Paul Wibley currently have four wins apiece. Uh, it's uh, Fred Andrews, Scott Plessinger. Um, shoot, I've already forgot. I, I named <laughs> all four off earlier this morning, but there's four riders that have four wins. Uh, uh, three wins, I think it is, and only two riders that have four wins, and Caleb's going for win number five, so he would be then hold the most uh, uh, wins record here at, at uh, I want to call it Snowshoe, at John Penton <laughs> uh, for this uh, 30th, in his 30th running, but uh, nonetheless, uh, that would put him uh, three riders. Scott Summers, Plessinger, and that was it. Scott Plessinger and uh, and Fred Andrews. So there were three riders. Then, as I said, uh, one ri two riders that have won four times, and Caleb's trying to make it win number five here. Now, the big story on that from yesterday, uh, Chris Borich has won this yep. event six times. Walker Fowler was going for win number six as well. But so far, Chris Borch is still has the all-time wins record here at John Penton when it comes to ATVs and motorcycles, just like he does in the overall yep. wins category as well. So the king still lives <laughs> <laughs> as far as uh, wins records go uh, for Chris Borch. But uh, right now, Caleb Russell's trying to position himself to, to, to well, put him one behind Chris Borch and, and maybe set up a, a cool thing for next year when he, Walker Fowler, and uh, Chris Borch could all end up with six wins. But uh, regardless of how it all pans out, we got right now, Thad Duvall right where he wants to be and that's where he finished this race last year if you remember yeah. things were really starting to tighten up as far as the series point standings were concerned uh, we were just before the summer break and you know it was really starting to look tight and, and it looked like Thad Duvall had a real uh, shot at winning this championship and then when we went to snowshoe he had the uh, injury if memory serves yep. me correct had the injury I believe at ISDE and the last part of the season he was nowhere to be seen and nowhere to be found and that championship battle went away for him. We might see maybe some reflection of that uh, here today. Dad takes another win here. We'll see how that lo looks as far as points goes out. But looking at points, they're really not that far out. Uh, considering what we've seen in years past, there is 22 point de deficit right now, but a few wins and all of a sudden, Thad Duvall could uh, tighten that up. Thad moving through the monster mile right there. And wow, his shadow right there. Caleb Russell choosing a different line, going that outside route. Yeah, I mean, you know, we talk about home tracks and things like that. And Thad Duvall from Williamstown, West Virginia, which is literally uh, probably 40 minutes from where we are right now. You could uh, just across the river into West Virginia. And uh, so this is kind of a home track. And I will say this. I would say that Thad's probably put more laps in here than what uh, Caleb Russell, and this is his family farm. Ashburn and Bollinger wow. uh, duking it out right there. That was tight. And, yeah, Jordan Ashburn is uh, he's hard on that throttle, man, wanting to get up there. Yeah, and you, you can see the hunger for, for Trevor Bollinger also as he's closed up now on Ashburn for that third-place position. So they've got themselves a whale of a battle going on. Is that strain going? Strain going around the outside there, yeah. I believe that would be for the number five spot, if I'm not mistaken. We've lost Stu Baylor out of that top five. There's Baylor there, so that would be sixth place position now for Stu Baylor. Still seems to be trudging along at a fairly decent pace, all things considered, even with uh, concerns about the knee and tweaking it on one of these ruts out here today. That's exactly it. We should be seeing. Ben Kelly should be coming up soon. Well, no, he's, I take that back. I take it back. He's back toward the 10th uh, place spot, so. Would be. Hey, hey, who knows what's going to happen? There's Grant Baylor back in seventh place. Josh Toth is, uh, was sixth, so we should be seeing so Toth. Toth was the guy. Maybe we yeah. missed Toth. 
And I might've, that might have been him. I seen it a few moments ago. This might be him now. Oh, that's DeLong there on the 410 machine. That was there's DeLong. Toth. So to, uh, DeLong wow. is around Toth. Yeah, so there's a 212. And Ricky, Ricky Russell, Russell right behind Toth. Whew, going up the middle there, wow. getting tight next to that tree. Wow, Russell was, Ricky Russell was, uh, looks like he was back in 19th place overall as far as the class was concerned at the end of that first lap of racing. Uh, Ricky Russell, the number 212, was actually running in 12th place in the class. So uh, he had his work cut out for him out there, but it looks like he's he's actually gained a few positions, as has Andrew DeLong. At least, if not positions, it looks like maybe some time out there. It looks like some things have tightened up some. That's exactly right. So uh, as we look at this, a minute and 20 seconds would be considered late, uh, according to timing and scoring. But uh, as we say, it's adjusted uh, uh, expectation of the riders checking in is uh, in comparison to what the last lap lap times were. Uh, these were shorter laps on lap uh, number one because of the relationship of where the start meets the race course itself, which is someplace uh, close to the two mile marker, if I'm not mistaken. So we can expect maybe five or so minutes uh, extra time here. Might be a little less, might be a little more, uh, but we can expect a little extra time waiting on these riders to check in for their second lap of racing. And there's where we'll get a, a true established time of what the length of the, the rest of the uh, laps should be and what we should be expecting. And we'll be able to start uh, figuring things toward the... Uh, Austin Lee moving yeah, through that's there now. I was, I was I'm say, not sure if he is he. Uh, we might have missed Ryder Lafferty. I think Ryder Lafferty was in second last time around. Yeah. So Benjamin Ben Kelly leading Ryder Lafferty was and second. DeLong. We had to. Well, no, that was Andrew DeLong we saw earlier, wasn't it? Yes. Austin Lee was fourth in that XC250 class. XC2250 class. So he may have, uh, well, we've seen a lot of changes already, and I know that Austin Lee loves this place. He loves these conditions. He was confident out there on the start line. He was. Man. I like it. That, that just, you know, how, you know, it's neat whenever confidence, and when you walk up to that guy, and he's smiling yeah. so big, and it wasn't a cocky smile. It was a happy it was, smile. Yeah, let's go. It, this is my style. Was. You know, sometimes people have that cockiness about him. He doesn't. He just, he's a genuine individual and just yeah. genuinely happy, and you can see it all over his face there. And, and hopefully uh, it, it, that's what we're seeing translated onto the racetrack here, too. Riders, uh, I like this, how these uh, <laughs> amateur riders or the B or A riders, I say this is one of our B riders, uh, kind of just very, moving very slowly <laughs> and methodically, uh, choosing those lines, looking over his shoulder, hoping that there's someone that's faster right. coming through so they can go by and show him how to get <laughs> through there. What line should I choose? <laughs> that might, just you don't know, just you know, keep we, it on two wheels. We're we're sitting here and we're looking at it. Just grab the throttle and go up through there. But yeah. these guys are all stopping, assessing the situation. <laughs> they're going. This might be a little more challenging than what we expected. Well, I guess they call it the Monster Mile for a reason. Now over here near the Moto Track at mile marker number 11, Thad Duval out front of this one on the 989. Right. Rockstar Energy Husqvarna as he works his way around this track to complete lap number two. See how close we get the clock on it. See how close uh, Caleb Russell's closing in on him there. You know, when they came through the Monster Mile, seemed to be uh, a lot closer than what it is right now. Thad trying to pull away. Thad and Caleb both, though, trying to pull away and uh, do their thing, get out in front of the pack. It looks like we got one lapper in between the two of them. Well, I tell you, as uh, no sense of urgency right now, it looks like that is settled into what appears to be a very comfortable and quick pace, as has uh, Caleb Russell back there in the number two position. We'll get a complete split on these guys. Lap time that time was 25 minutes and 44 seconds, so about five minutes longer is what we expected and anticipated on the uh, lap lengths. So uh, there you go. Caleb Russell checking in nine seconds back, a 25.07 for him. Here comes Jordan Ashburn now in for a third-place position. He was leading at the end of lap number one, but uh, a good solid ride here. If I'm not mistaken, I think I've seen and we've seen uh, Ashburn finish on the podium here in seasons past. But here he has 20 seconds down now behind Caleb Russell. And I believe there may be a gap starting, to, or is that, no, it's starting to close back up. Trevor Bollinger has gotten around, well, we, we knew he got around Stu Baylor, and we knew that he caught, uh, caught up to Jordan Ashburn. I thought maybe Jordan had shaken him, but as we look at this, there's still just four and a half seconds that separate those two, so this, ra this race is still on. 
for that uh, top three position, and Trevor Bollinger is in it as we watch Ashburn now making his way across the moto track. There you see, joined now by Johnny Gallagher, Trevor Bollinger starting to come into sight, Johnny. And uh, I'll tell you, buddy, it is certainly a uh, sight to see whenever we get to see racing this tight, especially last week after we were looking at 40 seconds, 40 seconds, 40 seconds. Yeah, definitely a big, uh, big change from just two weeks ago. And as we see Caleb Russell coming down VP Fuels Pro Row, we did just see Thad Duvall through there as well. And, uh, you know, Rodney, it's it's pretty crazy to see the pace these guys are pushing early given the heat and the conditions. But, uh, you know, I think everybody's kind of uh – Caleb caught him off guard a little bit, I think, two weeks ago with that sprint he put in at the beginning. He really knew his lines. He hit his marks, and uh, he was able to open up that gap. And it's kind of like when that happens, you're racing a ghost. You can't see him. All you see is pit boards. Uh, there we see Bollinger. And uh, Bollinger looks like he is really on a mission. Uh, he is doing the best he can to try to get up there. And it looks like, is that Ashburn that is in for yeah. that string? Yeah, that is Ashburn. I believe, yeah. So I did. Ashburn came in and grabbed a splash of fuel, it looked like, and Looked like he might have been working on something on the rear of that motorcycle. It was hard to tell. Uh, he was kind of tentative leaving the pits there. And here we see now out on the moto track, actually, uh, looks like Ben Kelly has caught up to his uh, former dueling partner of Josh Toth. So Ben Kelly well up into the XC2. If we take a look there, where does that put him in the overall? Um, let's see. He was 11th overall at the end of lap number one. Now he is seventh place overall. And that was one question that Mikey was posing. He's like, you know, we're, we expect to see him up a little farther into the, into the, the ranks. Uh, but you remember two weeks ago, we saw this kind of same thing. Actually, if memory serves me correct, I don't know that, that Ben was actually leading the first lap. Maybe he was. It just wasn't by as much as what we normally expect to see. But it wasn't long as the race wore on that we saw that uh, traditional stretch out and that uh, traditional close in on the XC1, guys, as we watch Thad Duvall making his way through the mulch pile now. Speaking of traditional, that is a tradition right there. That mulch pile has been the pet in GNCC for about the last... 12 or 15 years, Caleb Russell rhythm in his way through there. Probably feels pretty comfortable on this section of the track. It's a lot like a moto track, and uh, that is a lapped rider there. Um, so the next rider we should see should be the third place rider of Trevor Bollinger as he has worked his way around Jordan Ashburn into that third place spot. And look at him. This is a man on a mission right here. He says, front number plate be damned. I'm going to the front. And he is on a mission to do just that right now. The 739 machine hard on the throttle through that mulch pile. And you can see Bollinger seems to be riding with a bit more aggression than the two guys in front of him. Uh, and now we see there is another left rider. And then Jordan Ashburn will be the next rider we see. And there he is, folks, working his way through. Uh, looks like he has maybe lost a little bit of the intensity they had there a moment ago. Something is steaming on the left rear of that. Did you see that, Rodney? Yeah, I did. I was uh, trying that, to see what that was. Yeah, that's, uh, that was very strange. Where it was coming out, it almost seemed as though it was uh, overflow from the crank crankcase breather to uh, coming out the back by the swinger. There, there is his teammate, Josh Strang. No steam or smoke coming off of that machine. So he is uh, in pursuit of the rider in front of him, which was Stu Baylor. So Baylor in fifth. Uh, Ashburn fourth now. That's different from what you see on screen there. There is Strang. Cool overhead shot here from our drone, Rodney. How about it? Yeah, I love the Yamaha live drone. It, uh, of course, uh, Ian Howes, our drone operator, doing a, another great job of making uh, the shots happen and following along. And now, you know, as windy as it is, uh, I'm kind of surprised that he's still up there. They mentioned that we may be landing the, 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 the drone because of the wind, but obviously uh, they're able to uh, fight around it and the stop, shots are still pretty steady. And there we go. Josh Toth and his teammate, our teammate and former XC2 duo of uh, Ben Kelly there, the number one machine, followed by Ricky Russell on the 212 machine. That is, that is Andrew DeLong on the 410 Phoenix Racing Husqvarna. So DeLong hanging in there <coughs> right behind Ricky Russell, doing all that he can. DeLong's been riding very well this year, Rodney. He's kind of, in, in my mind, he's been the... Uh, Kind of the comeback story yeah, of this season. I you have know, to agree. He, he's really kind of, uh, you know, it's it's uh, vintage uh, resurgence from DeLong, you know, back to the old uh, white Husqvarna days when he was riding that white red-headed Husqvarna, as he called it, the old redhead. Yeah, and, and you know, it, it's really neat. I talked with Andrew earlier today, and wow. you I mean, you know, in years past, Andrew always seemed to be kind of high-strung and 
and never really seemed to be relaxed, calm, and collected as, as what he seems to be right now. And he's found a real home there with the Phoenix Racing Honda team. And the great thing about it is they're putting the pressure on him. They expect results out of him, but they're not putting the kind of pressure on him that, that over pushes him. They're just pushing him to the next level. One more step. Let's get this next step. Let's get And, and these little steps that they're taking, we saw, I think, the results in that at the last race. We saw a lot more of him in the uh, up toward the top five and uh, expecting to see him continuing to battle uh, as solidly and, and seeing it early in this race, battling in that top 10, uh, in those top 10 positions. But the most important thing is the comfort that we see him at riding at and the fact that he is advancing. And every week that he advances, that puts him one step closer and one step further to the front of the pack. And uh, that puts him closer to where he wants to be. Absolutely. And speaking of DeLongs, there is little brother Craig there on screen. And if we look, I believe he may be the second place rider in that uh, XC2 Pro Lights class. Yes, he is. Uh, he is second, followed closely by Austin Lee, the one, two, three, Andrew DeLong's teammate. And we actually saw this two weeks ago, Rodney. We saw the uh, battle of, uh, you know, Andrew DeLong and uh, uh, Ricky Russell. And then we had the, the uh, battle of, at the exact same time that that was going on, we saw the battle of uh, DeLong, the other DeLong. And uh, oh, there is there is Austin Lee, as we're talking about him. There's the <laughs> Mohawk, the one, two, three of Austin Lee on that Phoenix Racing Husqvarna, the XC2 Lights Rider that is in that third place. Final podium position at the moment, followed closely by this man right here on screen, the 198 of Liam Draper uh, from uh, New Zealand, but currently from South Carolina. Lives in, and trains with uh, the Baylor boys, and uh, he's really been, been kind of finding his groove here lately. I, I made the comment a few races ago, I believe it was Camp Coker, he had a podium seemingly well in hand and let it slip away and i said liam today's the day you got to get it done and uh he he said that he said that stung a little bit <laughs> he said he he felt like he felt bad enough letting it go um and uh you know when you, when you hear it and you have to watch it on racer tv after the fact but, but you know just right. trying to motivate the fellas yeah, yeah but i mean it, you're right he knows you're right as well here we go here we go through uh, this might that's not our leader that's that jesse, must be ansley. jesse ansley yeah the leader of our xc3 pro lights class and we've kind of or, I'm sorry, FMF XC3 Pro-Am class. Uh, you know, Rodney has, it, we've kind of jumped around here a bit, but back to the idea of this Yamaha live drone. I don't know if you've ever tried to fly one of these oh things, yeah. um, but I have, and it's, I, you know, I consider myself to be pretty skilled as an operator and equipment and all kinds of stuff, and I've played a few video games in my life, but man, this is like fish out of water type stuff for me. I don't know that I could hold this thing in a steady position and just let it film itself, let alone follow these guys around the track in the wind with the speeds they're accelerating. I mean, Ian Howes is just an absolute phenomenal operator of this machine. And now look at that, right in over top of Jesse Ansley following through there. Can't give this guy enough credit, folks. This is a true artist right here that uh, you're watching the drone shot from and Jesse Ansley making that uh, KTM 125 look pretty good as well. No, most definitely. As uh, we watch now, we see... Uh, Ryder Lafferty. Yeah, Ryder Lafferty. He was, he got, uh, he was... A strong start. Uh, did he get the whole shot out there, if I'm not mistaken, in that XC2? He's awful close if he didn't. And uh, right now, as we look down through, there's he's dropped to seventh place. He was uh, running pretty strong uh, at the end of lap number one. Not that he's not riding strong here now, but Ryder Lafferty has some big shoes to fill out of out there, uh, out of New Jersey, as uh, his uncle Mike, uh, obviously a uh, big part of uh, National Enduro and GNCC racing in years past, and. You know, uh, we kind of look at him as a little bit of a legacy. You know, if you think about um, Mike and how he kind of progressed as a GNCC racer, he came in as a decorated enduro rider with, with wins and championships under his belt and uh, had speed, but never really, um, in the beginning, never seemed to really translate into results here at GNCC. And then there was a time there, you know, where he changed machines and um, started riding that big four-stroke that really, before anyone else was on four-strokes, he was riding, I, mean, I think at the time it was on 400. Um, and that, that machine just was really working well for him. He changed up his training. And, I mean, this is a guy that, you know, really became a true contender for GNCC wins and championships throughout the, I believe it was the late 90s or early 2000s. Yeah, early, yeah, late 90s and early 2000s. Really, in the early to mid-2000s, he was becoming uh, quite a bit of a, a star as far as uh, GNCC is concerned. And, you know, uh, just a part of that KTM family, you know, and uh, KTM family, uh, the KTM Youth Day here today. It is the Wise Coach John Penton GNCC, and John Penton is here at the uh, facility. 94 years old, and you know, uh, pretty impressive man, no doubt. And as as few as what three years ago, I think the man was still riding a motorcycle. He was telling me earlier. Well, I tell you what, we had a chance to catch up with him earlier this morning, and uh, here's what John Penton had to say. 
Yeah, I knew that, but we did it. We ran the mud any way we could <laughs> with any machine that we could get a hold of. And I got a hold of Hoos Barnas, and, and but before that, I was riding BMWs and NSUs, and we'd convert to things. I even rode a BSA and converted it. It was a road job, and I converted it into a mud runner. Yeah, back in those days, uh, people didn't look at a lightweight motorcycle to ride in the mud and be competitive, but I felt that it was, and I'd been to Europe watching lightweight motorcycles win trophies and win nationals, so I wanted to build a bike my own or have one built that could, could, could be uh, 125 that could be competitive. And that's how I come to start to build motorcycles. Yeah, that was a big deal. And to think that I was down here in the 40s riding in the mud and so forth. And that was a long time ago. And, and right through the woods down here. And it was really a challenge. Oh boy, I, I, it's hard to express that, but it makes me feel real proud. <laughs> I can only imagine. How old are you now, John? 93 years old. 93 years old. When was the last time you rode a motorcycle, just out of curiosity? Oh, about four years ago. No kidding, you were 89 years old and still riding. Yeah, yeah. but I, I, I wasn't riding in the mud. <laughs> What a man, I'll tell you, a legend, a living legend, and an icon in our sport. He has made what we're doing. I mean, even you as an ATV sure. racer, I mean, he, he laid the groundwork, uh, Johnny Gallagher. Oh, my, my dad had a Penton. Did make, he really? Make no mistake, absolutely. You know, I do, growing up in Ohio, I mean, absolutely, John Penton is, always will be, and always has been a legend. You know, he uh, absolutely just uh, paving the way for what we're watching on screen today. And, and, uh, goosebumps watching that. I know. I, you know, 2014, I, I had the opportunity to go to the original opening of uh, of the Penton, John Penton movie. And anybody at home listening to this, if you have not watched Penton, the John Penton story, it's a documentary. I'm sure you can download it just about anywhere online. Um, having the opportunity to watch that that man's life story and, and what motorcycling means to him just pulls at the heartstrings of so many here at the track today. Most definitely. And uh, another guy that benefited from uh, John Penton's ways, of course, Fred Andrews. And Fred Andrews is standing by with Mikey Waynes in the pits right now. Hey, thanks, Rodney. Yeah, down here, Fred Andrews in the Babbitts Kawasaki pits. Was just asking you, uh, about Jordan Ashburn. We saw he took a pit, but it doesn't sound like it's anything too serious. No, he uh, got some mud on his goggles. He fell down that lap and lost the lead and went back to third, I believe, and he needed some fresh goggles. So we got him some fresh goggles and sent him back out. He's off to a heck of a start. Good luck out there, guys. Thank you. Thanks. Guys? All right, thanks a lot, Mikey. And uh, that kind of answers the question, except we still don't know. I think you're right. Might have been some overflow stuff that we were looking at with the steam. Yeah, That's that what was, we'll keep our fingers crossed. Yeah, there was. Uh, you noticed uh, also they did say he went down. The, the left radiator shroud is definitely damaged on that machine as well and flapping there. Um, which that's you know pretty common for that to happen. Nothing that uh, nothing to be too concerned about. But that com combined with the steam um, or oil smoke, not sure which it was, uh, leads me to believe that that machine is running really hot, uh, coming through the mulch pile there. Now we have seen in the past in the mulch, we've seen steam come up out of the mulch. But you know we had about 20 bikes go through there, and his was the only one that uh, was producing any kind of steam. So we'll keep an eye on it. What we'll keep an eye on right now is the number one FMF KTM of Caleb Russell, and it looks like he has taken over the yeah. lead. Yeah, that's why I did not see uh, Thad Duvall come there. There's your answer. Yep, Thad Duvall running now in the shadows of the number one as he was casting shadows a few moments ago. The tables have turned, and now Caleb Russell is looking at maybe uh, finally getting back to his winning ways here in uh, Ohio and uh, maybe posting up win number five here at uh, John Fenton. And that would be a pretty big feat, as you know, as well as anybody, winning multiple times at any uh, e uh, any. Uh, venue is certainly a lot to uh, be proud of. Absolutely. And the third place rider, the 739 machine of Trevor Bollinger, that involves Rockstar Energy Racing, Husqvarna teammate. You know, Rodney, while we have a moment here, we should be waiting on our fourth place rider, which was last new to be Jordan Ashburn. Uh, it was Ashburn closely followed by uh, Stu Baylor was in that fifth place spot, and then directly behind Baylor was a very hard charging 
Oh, here we go. Let's see. And it is not. It is now Stu Baylor. So Ashburn has now again dropped another position here. That was, uh, that was Grant. That oh, was Grant, Grant Baylor. Baylor. Yeah, Grant Baylor is now there's in the fifth Stu. place. So the, the brother's yeah. Baylor. I was just getting ready to say Grant's in fifth now. Stu is in sixth. They're running about 20, well, according to the timing, it's scoring about 24 seconds apart. We just saw Grant Baylor turn in a 25-32, which is about 32 minutes off the pace of Duvall and Russell. But uh, nonetheless, yeah. he is uh, on rails. And one thing we have not seen is Jordan Ashburn just yet as we wait with bated breath. Now, the steam issue might have been more than what we realized yeah, we, and more we, than what the guys at, uh, at Kawasaki realized. Yeah, and we did see his teammate Josh Strang come by. Now we see Josh Toth. Yeah, Ashburn has definitely had an issue. Obviously, those guys may either not have been aware of the issue or, uh, yeah, maybe they didn't think it was that big of a deal. But that machine was puking smoke and steam when we saw it on screen. The left radiator shroud was dislodged, um, potentially damaged the radiator. Don't know. Maybe we'll uh, we'll get an update here. But, uh, yeah, Jordan Ashburn is looking to be out of this one or at least well, well behind. He's now we're seeing our XC2 leader. Uh, there is Andrew DeLong also by there is Ricky Russell. So now Jordan Ashburn has fallen outside the top ten uh, as a result of whatever damage was done to that Babbage Racing Kawasaki. Uh, and, you know, as we set the stage here and we wait for our second place rider in XC2 and the rest of our XC1 guys. Now there we see Thad Duvall. Don't know if we missed Caleb Russell. No, look at this swapping positions now. Thad Duvall back to lead, Caleb Russell second. These guys are just swapping the lead back and forth. Yeah, and that's it. To go exactly with that, Rodney, let's set the, set the stage here quick. You know, coming into this one, Thad Duvall was frustrated because at the last round, Caleb Russell pulled out a lead early and Thad really never got to race him. They kind of, as I said, you know, race each other on pit board times. So Thad is going to do any and everything that he can to not let that happen. And that by the same token, Caleb's going to do the same thing. He's not going to want to let Thad Duvall get away because if, if he does, then he's racing the pit board. Bollinger right now is the one that's at a slight disadvantage because those guys are pushing so hard up front trying to push each other. Sometimes we see them settle into a chess match. But it seems like today they are absolutely pushing the pace and Bollinger is going to need a little bit of help maybe some from, from some lap riders or maybe these guys will say you know what this track is just too much we need to settle into a pace and if they both kind of without speaking agree to that it might give him an opportunity now I could be wrong but is that Stu back around Grant now it looked like it it sure looked like that was the 514 as uh, things are swapping around quite a bit between these guys here there's Josh Strang so that is our so we've seen our top three, then four, Grant five, and six all yeah. on the screen. Grant should have gone through there. He did, he did. There was two Baylors that went through, okay. but it's hard to tell which one's which. Okay, so we got uh, the 314 and the 514 have gone through. Josh Strang has gone through. I believe that uh, we should be seeing Daniel Milner, the 31 machine, checking in with us soon. Good to see Milner back out of Australia. Uh, he's kind of a hit and miss type rider. He, he visits and races a few races and then ducks yeah. out. There's Josh, the Josh Toth now. Yeah, he's gotten around Milner. So Toth on a, on a charge, but he's got a good little gap to make up to that 114 machine of Strang. Uh, pretty big gap there that he's got a bridge, but he is on the charge and looking to make that happen. The next rider we should see after Toth, we should see our leader, XC2 leader of uh, Ben Kelly, the number one machine. There is Andrew DeLong, the 410 Phoenix Racing House Barn. I'll tell you what, DeLong looks really smooth today. There is 212, Ricky Russell, There's and there is Ben Kelly. So the guys on the move right now, it seems, are these guys here a little bit further in the back and along. They've, they've picked up the pace enough that they've actually displaced Ben Kelly and put him further back physically than right. what he was. Now, on correct time, they'll still be ahead of those guys, but uh, those guys were behind him, and now they're back in front of him and pushing hard. So... Uh, you know, these, these conditions are treacherous, Randy. I don't think you can really put into words just how slick this track is. <laughs> it, it, it's funny because, you know, I made this statement yesterday. This is the slickest, stickiest dirt I've ever been around. It, it, it just, it's, it's odd how that works out. You know, it's funny. I, I was walking on Friday uh, just around the pits themselves. Not Lost even your shoes. It, well, no, I didn't lose my shoes, but I literally came back and I was talking to my buddy Tyler. And, uh, here we go. Here's the leaders on screen in the Monster Mile, the 989 Rockstar Racing Husqvarna of Thad Duvall out front, hometown boy, lives just across the river, a little ways, followed very closely by the number one FMF KTM, Caleb Russell. We've seen these guys swap the lead, what, two, three times uh, now already, Rodney? Yeah, I think three times just in the last three miles or so. <laughs> so Thad Duvall back to the point position. The next rider we should see should be his teammate, Trevor Bollinger, and there he is. You can recognize him because he does not have a front number plate. At some point throughout the first two laps of racing, he has lost that coming through the Monster Mile in third place. And we'll have to get a gap here because he was, when we let, when we had seen him in scoring there, he was only about 12 seconds behind, and he is definitely more than that now. Don't know how much time he's lost, but uh, 
next we'll see the brothers Baylor, Stu and Grant, uh, in which order we never know. That is Stu, I'm fairly sure. That is definitely Stu. You can tell by the, the way he holds his chest when he rides. So Stu has gotten his way around Grant. I see a five on the jersey there. And uh, still no Grant just yet. Wow. Looks like he's opened up a bit of a gap. There is Grant. Yeah. So we can remember that Grant is not wearing a chest protector on the outside, and Stu is. That's how, that's how we can remember. <laughs> All right. That'll work. Start to stretch out just a little bit. Uh, kind of uh, surprising. Must be some mistakes, or must have been a mistake made there by uh, Grant and allow Stu. Stu, again, though, uh, I don't think he likes to be beaten by his little brother. No, I don't think either one of those guys likes to be beaten by each other. You know, it's family, but uh, at the same time, uh, you know, they, they, they want to beat each other for sure. The 206 machine of Josh Toad. Uh, he is, last we saw, he was followed pretty closely by the 410 of Andrew DeLon. Well, Ricky Russell was in there as well. Yeah. Uh, so we should see the 212 machine. I think that might have been the helmet we just saw go by. And then next up, we should be seeing soon. No, there is Russell. So that get. oh, look at this. DeLong around Russell now. So we knew he was on the charge. It looked like he was moving. And he is up around Russell. That's good news. And there is... Ben Kelly as well, so he has kind of latched onto these guys and uh, yeah. securely in the lead. Had a what was his lead there on the first lap in that XC2 Pro Lights? Oh, oh look at Kelly struggle a little bit. That just really shows he's one of the better technical riders on the track, one of the best technical riders on the track. And for him to struggle through those ruts just really shows how slick and how technical. Now look at this. Here we go. We're going to see this guy's going to have to go up and around. Oh, he made it work pretty well, but that's what can happen, Rodney. One rider falls, blocks the line, and then everybody's got to try and work their way around, and it really can mess up their flow. Well, Benjamin Kelly leading up 54 seconds over Craig DeLong, who is in second aboard the number 10 at the end of lap number two. Austin Lee out of Bedford, Indiana, was another minute and six seconds back with Liam Draper less than a second behind him. So like Draper and Lee was battling. Evan Smith was another 13 seconds back, rounding out the top five on the 347. Then Jonathan Johnson in six. Ryder Lafferty was seven. Alex uh, Teagarden, a.k.a. as known as uh, Howie's dad, uh, running in that uh, number eight spot. Sam Evans, the 717. And Bradley Cox, the 409, out of South Africa, is uh, rounding out the top ten. I believe that may be Daniel Milner that just came by, because uh, I saw that rider a few times and thought it was a lap rider. Did not recognize the, uh, the the machine, did not recognize the riding style. And now that I see the back of the jersey, I see it is TLD gear, and I believe that is what Milner is wearing this year. So I think that might be Daniel Milner that we've seen uh, there a few times. He's got a camel back over his name on the back of his jersey, so it's hard to see, but I think he did just come by. So he's dropped a few spots. He was up as high as, I believe, sixth at one point and uh, now is running a little bit further back, but still out there and circulating within the top 10. Well, you were mentioning uh, Liam Draper there a few moments ago. I'm kind of curious, you know, after seeing how tightly knit he and Austin Lee were there for that third place position, how things are starting to pan out now. What we got here? There is Craig DeLong, the number ah. 10 machine. Uh, he is that second place rider in our XC2 Pro Lights class, which tells me that Ben Kelly has really opened up that lead. That is a lot more than 54 seconds. I think we're going to be looking at upwards of two minutes now from where he uh, was able to get really out front, put the hammer down, and uh, he's opened up that gap over Craig DeLong in that XC2 Pro Lights. So right now, as we roll through this one, we are an hour and 10 minutes into this race and looking forward to uh, seeing just exactly what the next two hours or so are going to bring. Kind of just uh, getting set in the pace if we look at the scenario up front, when do we expect to see the lap three complete and uh, get a glimpse of the leaders at the finish line? We're about a minute out or less. We should be seeing these riders coming in to the motocross track area here pretty soon. Uh, last check again, Duvall and Russell uh, continually swapping out that first place position. Uh, Thad Duvall out front now at the 11 mile marker of Caleb Russell as they drop onto the moto track. There we go. These guys are both on the Sunday Creek Motocross track at the moment. We'll see them. They've doubled their way down the hill here, getting a little ruddy in that soft section. And now that the track is starting to dry up, these ruts are getting some hard edges, which is going to make it that much harder for these guys to navigate. Less room for error. you got to hit your marks. you got to be precise. And while doing that, at breakneck speed that these guys are going right now, it really makes it a challenge. You know, something else that makes it a challenge. You know, we talk about the mud. We talk about this clay and the consistency of it. 
when this stuff dries out, it's almost like glass. I mean, it's hard, and it, it shatters in, in some areas. I was really uh, intrigued with the, the conditions of the motor track yesterday whenever I walked out after uh, yesterday's race. Uh, so Duvall and Russell are through with three laps complete each. 2.8 seconds is what the... Uh, Time is between the two at timing and scoring, but we know as well as anyone it's closer and tighter than that as we've watched these riders swap back and forth several times there on lap number three. Working on lap number four now is wrapping up lap three. I believe this is Trevor Bollinger now making his way in, and this will be a perfect opportunity for us to start really seeing, I think, getting a, a better perspective of what these, uh, these battles are shaping up like as we roll on. Yeah, 32 seconds back this lap, so he lost 20 seconds to those guys that lap. It's just so hard when you're not in the draft, when you can't see him. You know, Trevor's probably out there just thinking he's riding as fast as anyone can ride a motorcycle, and those guys pulled him 20 seconds. It, it's just hard when you don't have that perspective. Stu Baylor now into that fourth place spot. Looks like possibly Josh Strang has gotten around yeah. Grant Baylor. Oh, look Whoa. at this. Strang goes down. He's got a left rider on top of him, there and Grant, Grant Baylor's going to, oh, oh nope, nope, not quite going to get back around him, but I back right to his rear wheel. I thought he got back around him there. I thought he was going to make it. Over in the pits now, looks like uh, 989. Is that that? Duvall taking a pit stop, it looks like. They're trying to knock some of that mud off and underneath that fender. Uh, the, there's Caleb Russell. He's also taking a pit stop right now. They're actually power washing his machine, trying to knock some of that mud out. And again, sticky mud. It gets in those radiators, makes these machines overheat. Don't matter what brand of bike it is, it's hardly no match for the southeastern Ohio mud here at Sunday Creek Raceway. Absolutely. So we saw both of the top two riders in the pits, and here comes third place. He is also in the pits. That is Trevor Bollinger. Looks like he's going to take some fresh goggles. Uh, Caleb Russell did not get goggles. Or, I'm sorry, Thad Duvall did not get goggles. I didn't, wasn't able to see if Caleb did or not. Thad Duvall was a water bottle and fuel and on his way. Trevor Bollinger, water bottle, goggles, fuel, and on his way. So a little bit different, uh, you know, changing up what, what kind of services they get when they come into VP Fuels Pro Row there. But uh, still quickly on his way and in pursuit. I'm sure he was probably not happy to find out that he lost 20 seconds that lap. But at the same time, again, it, it's just so hard to chase that pace when, when you're not able to see the guys. Johnny, you know, watching uh, pit stops yesterday, I don't know if you guys saw this, and, and I don't expect to see it happen here today and even be tried by anyone because the mud isn't sticking. There is uh, Ashburn, I believe, in the – that's that's Strang. Strang, yeah. That is Strang into the pits now getting uh, a fuel stop. But uh, yesterday uh, during the ATV races, and oftentimes you see it on the, the bike races too, the, the mud starts to pack up on top of the helmets and things like that. And we know that they have and carry that foam on top of their helmets so that a lot of that won't uh, – won't stick to it. But I noticed something yesterday. Josh Merritt did something and has done something the last two races that may actually be something that is is kind of a, a new alternative. Switching the helmet. A I, new helmet. Here we see these guys battling wheel to wheel. Thad Duvall still out front. Caleb Russell in second as they're in the John Penton mulch pile. Yeah, that's actually uh, an old Taylor Kaiser trick. Taylor was the first person that uh, I had ever seen do that. Um, back around 2006 2007 he used to in mud races he used to get an extra set of stickers and uh change you know for the scoring stickers and change out his helmet at the pit stop and josh decided to bring that back you know with these heavy mud races and um you know yesterday i didn't have much mud on my helmet it, it wasn't like it was at x factor but at x factor it was it was terrible i mean the helmets were so heavy um, so completely packed full of mud as we see Trevor Bollinger and he is you know it looks like he is really again he looked so aggressive last lap as well that is a lap rider that's right? gonna say that lap rider is really trying to keep pace right now with uh, that we got some TV time for him. yeah it's a, it's a free toe I mean if you can hang on to one of these XC2, XC1 or XC2 guys when they lap you you know you can pick up their pace for a little bit and, you know you might be able to pass some riders in your class or make up some ground right especially yeah, if you can latch on and just match the lines and, and some of the speed that you see going out through there but wow uh, our top three Duvall Russell Bollinger there they are in Jordan Ashburn is in actually Stu Baylor is up to fourth Josh Strang in fifth Grant Baylor is sixth now Josh well Ben Kelly is seventh Josh Toth in eighth Andrew DeLong is in ninth place overall, eighth in class, and actually now he has dropped to tenth overall, still eighth in class as his little brother gets him on time adjustment now. Andrew DeLong, the 410, is uh, ninth place, or excuse me, Craig DeLong is tenth place over. Andrew is uh, ninth place, so he gets his little brother. I was, I was thinking it switched around for some reason, but it didn't. So uh, Andrew still ahead in ninth. 
Greg DeLong is running in the 10th place position, second in the XC2 250 Pro Class. I saw that completely wrong whenever it popped up. It happens. Sometimes it can get difficult when you start mixing those classes up. Josh uh, Toth on screen, the 206 FMF Racing KTM machine. And, uh, you know, he's charging hard. Had a good run at the last one, obviously, there. Uh, rounding out the podium in a third place spot. His first XC1 Pro podium. And, uh, you know, he's wanting to repeat that. But right now, he's got a little work to do if he wants to get up in there within that top three. Here is your XC2 Pro Lights leader, Ben Kelly, the number one FMF KTM. Ricky Russell, the 212 machine there. And another XC1 rider that's kind of uh, been back and forth with Kelly. And there is Andrew DeLong. So Kelly and, or I'm sorry, Russell and DeLong have been back and forth with each other several times in this last half a lap. Well, as they continue to swap it back and forth and uh, work here on lap number four now. But, uh, uh, and, and just like, uh, you know, we keep talking about Andrew DeLong, you know, it's so good to see him out there, uh, you know, doing like he did. I, I didn't realize that he had basically not been a factor in GNCC for three years. I mean, being off for three years and still being the iconic name that he is and still carrying the weight in the industry that he does, that says a lot about the talent and skill that that rider has, I believe. Absolutely, you know, and he was known for his hard charges and never say die attitude years ago in that XC2 Pro Lights class. Uh, came into XC1, heavily touted, had some injuries, uh, had some great rides, rode for the factory factory Husky team there for a while, um, and then uh, last year actually rode for the Gas Gas team. You know, he's kind of been a journeyman the last couple of years trying to find a home for himself, and then uh, this year, you know, finding a great home at that Phoenix Racing Honda team, new, new team to GNCC this year. Um, and, you know, he's, he's really seeming to, as you said, mesh well with the team, mesh well with the bike. And, um, you know, he's, he's been a steady guy climbing through the ranks throughout the first five races, now six of 2019. Right. And uh, good to see that uh, things are progressing forward for he and the team as uh, we see that uh, we are an hour and 18 minutes into this race. We are looking at uh, leaders due in in about 18 minutes for lap number four complete and uh, some of the other uh, classes that we might want to take a look at includes this XC2 250 class. Uh, Benjamin Kelly, again, Craig along in second. Austin Lee now a minute and 21 seconds. The gap between first and second has now opened up to two minutes. The gap between second and third, a minute and 21 seconds. Evan Smith now in fourth place, about 18 seconds back behind Austin Lee. Liam Draper has dropped from fourth just off the heels of Austin Lee into that uh, fifth place position now on the 198 out of New Zealand. And Jonathan Johnson, the 981 from Landrum, South Carolina, and six, seventh, the 44 of Ryder Lafferty. There is the 981 of Jonathan Johnson on the drone, just as you were talking about it, Ryan. He almost on cue, he must have heard his name. <laughs> Sixth place position is what he checked in at and last time around. It looks like, uh, yeah, he should still be holding on to that sixth place spot as Liam Draper just checked in a minute and 10 seconds ago ahead of him. So Draper's getting a little bit of comfort zone there. Uh, we should be seeing in another minute or so, Ryder Lafferty in seventh, Howie's dad, AKA Alex Teagard in the 309 and eighth, Sam Evans the 717 in ninth, and Bradley Cox from out of uh, South Africa here with Mark Hyde this weekend, rounding out your top 10. Unfortunately, you know, Mike Winkowski, a rider that we're used to seeing in close to the top five, close to a podium position, and even sometimes battling for wins all the way back in a 12th place position after two laps of racing complete. Looks like he's uh, met some struggles here today in the soils of southeastern Ohio. FMF XC3 125 Pro-Am class. Jesse Ansley after two leading that one. They're due in in a couple minutes, about two, I believe. And uh, seven lap race is what we're just now hearing is what the officials are saying this race will be so you can plan accordingly to a seven lap race. But Ansley out of Mackey City, Florida, 17 seconds ahead of the 990 or the 99 of Cody Barnes out of Sterling, Illinois on that beta machine. Those two have had some uh, knockdown drag outs this season. And uh, Cody has also been able to benefit from some misfortunes of uh, Jesse Ansley, which uh, has helped uh, keep this championship uh, very tightly knit with Jesse already having three wins under his belt, uh, barely only a handful of points back as Cody Barnes. So we still got a long season to go in this uh, XC3 125 Pro-Am class. Joe Marsh, a 39 out of Indianola, Pennsylvania in third. Uh, Chase Colville, the 318 from West Sunbury, Pennsylvania is fourth, the 700 of Jason Lipscomb from Parkersburg, West Virginia. KTM rider rounds out your top five. 
Open A class as we scan through some more of our classes. Levi Keller here at the uh, hour and 20 minute mark, closing in on the halfway point. Has a lead out of Bainbridge, Ohio, minute and three seconds. I believe Bainbridge was home to the OXCR racing last weekend, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, uh, Levi Keller uh, leading this one today. Maybe got a little practice in the, the Ohio mud last weekend. A minute and three seconds over the 256 of Blacksburg, South Carolina's Evan Earl. Uh, 521, Coke Beckert out of Zanesville, Ohio. He's in third. Brady Myers, the uh, 429 from Walker, West Virginia, is running fourth. Joshua Lee from Statesboro, Georgia, is fifth aboard the 210. 221, James Murphy from Granville, Massachusetts, in sixth. Seventh is Zachary Hugel from Seneca, PA. Eighth in the 107, Matt Curvin out of uh, Statesville, North Carolina. Ryan Slopko from Londonderry, Ohio, the 215, is in ninth. And Braden Moore out of Ona, West Virginia, 967, rounds out the top 10 as we watch some uh, great battles developing here in some of our amateur classes. And uh, looking at that one, that one could be one of our uh, back marker, or not one, we call it a back marker, but one of our pros. Well, I tell you what, uh, amateur of the week. Uh, you know, we're talking a lot about amateurs and and we like to focus a lot on amateurs. Talking about the, we'll be looking at the 258 class coming up here in just a few moments. But I uh, want to talk a little bit about our amateur, uh, feature amateur of the week, uh, Ryder. Of course, you know, we, we like to, to scan through the results and scan through the pits and find some unique individuals, uh, whether it be riding skills, whether it be things that they're doing in the pits or whatever, something that kind of sets them apart. And we found yet another, and this week's amateur of the week, uh, spotlighted rider of the week is Jacob McPherson, who we caught up with. My name is Jacob McPherson, and I ride in 65, 10 to 11. I have been riding about four years, and I started GNCC last year, and I got a eighth last year. I missed Florida but I raced every other one. I'm gonna try and qualify for Loretta, and I went to Redbud, High Point, Baja, um, and I raced motocross and GNCC. I like GNCC more, because I feel like I'll get landed on in motocross. I went to Detroit and for the Supercross, and one day I got picked, my mom tried to entry me for the KTM Junior Challenge and one night at about 9 o'clock I got called and they said you're going to San Diego for the KTM Junior Challenge at Petco Park and I went there and I uh, rode some Supercross and yeah, that was pretty fun. Wow, good kid right there. Very interesting kid. Like I say, I mean, you know, in every individual out here, it seems like these kids, whether they be kids in the 65 class or whether they be kids in the 250A or even the XC1 class, everybody's got a great story to tell. And, and Jacob McPherson, glad to hear that one. Sounds like uh, he, he's a motocross racer and a woods racer. I like what he said. I like GNCC a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get landed. And I, I empathize with you there, buddy. It uh, definitely can be a little bit intimidating sometimes the way these uh, way these guys ride a moto track. There we see some GNCC fans partaking in a Monster Energy uh, beverage there. And they're sitting out somewhere near the Monster Mile. Uh, no shirt, don't need it. It's a warm day here in Sierra Leone. No. Woo! <laughs> that, is a, that is a core group of GNCC racing right there, and we love it. Couldn't do it without them. Oh, for sure. Actually, if I wasn't here, that's where I'd be. <laughs> here we see the, the drones doing a little spying on us here, Rodney. Uh-oh. We're, we're doing our job. <laughs> Hi, Ian. Hey, you know, let's go ahead and uh, while we're waiting on the leaders, Johnny, keep an eye out here for our leaders. I want to look at this 258 class. It's got Chase Hayes out of Sumter, South Carolina, out front by only about five seconds over Simon Johnson, the 29. Looks like we've got a really good one going on. Uh, Johnson out of Bennington, Vermont. Tara Alta, West Virginia, home to uh, Tyler Brandon, the 421. And third, Nelsonville, Ohio, home to Tristan Lander, the 704, just up the road literally from where we are right now. 712, Bryce Costa from Sorrento, Florida, rounds out the top five. Then it's Brody Johnson. 235 in six. Cole Whitmer in seventh aboard the 518. Andrew Gross in eighth. Ninth place, 326. Brendan Poling and Matthew Davis rounds out your top ten. Looking at the 200A class, it's uh, Logan Kiddick out of Farmington, Minnesota, the 506 with the lead. The number uh, 490, Max Fernandez, second out of Ottsville, Pennsylvania. 
Uh, it's KT Amelia Key, the number 900 from Arcola, Illinois, running in third. Zachary Davidson out of Iron Station, North Carolina, the 199 to fourth. I think he got the whole shot, or at least was close to it. 450 Dominic Morris out of Newark Valley, New York, is fifth. And Sean Myers rounds out uh, the sixth. Here is your leader, the 989. Rocks our wrist and has Varna Badvon. It appears he has broken away a bit from the number one machine of Caleb Russell. We do see that there is a bit of a lead now, and the fans are waving, letting. The What's cameraman the knows, down. here comes the Oh, number. that's what it is. That guy must not like Caden. <laughs> <laughs> that's A-OK. -okay. Oh, look at this. Yes. Not Trevor only has Bollinger. Caleb lost some time there, but Trevor Bollinger has made, uh, uh, taken advantage of that situation. All right. Look at this, Stu Baylor. Wow. Something crazy has gone on out here. Well, you know, yesterday, you saw it probably firsthand out there, Johnny. There were a lot of circumstances where you could make up a lot of time and you could lose a lot of time real fast if you got in the wrong place on the racetrack at the right time. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there was uh, a lot of treacherous conditions out there. A lot of bottlenecks have popped up in strange areas, and it looks like that may be the case again here today. Josh Strang now there as well, so that is our top five that have made their way through. So we've got really, honestly, four riders maybe five now back in battle but looking like they all have an opportunity to potentially go for this win here today and definitely battle for a podium uh that ball with a little bit of a gap i don't know rodney i didn't i didn't count that one out but i'd say maybe no. 12 to 15 seconds it was or so. it was at least that johnny at least that because it got to a point where i was like hmm, caleb's a little farther back oh, wow where's caleb and then all of a sudden it's like where is caleb you know it took several seconds to start thinking that there is the 31 is that milner is he a lap down or is no he that that is grand Baylor. oh oh i thought i thought i called three one i told i was going i'm sorry about that all right look at this josh toth now has caught up to grant baylor wow wow that's an interesting line he took there he missed the rut went for it, tried to make his own run that didn't uh, didn't pan out so well for mercy sinks alive thad duval may be looking at another win here in Ohio at what he considers his home track, Caleb Russell, who is a legacy here. I mean, this is literally his family's farm, and he's finding struggles here uh, for the last two years, and even starting to look like those struggles are starting to jump up and bite him now. So this track in and of itself, Rodney, can jump up and bite you at any time. You know, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and wow, that Duvall through. So go ahead and put a timer on this one, I guess. Uh, go out on a limb here and say that, uh, you know, that uh, Caleb Russell has lost probably. Whoa, wow. On. So, and that tighten back up just like it stretched out. Yeah, I was going to say. Seven seconds, Rodney. I was going to say we were looking at 15 to 20 there at one point, but no, that's not. And look at this, Trevor Bollinger making his. So I can tell you right now, 16 seconds back to Bollinger and about seven back to Russell is what it is based off our timer on screen there. So we've got three. It's a top three all within 16 seconds. And Stu Baylor was right behind Bollinger, and now he's lost a little bit of time. He is about 20 seconds back right now. I'm sorry, 30 seconds back. So about 30 seconds, 34 seconds back to Baylor. So the top four all within 34 seconds. Man, it's crazy how much that changed. I mean, it wasn't even a mile between camera shots, I don't think, that we saw that big uh, well, Remember last up. lap, we saw, we saw three or four position changes in that amount of time, not just between our leaders, but the riders behind them all swapped. So there's, a, there's some technical sections in between those two camera shots, right. and it's shaking things up a bit. Yeah, it, it could be a number of things. There is... Uh, Josh, was that Strang, I believe? It was, the 114 machine. Yeah, Josh Strang going through. He was in the fifth place position. He's dropped a few positions back, it looks like, as maybe as far back as seventh now at this point. Uh, no, he'd still be he'd still be fifth. It's, what do you? Uh, yep, it's still Duvall, Russell, Poland. Yeah, Duvall, oh, Russell, Bollinger, you're right. Baylor, Strang. It just, I don't know why I thought I saw him, but you're right. The gap is starting to open up there back to that fifth place position. I thought we saw but that camera shot so close together is why it's got me confused there. That's yeah, he's, he was... Uh, he was a little bit closer to Baylor before, but he was also Grant. Grant Baylor was ahead of him a lap ago, and now he has gotten by Grant Baylor and put some time on him. So really a good ride for Strang. He's a rider that's been struggling the last couple of rounds. Josh Toth again now within sight of Grant Baylor, and uh, he's you know he's going to put the hook in and try and make that pass. Well, look at that uh, gnarly FMF hill climb, the power point. Again, uh, now I'll tell you, I, I, uh, I've reclaimed this, this section of the racetrack in, in years past when we're working for the track crew and stuff and that was a hard one and a fun one at the same time to reclaim I uh, uh, I, I got stuck on that hill dragging the trail with some tires and I had to roll back and once I started rolling back I couldn't stop 
I landed literally late, and I went zooming down that hill. And how I missed every tree behind me, I'll never know. But I was probably running about 40 miles an hour going backwards. This hill right here is nothing to sneeze at, folks, I'll tell you. And you can see that the roots are being exposed. It looks more challenging today than yesterday, even. Well, you know, these guys have to worry about keeping it upright. We just have to go up the hill. <laughs> Our bikes balance, it, balance themselves. These ones, you know, look at all those roots. I mean, they just look like any one of them could just jump up, grab a tire, and throw you down to the ground just that quick. Just that quick. Here's your leader. Thad Duvall, the 989 machine. There's Papa Chad pointing him the line. We'll see what the gap is. He passes that monster uh, logo there at about, it was about 16 seconds that he went by there. So we're at, oh, look at this. Things have now shaken up again. So now it's t over 10 seconds and he's and still on up the hill. Bollinger right to the back of, let's see here, 16. So we're, wow. Now it's gone back up to about uh, 18 seconds now. The wow. gap went from about 20 to seven, back to 20, just that quick. That's crazy, and and at the same time, Trevor Bollinger has advanced forward each and every time, it looks like. It's every time we've seen him, there's uh, Baylor going through, uh, Stu Baylor going through now in that fourth place position. Baylor having some struggles. He was off the back of the bike there. I thought he's gonna go end up back down there again, the way he, the way he was pointed there for a few moments, but uh, yeah, very uh, challenging part of the racetrack. Uh, tell us a little bit about what uh, we're looking at coming off that. looks like they're coming down a hill and then yep. into dropping into the creek. Yes, yeah, so you drop into that ravine there, and there's a couple of options. You can either go up on the bank as we watch Josh Strang look this, make this section look fairly easy. I can assure you it is not. It's a very challenging section of racetrack. That dirt is incredibly slick. You can see Strang taking an interesting line there. I think he got a little sideways and stalled that machine. But thankfully, with that electric start, that KX450 machine just fires right back up, and he's back on his way. It was, he was trying to get some extra, uh, he's sponsored by Monster, so he's trying to get a little bit extra TV time for that Monster <laughs> banner there, and uh, decided to stall the machine next to it. And uh, here we see Andrew Matusik, I believe, one of our uh, Vet A riders. Yeah. Uh, he's a, gone a lap down at this point, and that is Grant Baylor just behind him, the 314 machine. Um, and there is, we see Josh Toth within view behind him, and it looks as though Toth is continuing to chip away at the gap between himself and Grant Baylor. Toth taking that outside line, but it's a long way down that ravine, Rodney, and it's very wet, very slick, and there's a lot of sharp rocks. Any one of them can jump up, grab a fork guard, grab a rotor, you know, grab a wheel, and, and they'll throw you down real quick. So you can see those guys kind of taking their time, coming down through there, making sure to keep it upright, and once they get through that section, back on the gas. But again, that's a place where you can make a pass or, or at least make up some time if you're willing to really push through there. Thad Duvall is, is very, very good at this technical stuff. It's, it's you know, what he's always kind of excelled in. You remember even back in his XC2 days, very nearly taking a win at Snowshoe uh, yeah. from that XC2 Pro Lights class. It was in four seconds. He finished behind David Knight that year, I believe it was. Yeah, I think he actually had him uh, on track the time from two miles ago and ended up yep. getting stuck and lost him by a few seconds. Yeah. That's nuts. Hey, you were talking about Andrew Matusik, by the way. He is running second place, or at last check was, uh, in that Junior AB 25 Plus class behind Damon Rummel, the 356 from Stafford Springs, Connecticut. About 44 seconds separating those two. By the way, Andrew Ball the 46 uh, out of Masontown, West Virginia, running in third. Landon Smith out of Kingsport, Tennessee, 365 in fourth. And Jesse Kildo out of Elizabeth, Pennsylvania, rounded out the top five in the junior AB class aboard the 669. Ben Kelly, your XC2 Pro Lights leader on screen, the number one machine, and he gets up through there relatively easy. I'll tell you what, Andrew DeLong came through while you were talking there, Rodney. He made that section really look easy. Just got off the back of that machine, tapped once with his foot, hard on the throttle, and he let that big 450 Honda eat. Was able to uh, get the power to the ground and well on his way. He's a rider that has a lot of throttle control. He rides the slick stuff very well. And, and a lot of confidence in his abilities as well as the machine and the equipment that he's using also. So uh, whenever you've got that kind of confidence that you can do what he's doing out there in these conditions, then, hey, you know, things are starting to mesh well there as we, we keep pointing out. And uh, though, you know, we still may be seeing results farther back and closer to a top 10 maybe today than, than a top five. It, who knows what it's going to end up like. But I'm telling you, as the time progresses, I think we're going to see uh, DeLong more and more consistently uh, toward the top five and inside the top five and eventually soon, I believe, working for a podium position finish. Yeah, absolutely. I, I could believe that for sure. I mean, he's a rider, as you said, that, uh, you know, he thrives on confidence. And once he gets, uh, gets his feet under him, there you see in the background just how slick that is. We see a rider with their bike on the ground. Uh, we're focusing on a rider in our foreground. But in the background back there, there's a rider on his side <clears throat> trying to pick that machine up, and it looks like he has gotten it picked up. Uh, he is 
kind of tiptoeing his way down now. He doesn't want to have to pick that machine up again. I'll tell you what, Rodney, in a race like today, you hit the ground enough times and eventually you get real tired from picking up a 250-plus pound motorcycle. I can only imagine, Johnny. I know, uh, you know uh, we talk about the weight of the mud. Uh, you know, a motorcycle, even on a dry day, falling down. Oh, look at this, Rodney. Sorry, Craig DeLong really struggling trying to get around that lap rider. Nearly went down. He was on one leg. The bike was half on the ground, and, and there you go. And, uh, yeah, as we... Uh, are we nearing another lap complete here? Sad Duvall on the Sunday Creek Motocross tour course. We'll see what the gap is. Uh, there is Caleb yeah. Russell at the 11 mile marker. So now it's closed back up. <laughs> this is just too much to deal with, Rodney. <laughs> it, it was, it's like an accordion effect going on out there it's right It's 20 now. seconds. It's 7 seconds. It's 13 seconds. It's 26 seconds. And these guys are just fighting for every inch, every corner, and doing the best they can. Thad trying to get away. Caleb trying not to let him. Trevor Bollinger throwing his hat in the ring, and Stu Baylor not far off. It's nuts. I love it. This is what keeps us coming back to GNCC. I guess if it wasn't for things like this, it wouldn't keep it so interesting to watch, and that's one thing that you can say about these guys in this XC1 class today. Uh, they're certainly giving us their money's worth as far as the price of admission goes because uh, this race still not over, and we've seen a lot of passes, and I expect that we're going to see that continue to be the uh, pattern throughout the course of the rest of the day. Yeah, absolutely. I think we're going to continue to see these gaps accordion out and slinky back in. Looks like Bollinger's still a little bit closer to Russell than Russell is to Duvall. <clears throat> but the whole gap of all of them, if we do our uh, refresh here and we look at scoring, Rodney, give us the tail of the tape. 18 seconds first to third. It's 11 seconds separating Thad Duvall and Caleb Russell. It's actually 11.018 seconds. And then 7.3 seconds back to Trevor Bollinger. So there's only uh, about 7.5 seconds between second and third. So uh, Russell has a little bit of to be alarmed about, I think, at this particular time. If you look at the lap times, a 25.19 for Duvall, 25.27 for Caleb Russell. Get this, 25.03 for Trevor Bollinger. Stu Baylor actually turned it to 25.09, 10 seconds faster than that of even Thad Duvall. So as fast and as smooth as these guys are up front, wow, these guys are really ripping it back there, trying to, to gain some of that lost ground from early in the race. I think what we're seeing there is the leaders are having to work their way through left riders. They're not aware that the, these guys are coming. And once they get through and kind of pave the way, it makes it a little bit easier as we see Josh Strang on screen, the 114 machine. And I'll tell you what, Strang looks like a new man today. <clears throat> the last couple of races, he just didn't seem to be comfortable, didn't seem to be where he wanted to be. I saw him yesterday. He was smiling. He was walking around with his wife and uh, Maverick. And, and they looked like they were having a good time and enjoying being here at the Sunday Creek facility. And he looks like he's hard on the throttle and really enjoying riding that KX450 today. Wouldn't be surprised to see him get up in there and challenge for a podium position before this is over. You know, I, t I talked to him before the uh, race got underway today in the uh, pre-race interviews, and uh, he really, you know, this place holds a lot of memories for him. Uh, he He's lost a couple, he's never won here, I don't think. And I, I think that he had, but he actually came close a couple of times. I think it was in like 06 or 07, and somewhere around there we had a mud race. Remember Paul Wibley? passed him on the road. We had a, a Suzuki sweep of the podium, but Paul Wibley passed him on the road to take the win. There he is getting a water bottle from his wife, Cameron. And then, uh, of course, with that, he was a little frustrated about that. And then there was another one. The year that Corey Buttrick won in 2010, you might have heard at the beginning of the show, he was talking about that. That was one of the most memorable moments for him. Uh, he was uh, he was stuck, and I guess he came up on uh, Corey Buttrick stuck. He helped Corey Buttrick get unstuck. And he ended up, uh, and Corey went on to win uh, that GNCC that day, marking his first ever XC1 GNCC overall win. And thus far, so only one. Yeah, that's a uh, pretty crazy story. And obviously, if Corey was going to win one, you know he wanted it to be here. I mean, this yeah. is his hometown race. There we see Caleb Russell. Thad Duvall was in front of him. We caught the top of that rock star. Oh, look at this Bollinger. Did you see how hard he had to dab there? Man, that mulch pile is getting gnarly, and it has been known to jump up and bite guys throughout the years. We've seen guys go cartwheeling out of that thing, <laughs> laying on the ground on the other side. We've seen some absolutely gnarly crashes in that thing over the years, Rodney. Yeah, and, you know, going back to, to this, you, you mentioned it, 15 years, however many years it's been here. See, I've been uh, consistently since 2002. I think it came in about 2003 or 2004. Uh, it was originally uh, put out there, uh, the county going around cleaning the roadsides and the ditches and stuff. They had chipped and mulched all the uh, stuff along the road, and they 
piled it up out there for, for Howard and Jeff. They were going to use it on the moto track. And it was a big, just a big pile of wood chips. And we went through it the first year. Then we went through it the second year. Went to, and it, it was bigger and taller. But as it shrinks, and it just every year, it's a challenge. It's the mulch pile, but it's a different challenge somehow. It's kind of taken on a life of its own at this point. And, uh, you know, it, it grows grass through it. There's trees growing up out of it. And the only thing they do is they push it back somewhat flat after the race and let it sit and wait for next year, decompose a little bit more, get a little bit rougher and a little bit blacker. And uh, it's gnarly, man. That, that gets really rough over there. Josh Strang through there. And it looks like he might be making up just a little bit of ground on Stu Baylor. Uh, he was looks like 32 seconds back behind Baylor when they checked in at scoring, and I think the gap was slightly less. We'll have to wait and see when they come through next lap, or maybe if we get a clear shot of those guys and the camera stays static long enough, I think Josh Strang might be chipping away at that gap and getting a little bit closer to the fourth-place ride of Stu Baylor Jr. Well, as we look at lap times, the 25.09 for Stu Baylor. Uh, as we said, uh, 25.03 for Trevor Bollinger. Both those guys turning the faster laps of, of everyone, but behind... Uh, Stu Baylor, when you look at the lap time, it was a 25-25 for Josh Strang. Uh, he's right there in the in the lap times with Thad Duvall and Caleb Russell as far as the uh, front lap times are concerned. It's just he's uh, about 40 seconds out of the lead right now. Yeah, yeah, he's, uh, he's pushing hard trying to make up that ground. And I tell you what, Grant seems to have really kind of lost the pace here. Don't know what happened. He was charging just a few laps ago. Josh Toth, we saw catch him, I believe it was right around the nine-mile marker. So... He had caught him. Now he has passed him, displaced him, and put a good bit of time on him. Uh, and if you look at the lap times, as you said there, Rodney, Grant Baylor with a 26.08 lap time, and uh, Josh Toth with a 25.25. So uh, about 50, almost 50 seconds faster uh, was, or 40 seconds faster, a little over 40 seconds faster was Josh Toth and Grant Baylor. And Toth putting in some pretty solid lap times for a guy coming through the pack. Would not be surprised if we see him start to close up that gap a little bit on the guys in front of him which would be Josh Strang and Stu Baylor. Yeah, it probably wouldn't be a surprise to see him uh, not only put that pressure on him, but uh, get by as well. I mean, this kid, uh, again, you know, I think he's getting off to a slower start than I expected him to today, and he's just getting up to speed. It's taken him a little longer today, but uh, talking with him and knowing him, you know, these types of conditions as far as muddy conditions, nothing out of the ordinary for any off-road racer, especially in New England. They're uh, that races in the off-road, so I don't think the conditions may necessarily be playing much of a role here. It's just, uh, again, you get out there, lap traffic, uh, just simple little mistakes, trying to neg uh, negotiate some of that uh, and think about what these lap riders are going to do, and then you think they're going to go left, they go right, and it's all over for you. Well, as we watch uh, this one unfold here, a pretty exciting uh, day looking out over across this field. Well, what a beautiful weekend, Johnny. I mean, we started out, it was pretty, a pretty day on Friday, you know. We did have some rain showers on Thursday evening, and then uh, it looked like it was going to be beautiful. And even the weatherman had said, uh, looks like we're clear for the rest of the weekend. And then about midnight, uh, they changed their mind, I guess, because we got a lot of rain, which basically set us up for what we've got going on here today, which was some uh, gnarly conditions. Uh, yesterday, we were two hours late for the uh, afternoon uh, pro race. And uh, that means that we finished up after 6 o'clock, which put us late into the evening as we rolled into that third round of the EMTB GNCC, our specialized electric mountain bike GNCC racing. And it was a, a great evening for it. Uh, they had to do some track alterations. Uh, they basically went on, I think, the micro and, uh, uh, and youth race uh, track out there that had been ran in and, and dried it up some. But uh, a six-lap race that left a lot of these riders with their tongues hanging out. You can see how slick the conditions were. I mean, these guys were trying for traction, but uh, they were str struggling, making it through. So there was uh, some visiting riders, uh, normal mountain bike riders that raced. We see uh, we had some guys. I saw we had some riders from Colorado, Nat Ross, another rider from Golden, Colorado. don't remember the gentleman's name, but cool to see some of the heavy hitters from the mountain bike and e-mountain bike world come here to GNCC Racing and uh, try a hand at our format. And, uh, you know, the fans, this guy's taking a bath in the pond while it's going on. 
And, you know, one thing that is for sure, GNCC Racing has kind of its own flow, its own flair, and one of our own was able to take the win. Charlie Mullins, there he is, crossing the finish line. Ricky Tauri with the checkered flag in hand. And uh, these guys are telling war stories after it was over. Well, I'll tell you what, a uh, fitting place for Charlie Mullins to take a win here uh, last night. As uh, you remember, Johnny, the year 2007 when he rode for the Ampro Yamaha team under the number four. He took his first ever GNCC win right here at the Weiss Coach John Pitt and GNCC itself. I, th I thought that was pretty impressive. And to celebrate that after retirement is a pretty good thing. Uh, I actually didn't know that. That's a very cool uh, cool little thing there, though. That, you know, a guy that... Uh, you know, got his first win here uh, so many years ago, and, and now coming back and getting another win. I think he's he's won them all so far this year. He's a beast on a bicycle, and, and e-bikes are, are no different. This guy's got some serious legs and some serious stamina. Training for some world-class uh, mountain yeah. bike races this yep. year, and, and this in its own right, uh, kind of in its own category, uh, but definitely attracting some of the top e-mountain bike athletes yeah, from now. around the country and, and around the world. So uh, growing, and uh, we did just see Daniel Milner on screen there. I feel like he's visiting all the way from Australia. We'll give him a shout-out whenever we can. Uh, he's out there still in that uh, 12th place overall position, 10th place in that XC1 Pro class. And, uh, you know, so here's a rider that, you know, has, has really um, – you know, you can't say enough about his abilities. I mean, this is a guy that that took the individual overall last year at the ISDE in uh, uh, in Chile. You know, he, was, he was there. I was there, and I forgot where we went. But uh, you know, he was able to. The, the individual overall at ISDE is a is a phenomenal achievement. You know, only two American riders have ever done it in history. Um, Ryan Sipes being one, and Taylor Robert did it a few years ago as well. Um, but his skill set never really seemed to. Um, transfer over quite to GNCC. You know, those are shorter sprints. You get the reset conditioning, not nearly as much of a uh, of an issue. Um, you know, himself being a diabetic, he talked about how that affected his performances, um, especially on days like today where the, the races are grueling and the temperatures are up there. Um, but, uh, you know, he's, he's worked with his medications and with his diet and all kinds of stuff to get himself where he can, he can be competitive. Obviously, you know, showcasing that last year at ISDE with the individual overall and wanted to try his hand at this. I think he's going to do some racing next weekend as well um, at, at the Sprint Enduro. And I, I don't know if he'll be back for the next GNCC in, in New York, but I know he's here for a couple of weeks uh, riding with, uh, you know, some of the other, other guys here in America. And I think he's got a teammate, uh, Daniel Snodgrass, with him, one of the other right. uh, yep. Australian riders. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're here enjoying the... Enjoying the GNCC atmosphere and, and running in the top ten. Nothing to sneeze at. Nothing to sneeze at at all. Speaking of top ten, let's go ahead, I think, uh, until our leaders check in with us, John, and keep an eye on things. We were talking a few moments ago. Uh, we left off with the four-stroke A lights, and now after three, and leaders do in in about 17 minutes. Uh, Tyler Soriano leading the four-stroke A lights class out of Eurexville, Ohio. Ian Flynn, the 422 from Greensboro, PA in second. 357, Johnny Manera from Millville, New Jersey. Uh, fourth place, Nathan Rector out of Rogersville, Missouri on the 385. And Frederick Bluen, who got the whole shot from Canada on the KTM 587, rounds out the top five. Then it's Tyler Sylvia, the 707 in sixth. Seventh, Trevor Maley. Uh, he's riding the 771, 303, Alex Luger in eighth. Ninth, 255, Russell Smith. And the 423 of Grady Faint rounds out your top 10. Looking next, Junior AB 25 plus, Andrew Matusik out front. Now he was running second and uh, has moved into the number one spot as he has dropped four minutes and 37 seconds between himself and the 356 of Rummel out of Stafford Springs, Connecticut. That's Damon Rummel who was leading earlier. Another 45 seconds back to Jesse Kildo, uh, the 669 from Elizabeth, Pennsylvania. 365 Landon Smith from Kingsport, Tennessee. Fifth, the 46 of Andrew Bonks from Masontown, West Virginia. Then in sixth, the 413, Benjamin Lee. Uh, Lee then fo out of, uh, followed by uh, Matt Bruffy, the 108 and seventh. Eighth is the 49, Jacob Chrisman. Ninth, 372, George Douglas. And rounding out the top ten, the 75 of Nick Mellinger in the Junior AB 25-plus class. Now looking at Bet A, Sam Forrester, the 48 from Elkton, Maryland, leading Elizabeth, Pennsylvania's James Bauer, the 551. About a minute and five seconds there. Tom Truxel, the 801 out of Verona, PA in third. 383, Luenzo Sanchez. Out of Kennesaw, Pence, uh, Kennesaw, Georgia, running in fourth. And Louis Oleon, the 187 from Lancaster, Ohio, got the whole shot running in fifth. Surly Amancio runs in sixth. Seventh, the 71 of Ben Conaway. Eighth, Bill Zavendi. Ninth is uh, Joshua Wyatt. And rounding out the top ten is Steve Lambruno. They're in that vet A 30-plus class. Uh, senior A 40-plus uh, class. 
Shotgun Sean Remick, the dad, the little pellet gun there. I, I love that. Uh, shotgun, uh, the 51 machine, he was battling for that early lead. He got second in the hole shot, but he's gotten out front now. As uh, New Salem, Pennsylvania is proud to say, after three, shotgun Sean Remington out front of Jeremy Dexter, the 428 from Nelsonville, Ohio, and Campbell Hall, New York's smiling Frank Messina, the number 50, who actually got the whole shot in the class. Larry Sylvia, the 720 and fourth out of Monticello, Georgia, and uh, Josh Hackett out of Heartland, Hardland, Connecticut, 354, rounds out the top five. Gregory Richardson, the 163 and six. John Beaver, 136 and seven. Eighth is Jeff Houston, the 403, ninth, the 93, or 98, and Frank Tussle and Jason Stickley rounds out your top 10 senior 840 plus class. And we may have a change in the lead. Johnny just looked up. Caleb Russell going by, and right behind him now, Thad Duvall. And how about right behind Thad Duvall, Trevor Bollinger. They are wheel to wheel to wheel to wheel to wheel. Wow. That is crazy now that we see how this has all been going. We talked about it last lap. It was those gaps would shrink. They'd widen. They'd shrink and widen in a mile's time. And here we are now a lap or so later, and those guys are nose to tail as they make their way around. And Caleb Russell is back in the number one position. And we have just now... Uh, a little over an hour of racing left to go. I think they said, what, a seven-lap race is what we were going to be looking at here today. Uh, we are working, I think, if I'm not mistaken, on lap number five. Yes, uh, lap four has been wrapped up, so lap five is what we're working on. So I assume that they're going to get a two-lap board this time whenever they come around, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, they're still not due in for another ten minutes or so. So that will be right at the two-hour mark whenever they do finally check in. Wow, this is going to be exciting, and if these guys stay this close, Johnny, <laughs> talk about a nail-biter. I tell you what, talk about a nail-biter, and like you said, how these gaps have been changing. You know, Stu Baylor was right there with Trevor Bollinger when we last saw them not too long ago there, and now he is a ways back. I would say it's close to, if not a minute back, that Stu Baylor is, and whereas before, the gap seemed to have opened up a little bit. I think it was 11 seconds uh, back from Duvall to... Uh, and look at this, Josh Strang now, he's getting a little bit closer to Baylor. He's continuing to chip away at that, but uh, it seems like the top three have opened up the gap over fourth and fifth just a bit. So they may be trying to make this a three-rider battle instead of, they might have got the pit boards that said, hey, there's five of you guys that can win this thing. Caleb Russell, Thad Duvall, they, they would rather have it be a two-rider shootout when it comes down to it. They've done that so many times. Ronnie, think about how many times these guys have battled it out in the last two or three seasons of GNCC racing, just the two of them. Yeah. And now Trevor Bollinger, it seems like this season, really trying to throw his hat into the ring there, not only battling for podiums, but very clearly saying in interviews, you know, you can tell by his riding, this is a guy that wants a win. He does. Uh, he expects to win. He feels that he should be winning, and he is disappointed that he is not winning. Rodney, here we go. Lead uh, change again. Again. Uh, again. How many times have we seen this in this section of racetrack? Now it is Duvall in the lead. Russell second, and there is Bollinger. So at least we didn't see any massive time gap changes, no. but we saw the running order shake up yet again. That is crazy. And this is the same area of racetrack last lap that we saw the exact same things going on. You have to wonder, what is it in there? Is there just certain line choices that are better that one rider is taking than the other? Is it mistakes? Is it riders? Uh, is it the course that uh, just tightens it up so much? I mean, it, there's so many questions that I have about this right now, and and, and I know yesterday on the ATB there were probably some challenges, but uh, a lot of the challenges may be different for two wheels than what they were for four. Well, where we're watching right here, this is, uh, this is one section of racetrack that uh, really is um, very technical uh, where you come down and now, now we see now Baylor kind of hopping up the hill there. And soon after him, we should, should see Josh Strang not too far back. He was up over the hill at about 11 seconds. Uh, so we'll see what that gap is back to Strang right up about 10 seconds now and we still don't see strength so he's not quite as close as i thought he was i thought he was maybe 10 seconds or less behind looking like it's going to be more like 20 or so sometimes you kind of lose lose track of time there but there's actually two tough sections within that where between where we see him on camera going up that one rut hill where uh um where we had seen uh those guys come through when it was caleb russell in the lead and then there's two you kind of dip down into a creek and there's about 10 different lines coming out there is strength Wow, quite a bit further back than I had thought. He's about 40 seconds back. Uh, so, again, I think he was much closer than that when we saw him just about a mile ago. So he might have been the victim of what exactly we were talking about. There's so many lines in there, and a lot of them are blind. Once you commit, if there's a lapper stuck, or even if the line turns out to be worse than you're anticipating, you're committed because the ruts are so deep you can't get out, and you got to doggy paddle your way through.
through. You got to just give her the beans, do whatever you got to do, get pulled by the mud fleas, but you got to get through that line once you're committed to it. So I think that's what's happening. These guys can be nose to tail, and if you think about it, you're not going to follow the guy in front of you because you're going to get roosted. There's just no advantage to doing so. So they're all taking different lines, and that's where these shakeups are coming in. I have to agree. And, Johnny, I mean, of the 30 years that we've been here, the 30 years that you personally have raced right here at uh, John Penton, uh, I mean, you've seen things like this before in the past. I mean, is this something out of the norm? To me, this just seems like a non-typical GNCC all the way around, whether it's John Pitton or anything else. I mean, uh, this weekend has just been – it's not that it's been a bad week. It's just been a different weekend all around. The track is uh, – I think it is developed a lot differently than everybody expected it to. And, and what it has in the past, I mean, there are a lot of consistencies, obviously, but – there's still enough that's keeping it different than it has been, at least it seems to me in the past. No, absolutely, I agree. I mean, these conditions are uh, they're a handful. Oh, look at this. Oh, it looked like I saw a pit board sticking out there, and I thought it was Caleb Russell going down. I thought we were, <laughs> we were going to see a shakeup, but it wasn't a radiator shot. It was actually just a, uh, a pit board. So Caleb Russell's still there in second. The front number plate, let's wonder, Trevor Bollinger there in third. But, you know, these, these conditions are very, very difficult, Rodney. It's so slick. It's so hard-packed. It makes it very hard to lap in and lap out, hit your lines. And I, and I, and I think with the, the left riders, and that's why we're seeing a lot more issues in our morning races and youth races, right. is there's a bigger discrepancy between the fastest riders on the track and the, and the slower riders on the track, where in the afternoon, all these guys, even in the, uh, the B classes and our age classes that are out there right now, they may not be as fast as Thad Duvall, Caleb Russell, Trevor Bollinger, and the rest of the XC1 guys, but they're very accomplished riders, and they're, they're able to make the course look somewhat easy. They can traverse it pretty well. Where some of the lesser experienced riders in the morning and the youth races, they, they plug these up, and, and there we see we got a little bottleneck form to the left of our screen there, and we got a couple of riders stuck in that rut. Uh, we won't get to see it here. The camera's pan back over. But when that happens, it's blind. And once, like right here, once this guy commits it, there, there you go. See, now he's stuck, and he's got to figure out now I got to either cross back over this rut or I got to figure out a way to get around these guys. And you can see if you don't look up and take a look ahead of you, it can really jam you up. Here we see this guy doggy paddling through, finally making up through. And they, see, they'll sit at the bottom and wait so they can get a run yeah. so they don't have to try and take off from a stop well, on the hill. Johnny, I mean, looking at this, I mean, we saw, I think, uh, last lap whenever Stu Baylor went through there. It is slick coming up out of there, but it looks to be like that uh, inside, right, immediate, coming out of that creek would be the better line, especially as this race is worn on. That outside line is getting rougher and rougher. Why is it more challenging on the inside? Well, the, the what makes the inside more challenging is exactly what we're seeing right here. It's very slick. Both lines are slick, but that outside line, it gives you a bigger arc and lets you get your run so that you can kind of get your speed up the hill. But because more guys are taking it, because it's a, you can't see my air quotes, but easier lines, uh, it, it's getting more rutted out, it's getting deeper, and it's becoming even more challenging. So what started out as a much easier, safer line around the outside has almost become more difficult. But that inside line, again, so slick, and it, it, it just takes one guy like this to get tipped over, and then that line's completely blocked up. Even the best of riders like Josh Toth is really going to struggle. He's going to use this guy's bike wow. as traction to get up out of there. Uh, that guy just leaned his bike over and let him ride over it, looked sure. like. That was, hey, tires have good traction. They Whether do. you're riding on them, they're over them. <laughs> they certainly do, especially in these circumstances like this. There is a uh, mud flea. The mud flea's not nearly as muddy today as they were yesterday. Dirt bikes don't throw as much roost as pots do. <laughs> are, you, are you saying... I ain't gonna say that. We know we know what quads are. We know, we we love quads. Hey, there's Ricky Russell coming through. Johnny, you know I mentioned there just a few moments ago. It, we played this feature. I want to play this again for the guys that are Johnny Gallagher race announcing fans and not maybe racer fans. But Johnny's been racing this event since 1990, the inception of it. You did it in the, the youth class then, right? Yep. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> this is the Johnny hair phase right here is what we're taking a look Where did at. this come from and why is this on the screen right now? <laughs> well, the many hairstyles, the many phases of Johnny Gallagher. And we were talking about your tips there yesterday, uh, the frosted tips that you had back in the 90s. But I think everybody had the frosted hey, tips. Hey, man, right. that was cool back then. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to even it, discuss it. It was cool. It's still cool, man, <laughs> in my opinion. Of course, you know, I'm always about 30 years behind. I'm still wearing the floor print shirts and stuff that I wore I in think, high school. I think those are coming back. Well, I knew if I wore them long enough, they would. 
I still got the ones that I wore in high school in my closet, believe they, it or not. They got those, those uh, Tommy Bahama or whatever yeah. it is, you know, the, the guys. There we go. We see down in the, in the inside. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> hey, I'm not, I'm not embarrassed of it. I, I the, own it. You man. know, and what's the beauty of that is you've got as much hair now as you had back then, man. And I'm, I'm jealous of that. I, gotta, <laughs> I have to say that. But, Johnny, you have. Good jeans. Good you have jeans. raced here, I mean, since basically a youth rider. And 25 of your uh, uh, times here have been in the XC1 Pro class. And. And there is Andrew DeLong making his way through. We're starting to see that stretch out a little bit, but still good, strong rides by these guys, I think, as the day progresses here. But yeah, it like, looks like Ricky Russell was able to open up a little bit over him. But, but still, like you said, a, a solid ride there, I think, uh, now sitting in the 10th place position in the XC1 yeah. Pro Class. Yep, yep, there you go. 10th yep. place, and 10th overall. place overall. Yeah, 9th so, place in the XC1 Pro yep. Class. Yep, so that's that's even better. I mean, we want to we want to see him up around 7th, see him up around 6th, and see him up around 5th. But th that's where we're seeing him ride. Uh, again, we're just baby-stepping this, this whole scenario. David Eller and the folks over at Phoenix Racing Honda, they got a plan. They really do, and we're going to see, I believe, uh, DeLong back uh, in the top five, back in podium contention. Uh, maybe not by the end of this season, but early on next season if he doesn't do it by the end of this season. Now that is Trevor Bollinger now who has taken over the lead, folks. What? So if you're keeping track of things, put it all in the mixer and shake it up one more time. The 739 of Trevor Bollinger now out front with teammate Thad Duvall in second. How do I know, Rodney? Camelback on the back, Trevor Bollinger. Fanny pack Camelback, Thad Duvall. Can't tell the difference between them. Bikes are the same, riding style somewhat similar. But uh, and look at this. It looks like now Russell challenging Duvall on the inside, not able to make the pass stick. And as we would say, you can throw a blanket over the three of them, Rodney. Wow. So Trevor Bollinger, this almost looks like a same case scenario as what we saw one year ago. Two of the same riders, actually, yeah, two of the same riders. Josh Strang was in this mix, I think, last year at this particular point. This time, though, is Trevor Bollinger and Caleb Russell's right where he was a year ago, struggling to get back up into that front uh, place position and to take a win. The last two years he has been denied, uh, and last year it was taken away from him by uh, uh, Thad Duvall. The year before that, it was taken away by, uh, uh, memory serves me correct, Grant Baylor uh, after some uh, incident uh, that uh, was penalized after the race. Yeah, it was actually Thad Duvall that had initially won the event there, and then uh, there were some penalties handed down, um, and Grant Baylor ended up being the winner uh, after all things were settled, the dust had settled, and the uh, the discrepancies were corrected. Uh, again, uh, you know, these guys, are, they're so bitter fighting over these positions, you know, but they've, they've done this so many times, it's almost second nature for them to just kind of get in a rhythm, but it's got to shake Thad and Caleb up a little bit this late in a race to have another rider in there mm -hmm. battling with them. We've seen Bollinger do it. He was very close to Cam Coker, if you remember, mm -hmm. but he maybe was never quite this deep into them this late, and now to be leading, I mean, look at that. <laughs> These guys are charging so hard. Thad Duvall fishtailing through the pits. Um, you know, it's absolutely just pure throttle right now at this point. Adrenaline taking over two hours and three minutes into this. You can see Caleb Russell getting a drink from wife Chandler there, uh, making sure he stays hydrated for this last hour of racing. But, man, these guys are giving it everything they got, and they're really starting to gap away from Stu Baylor and Josh Strang in those fourth and fifth place positions. 3.5 seconds separating first to third as they came through there. Uh, 2.3 between Bollinger and Duvall, and 1.2 back to Caleb Russell. Uh, again, you know, this next lap, this is going to be interesting. Uh, we've seen all these uh, position swaps taking place in the last two laps at what started at about the six and a half or six mile marker right on up through to, well, to the uh, finish line itself, to the 11 mile marker. So there's about five miles of racetrack. That's pretty doggone exciting. And as we roll into this, and I believe uh, we should be having the two lap card out on this one. Five laps down. Now working on lap number six, a seven lap race. So after this lap, we'll see a white flag. But two lap board is out right now. Uh, Stu Baylor checks in. 51 seconds now behind Caleb Russell. Josh Strang, another 38 seconds back, rounding out the top five. And again, I've got to go back to uh, uh, beating the. Uh, the box there uh, for Josh Strang and saying that he's having a phenomenal season on that Kawasaki and we've got Mikey Waynes down in the pits buddy what's going on Hey, thanks, Rodney. Down here. Unfortunately, I'm down here with Jordan Ashburn. Jordan, uh, one heck of a start to this race, pulling the whole shot, leading this one, competing up there in the top three. But you're here in the pits, man. Talk to us about what happened. Yeah, you know, we made a bunch of bike changes coming into this race, and uh, the bike was really good. And I really felt like we had what it took today, but uh, it was unfortunate uh, on the hill on the second.
unfortunate, but that's racing. That's racing, man. Well, it's got to boost the confidence a little bit, knowing that you started as well as you did. I know I, I got to think that you're going to be coming out swinging at Tomahawk. Yeah, I'm just looking forward to the next race. You know, I, I was really ready coming into this weekend, and it just makes me hungry for more. There you go. Heartbreaker for Jordan Ashburn here in the Babbitt's Kawasaki pits, but he does have some positive notes moving into the next round. Definitely an unfortunate turn of events for Jordan Ashburn and that monster Babbitt's Kawasaki team. <laughs> and, and, Johnny, you pointed it out. I mean, you knew it. No matter what they say up there in the Kawasaki pits, and no, no matter how, uh, you know, they saw it. I don't know what they saw, but we saw it. We, we knew something was up, and there you get the lowdown on that one for sure. But, uh, hey. Unfortunate, but I'll tell you what, the positives, you know, Jordan Ashburn hasn't looked comfortable the last right. couple of races. Today he looked like he was ready to race for a podium, maybe even for a win. Uh, so he can build off that. That team can build off that. Josh Strang looking amazing today, you know, up in there in that fifth place spot, looking like he could even challenge for a podium still. Uh, and, you know, it's it, it's really is the, this team is uh, is becoming more comfortable by the race. The bikes are looking better. The riders are looking better. And I expect that we'll see these guys on a podium near you very, very soon. Most definitely. And here we go into the uh, pits. Looks like uh, Ricky Russell going to grab a bottle of water. And uh, Russell, again, as we look here into the overall, currently running ninth place overall behind Grant Baylor as they checked in there a few moments ago. Actually, uh, Ricky is now down to 10th because Andrew DeLong is up to ninth place position. Grant Baylor is in the eighth place position. So there we go. That makes a little bit more sense, I believe. Uh, waiting on Craig DeLong, he should be checking in here in a few moments. And this will be interesting to see how far up into this uh, top 10, if he can break the top 10. Uh, on this lap of racing, uh, we'll see. I know that he is trying to lay chase to Ben Kelly, who is currently 7th place position in that XC2 class. Such a cool shot we had there at Josh Strang with that drone through the fields there. And it just really shows you the speed these guys are carrying. Uh, here is Josh Toth. Now, he is a rider on the charge. Sure, he's getting pit board. Sure, he's getting the information that Strang in the top five is not that far up in front of him. And you got to wonder, here's a guy coming off his first career XC1 podium. You know he was hoping to back that up this weekend with another. But given where he started this race, to be in contention to battle these last two laps, potentially to get up into the top five, that's a big, big step in the right direction for Josh Toth after the way the first couple laps of this race went today. Yeah, for sure. And uh, right now, just uh, watching and waiting and seeing uh, how this one is going to uh, pan out. A couple of historical notes here as I was looking at some of my fast facts uh, from a few years ago uh, on the bike side of things. Uh, you know, Corey Buttrick has won, and we mentioned this early, earlier, won his one and only GNCC overall right here in, in 2010 at this uh, John Penton GNCC. Also, Barry Hawk, who got his first ever win on an ATV here on September 7th, 1991 at the Burr Oaks, has only won and only won this race one time on a motorcycle, believe it or not. I, I know you would have thought that he would have uh, knocked off several wins here, but that's not the case. And we mentioned this earlier, three riders winning three times at Burr, Burr Oaks, uh, Penton, Summers, and Plessinger. And I believe that Andrews, uh, actually there was four riders, I think, that, that – or no, you're right. It's three: Summers, Plessinger, and Andrews. And then, of course, uh, uh, two riders now. So, what I'm getting at is, right now, Caleb Russell has a chance to break a record here today. If he wins, he will have won five times total, and that will put him in the all-time wins category as the most wins here at John Penton on the two-wheel side of things. And though it may not be a huge monumental record on the national side of things, it's very big for the John Penton history books for sure. Absolutely. You know, Rodney, I mean, this is uh, obviously, as you said, it's his grandfather's farm. Uh, as a young boy, you know, I, I even heard a story earlier today from one of the locals. Caleb got uh, got scolded as a young boy for tearing up a hayfield uh, just on the other side of uh, just on the other side of this property. So, you know, he's uh, a lot of history here for GNCC, for his family, for himself personally. And if you look at his win record here, 13, 14, 15, 16, four years in a row, he was able to get the job done. Then 17 and 18 denied. And if you remember, 2012. Uh, was the year Paul Wibley won, and if you remember how he won that race, he doubled past Caleb Russell yes. in the last turn. There was a double on a corner. I Caleb remember. thought he had enough of a gap, didn't think he had to do it, and literally after the fact said, 
I don't know what I was thinking. I just thought I was far enough ahead. I, 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 I just blanked, man. And it was a long, hot day. It was over 100 degrees that year uh, on race day, and, and it really took its toll on these guys mentally. Caleb just having a little bit of a brain fade there as we see Andrew DeLong on screen. The 410 machine still charging hard. And that, that multiple getting rougher and Yeah, these rougher. guys, you see them go higher and higher yeah. to the point where they're riding around on the crown molding of that thing <laughs> trying to uh, stay out of the They're going to be up on the county road before you get up. Yeah, I wouldn't blame them. I'm not going to protest them. Get up there, boys. It's way too rough down in that mulch. But, uh, yeah, so Caleb Russell bookending his four-race uh, win streak here in 13, 14, 15, and 16. Uh, 12 is probably the one that sticks out to him as the one that got away, losing it in the final corners, and then the last two years here really having some struggles. Uh, I mean, Caleb was on the ground here last year. He was charging through the pack. Same with the year before, and I think we even have some highlights of yeah. last year's yeah, John so Penton GNCC. Yeah, let's check out last year's highlights, if you remember. Here's the way it all went down in an Amsoil recap. Josh Strang, who was riding for uh, Husqvarna last year, got the early lead in this one with Thad Duvall back in that number two spot. Stu Baylor, another rider that got off to a fairly decent start, but as the the race wore on, and we rolled into this when uh, Thad Duvall seemed to really establish himself up there in the number one position. And as you can see, conditions were similar to what we're looking at today with the muddy uh, areas and, and things of that nature. And uh, unfortunately, there's Stu Baylor having to be uh, jump-started over in the pits. But uh, nonetheless, whenever we came down to the final hour in that three hours, this is what it came down to. This was a battle. For that number two spot, Josh Strang fending off Caleb Russell while Thad Duvall, who was up front charging, was on his way home to checkers and to take the win. And as you can see, Thad Duvall will take the win right here as he rolls across the uh, the checkers and, and takes the win. And, and I want you to see something very interesting. Remember how tight the points battle was last year? This was the one that really brought this thing really close together. Thad Duvall turns around to watch this right here to see what kind of a points gap or what kind of points he was going to be able to make up in making his bid for the championship. And he saw his teammate, the 114 of Josh Strang, followed closely by the number one of, of Caleb Russell. And you saw it right there in his body language. You saw his head. He knew at that point in the last turn that it was third. And those were some valuable points that put uh, Thad Duvall in a position that looked like he might challenge for the championship until injury plagued him in those last four, se uh, four races last season. Absolutely. You know, it, it was a battle uh, that day, and, and Thad Duvall came out as, as the better man. And speaking of battles, look at this. Jesse Ansley just went by on screen, and there is the 99 of Cody Barnes kind of making his own line there. Uh, that is the battle for the win or the lead in that XC3 FMF XC3 Pro-Am class. Those guys, I can't wow. imagine that the lead is is much different there. It shows Cody Barnes when he got there. Yeah, well, right now what's what's impressing me is the 23-second gap. And like you say, Cody Barnes is out front now, Jesse Ansley. No, Jesse Ansley is leading on screen. Oh, okay. Uh, well, um, okay. Yep, Ansley. So at, at, at the completion of lap number four, Jesse Barnes had a 23-second lead over Cody. Uh, I'm sorry. Cody Jesse Barnes. Barnes. Cody Barnes had a 23-second lead over Jesse Ansley. Uh, I we actually I actually do know a Jesse Barnes from back in the 18th yeah, across days. Right, my right. bad. Um, but uh, 23 seconds was the gap. Well, now Jesse Ansley has taken over the lead. We saw that on screen, but Cody Barnes is right behind him. So those guys now, two hours and 13 minutes into this one, still battling wheel to wheel. The gap may open up, but it closes right back up just as soon as it started. Well, I'll tell you, I know that uh, Ansley has three wins in this class, and uh, right now, now, uh, Cody actually has the points lead, if I'm not mistaken, by only a couple. So this is a, a, a true heated championship battle that we're watching unfold here between the Beta and the KTM riders as they continue to, to, to make this happen. And uh, Cody Barnes out of Illinois, uh, Jesse Ansley out of Florida, two completely different uh, places on the earth and, and a lot different than probably what you would expect uh, riders to be excelling here in the GNCC racing world, a sand rider and and a farm rider, a loamy rider out there in the farmlands. Well, actually, uh, uh, Cody Barnes, I had, to, I had to check myself there. I was going to say Jesse Barnes again. Cody Barnes uh, rides a lot of the series races out that way, the OMAs and some uh -huh. other very technical races that have very slick dirt like this. I know they're the old moose run they used to call yes, it. I think they've yes, changed the name to the race now. Um, you know, he grew up racing the, the, a lot of those series, and, and he has a lot of experience in these slick, muddy conditions like this. So I'm not surprised to see him uh, doing so well. And Jesse Ansley is a rider that has really tried to perfect his racecraft in all conditions. Obviously a Florida sand rider. He thrives in those conditions, seems to do very, very well.
typically winning in those conditions seemingly fairly easily. Um, but at races like this, he's, he's really kind of dug his heels in and said, hey, man, if I want to contend for championships, obviously last year winning that FMF XC3 championship, but if I want to contend for championships as I move forward to that XC2 Pro-Am class and, and potentially someday an XC1 Pro rider, you know, he needs he knows he needs to be able to compete in all these conditions. So he's spending a lot of time up north riding these conditions, training with Charlie Mullins uh, and, and riding with those guys and, and learning that, uh, you know, sometimes you don't have to love the conditions. You just have to love your finish in those conditions. Exactly. And uh, that's, uh, you know, that's the one thing, the ops, the biggest obstacle, I think, that, that folks need to get over, you know, don't worry about the conditions. Just go out and ride them. I know, you know, you may be favored to, to dry sunny conditions. You know, you may have struggles in mud. But if you're going to tell yourself you're going to struggle going in, that's exactly what's going to happen until you just go out and have fun riding that motorcycle no matter what uh, and let things come as they may. I, you, you're never re reaching your full potential, I don't believe. Oh, I would agree with that. And I, you know, years ago, my dad used to always tell me, you know, when the conditions were bad, as much as it sucks for you, whether it's because it's rough or it's cold or it's hot or it's wet or raining or muddy or whatever it may be, just remember, everybody's riding the same track, everybody's riding the same conditions, and as much as you hurt, as much as it sucks for you, it sucks equally as bad. So if you can convince yourself that you're having the time of your life, uh, you know, it, you can sometimes turn yourself into those conditions of a rider on that day you know you, you would see guys that maybe sometimes aren't in the greatest of physical condition that really dig deep on on days where it's really hot and muggy and you, you're thinking to yourself kind of judging you know like hey man i would hey. expect to see this guy like this guy right here trevor bollinger not to say we didn't expect to see him up front but to see him up front two hours and 16 minutes into this one and thad duvall in second i, I gotta tell you rodney i'm a little bit surprised uh yeah i, I am too and, and and i don't want to sound like that and it's not because i'm taking anything away from trevor Bollinger by any stretch of the imagination. It's just the level that we have become accustomed yeah, that to. That was with a Caleb. struggle. Yeah, it was. That we, the level that we've seen Caleb and Thad racing at for the past few years, you know, and, and nobody really able to, to match that until now. Trevor's been doing it. We've watched him ease his way into this position for the last couple of years, and now here he is. I think it's the full-blown and blossoming Trevor, Trevor Russell. He's blossomed. He's flowering right now. Yeah, absolutely, you know, and, and I think today could be a breakthrough ride for him, um, you know, and, and I say, when I say a breakthrough ride, Trevor needs to win to have a breakthrough ride at this point. I'm not saying he needs to win right now. I, I'm a firm believer in he's right where he needs to be. He's on track, trust the process, all those cliche sayings. But for Trevor to have a breakthrough, you know, he's been third. He's battled these guys right down to the last lap and then kind of gotten shaken loose. So today, to have that breakthrough ride, leading two hours and 17 minutes into this thing, he's going to be no happier than if he was leading two minutes and 17 seconds into this thing unless he can pull off a win. Then he'll be happy today. Is that Stu Baylor still in the fourth place position, nearly a minute back now? Yep, Stu Baylor still in the fourth place spot. And I tell you what, you know, we were talking about Cody Barnes a moment ago, Rodney, and I just checked in with live timing and scoring. His teammate, Mike Wachowski, who, as you'd mentioned, way back in that 12th place spot, a rider we're accustomed to seeing battling for top threes pretty regularly, is on the charge and was actually able to move all the way up to the seventh place wow. spot. So he is now only 30 seconds behind Alex Teagarden for the sixth place spot in that XC2 Pro Am class or XC2 Pro Lights class. So the 282 Beta machine hard on the charge, up from as far back as probably further, but just a few laps ago in that 12th place spot. Now all the way up to and battling for that sixth place spot. You know, you have to think he got stuck or got in a bottleneck or something to get pushed that far back or, or went down obviously and took a few moments to get back up, but. There we see the 114 machine of Josh Strang. That is our fifth place rider. So the top five through here at the nine and a half mile marker. And, uh, or I'm sorry, this isn't the nine and a half. They're a little earlier than that in the track. The nine and a half is the other uphill. There we see Duvall. Now look at this. Duvall has taken over the lead. Bollinger in second and Russell in third. So again, these guys have shaken it up. And Caleb Russell, even after losing that time, getting cross rutted having to dab multiple times, losing five, six seconds, is now right back to the rear wheel of Bollinger. I, Johnny, if the people could see my face, I mean, I my mouth is literally. You look like a little kid who just saw Santa Claus. I, 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 I don't know what's going on here. I mean, this is what we live for. This is what I come to the races for. There's the 206 checking in now. Josh Toth, uh, his, we see Strang go by. He should be he, Strang. He no, Strang went by just before. He was our fifth place rider. Okay, so we and got. He has opened up that gap a little bit over Josh Toth. And wow, Josh Toth taking a long out and around line there. Uh, making it work, but that was a long way around to go for sure. 
Well, like I say, you know, I mean, this is the kind of things that we hope for as a race fan. You know, when you come, you don't want to see one rider go out and lead the whole race, win it, and go home. You don't want to see the same rider win week after week after week after week after week after week. You want to see competition, and this is exactly what we've got today. I agree with you, Rodney, but I'm 41 years old, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, you're 50 now. Uh -huh. We can't take this kind of intensity. <laughs> we're, we're liable to both have heart attacks with all this going on. <laughs> Stu Baylor up the FMF PowerPoint. That is your fourth-place rider. Uh, he is, as you pointed out, a little over a minute aback of the third-place rider, which is Caleb Russell, that number one FMF KTM, the number two ride of the 989 Rockstar Racing Husqvarna machine of Thad Duvall and his Rockstar Racing Husqvarna teammate Trevor Bollinger leading. I don't believe I could be wrong on this one. Now, actually, hold on. I need to correct myself. I was going to say this is the latest we've seen Trevor Bollinger lead a race. That is not true. I believe at the, would have been the Tomahawk either last year or the year before, Trevor Bollinger led that thing right down to the end, and Caleb Russell nipped it away from him in the final moments. I'm, I I'm thinking it was the year before last, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. It if, it, if it was last year, I wasn't there. I was, I was in land in the hospital with a broken collarbone from the day before. Oh, <laughs> did, you, did that happen to you yeah, last Yeah, Tomahawk year? last year. Wow. There is Josh Strang, the 114 machine. So, again, still within striking distance of Baylor, but Ooh. not quite close enough to really be right there. And did he bobble it? Looks yeah. like he made it. He Nobody, made it. Yeah, he he had one pegs. leg Yeah, one leg up in the air. What, what do they call that, the Roddy? Flying W? Yep. <laughs> he had one of those going for sure. Or maybe he was going for that greater than or less than sign because he was sticking out sideways whenever he went over that one. I always I always forget which is which until I remember what my second or third grade teacher taught me. The, the greater than. Oh, look at this. Who is this? Jesse Ansley down. Jesse Ansley down in the mulch pile. He's back up. Hit off the track and flipped over. And look at that. That was Cody Barnes right behind him there. So now Cody Barnes right back to the rear wheel after having a 23-second lead, seeing it evaporate. Ansley take the lead and pull out on him a little bit. Now we see Josh Toth on screen at the FMF PowerPoint. That is your sixth place rider as he tries and tries to track down Josh Strang. At one point, it looked like he was making some inroads to making that yeah. happen. Now it looks like Strang's starting to pull away again. Well, I got to tell you, still Toth has got a lot to be uh, proud of, a lot to build on, and uh, uh, obviously a lot to be, uh, well, uh, happy about for today's race, even though he may not be putting himself in the position for a podium just yet, the, the solid ride that he is backing up that podium ride with a couple of weeks ago is uh, second to none right now. I mean, he is uh, putting all the heart and all the effort that needs to be put in. It's just, again, I think uh, looking at the conditions, looking at uh, what's going on out there with uh, lap traffic and what we've seen in that three-mile section where we keep seeing lead changes and the last lead change that we just saw with uh, Thad Duvall now out front of uh, – the uh, Trevor Bollinger. I mean, just uh, crazy things going on there. And who knows what kind of uh, uh, problems they're falling victim to. And if that's the case, maybe some inexperience on the part of uh, of uh, Josh Toth might have set him back a little bit. So uh, might be uh, seeing uh, what we're expecting to see today whenever we roll into New York in a couple of weeks. And there we see looks like Stu Baylor. Uh, now he is over at the bottom of the monster mile there, so we must have uh, missed our leaders coming through there. Um, yeah, because this section is quite a bit further down the track. We did, unless I wasn't watching the screen there, unless I missed him. Uh, yeah, we, we missed him there, but uh, so our top three have already gone through there. Stu Baylor in fourth, no alarm at home, folks. They did come through. We just didn't have the camera shot. We were chasing some other images there. And uh, as we look at the XC2 Pro class, XC2 Pro Lights class, while we wait on our fourth place, fifth place rider of Josh Strang, the 114 machine, uh, we know he's a little over a minute back of Baylor, so he'll be coming here somewhat soon at the nine and a half mile marker. Looking at that XC2 Pro Lights class, there is Strang, so he's a little bit early this lap. Our, our, this shot here, he, he looks like he's maybe making a little bit of ground up on Stu Baylor. So it seems like Strang's kind of the uh, the accordion guy here. He, he seems <laughs> to almost be falling back into the clutches of Toth, and the next thing you know, we see him, and it looks like he's inching a little bit closer to the back wheel of Stu Baylor. And as, again, looking back to that XC2 Pro Lights class, Ben Kelly's still leading the way. Two minutes, 40 seconds lead over Craig DeLong, the number 10 uh, Husqvarna and Austin Lee in that third place spot. Evan Smith in fourth, only 55 seconds back of Lee. Lee, three minutes and 56 seconds behind Craig DeLong. So it looks like the top two have kind of distanced themselves out, and we do have a battle there with Austin Lee and Evan Smith over that final podium position, as we see now the 206 machine of Josh Toth on screen. Talk a little bit about Evan Smith. That's a name that I really don't recognize a whole lot about, to be honest with you. I believe he's a, I, I don't know if he's a, um, you know, a really close friend 
friend, but I know he rides with Russell Bobbitt a lot, uh -huh. uh, a rider that was, uh, you know, a factory FMF KTM rider just a year ago, now doing his own privateer deal and uh, out there doing with the Gnarly Roots KTM team. He, he does, they do some uh, riding adventures out west and out east, and they go everywhere. They got, you can rent bikes from them and, and go ride them. He's a close friend of, uh, of Russell Bobbitt's, Evan Smith is. He's from Georgia. I see them riding together. Social media, this is where I get all my information yeah. from. But uh, he has done fairly well the last several years in the um, uh, full gas sprint enduro series. Uh, he's done well in the national enduros and didn't compete in this series full time. I don't know the story behind it. Maybe we could catch up with him one of these races, but uh, I'd kind of heard through the grapevine that he really wanted to measure himself on the, on the biggest stick around, which is GNCC racing. So he's here this year and he's, uh, he's getting his legs under him. Speaking of getting his legs, Jordan Ashburn getting some training in for the next GNCC, only 14 days away. He doesn't want to miss an opportunity to uh, have himself as strong as strong can be. Ricky Russell now on screen, the 212 Ampro Yamaha machine with that can't miss it USWE fanny pack hydration system there. Uh, I think it's bright as anything sticking out. It could be dark out and you couldn't miss Ricky Russell with that thing. Uh, he is a rider, again, just back now, his only second race back. You know, it, it, we were talking last race about how well he was doing for his first race back and it's still doing well out there. Uh, last we had seen, Ricky was, I believe, in the seventh place spot in that XC1 Pro class. There is your XC2 Pro or, uh, Pro Lights leader, Ben Kelly, the number one machine. And, um, you know, as much as we talk about this guy, we can't talk about him enough. He's been incredibly dominant so far this season, Rodney. Really seemingly to be in a league of his own within that class, uh, taking five wins straight, looking today to make it six straight, and uh, getting up there in the overall a little bit further um, than he has today. Many races battling up. We even had discussions about him, you know, potentially grabbing an overall victory yeah. or being on an overall podium. And look at this, folks. Here it is, out on the Sunday Creek Moto Track. I recognize that bike in second is Caleb Russell, but the leader is now not Trevor Bollinger. That is Thad Duvall. Can't see the riding pack, but I can tell by the riding style. So it looks like Duvall has now taken over the lead. Caleb Russell back into second, unless we miss Bollinger. Yeah, no, we saw that. Remember on that FMF hill climb, the, the Duvall came through in the lead at the... Oh, okay, I must have missed that. No, you're the one that called it. Oh, <laughs> well, oh yeah, but Caleb Russell was still in third. Yes. And yeah. now Trevor, Caleb Russell in second, yeah. and Trevor Bollinger has dropped from his pack. Now, keep in mind, folk, on these camera shots, he could be just five or six seconds back. We haven't seen him yet. That doesn't mean he's not still there. But we do know for sure as they check in and the transponders... Absolutely make the confirmation. Thad Duvall leading the way. Six laps complete. Caleb Russell 1.6 seconds back in that second place position and will wait and will watch for the 739 of Trevor Bollinger in that third place spot. Wow, watch these guys go across that moto track. There is Bollinger checking in. He's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood, I believe, of probably 25 or 30 seconds behind the two leaders. And that's a lot of time to lose in the, in the short amount of time say the nine and a half to the 10.8 which where we last saw him but at the same time again this track has offered up so many challenges look so at many these surprises. shots Rodney how awesome is that that drone just about nipping Caleb Russell in the helmet as these two are battling in house the man with that that drone and he is getting us so close to the action you feel like you're there look at that those guys are literally within just a handful of feet, I mean, 15 feet to separate these guys' nose to tail. Caleb's laying just back enough off that rear tire. So, if, uh, Trev, uh, excuse me, if that does make a mistake, he's not going to get tangled up in it. Oh, we Look got a pit this. stop they got coming. got fuel. Yeah, we're getting ready for a pit stop. I would stop. assume if... if Thad uh -oh. is fueling. Caleb Russell is going to have to as well. The fuel mileage on these machines is pretty close. We'll see. There's going to no. no. Caleb Russell does not pit. Deep Caleb it. Russell, they're going to make the Campbell, and he's going to go for it. He takes the lead and breaks just away a little bit. Doesn't look like he's sprinting, though, Rodney. He did take a water bottle there. Now, here's the question. Do you think he's going to try and lay out a gap, or do you think he knows that Thad is still close enough there? He needs to just bide his time and race him to the finish. What's your thoughts? Well, you know, I have to think, now, if we were going to go in that scenario and situation where he would just bide his time, I think they would have went ahead and made the pit stop. Did you catch that right there? Uh -uh. Trevor Bollinger came in looking like he wanted to pit. Unless that camera shot got there late, it looked like he was wanting to pit looking down, and they were waving the towels for him to go. So that's odd that they stopped Thad Duvall for fuel, but his teammate that pitted in the same lap sequence, Trevor Bollinger, they waved him on when he tried to pit. 
So you got to wonder if this comes back. We've had David Quillen, Thad Duvall's former mechanic in here, and he said, man, Thad Duvall uses some gas. Yeah. Because he's a, he, the way he rides, he rides in a gear lower, he revs the machine out more, and I wonder if that's what's coming into play here. If the it fuel mileage, even though these guys are riding the same track and going the same speed, the way in which they're riding the track could be the difference in the fuel consumption, or will the uh, Rockstar Racing Husqvarna team look like a bunch of geniuses here if one of these guys comes up short on fuel. Exactly. And, and you know, I, I can say, I can tell uh, whenever Caleb saw Thad go in for the pit stop and the way that he shifted over and the hammer went down, it looked like, uh, he had no intentions, no thoughts, uh, no, uh, no expectations of going in for a gas stop or anything like that. There is Caleb Russell in the mulch pile. Looking like he's on a charge, but man, that section is rough. Thad Duvall obviously charging as well, and he's doing everything he can. He knows he needs to be on the rear wheel, and this is one thing, Rodney, about this John Penton racetrack and the conditions today. I can tell you from yesterday and watching this morning's uh, 10 a.m. race, if you want to race someone, you really have to be on their rear wheel because you leave even just a bike length or two gap between you. As you're passing lapped riders, if those lapped riders don't know the second rider's there, they'll, they'll right pull in. back into the track, blocking the trail, and if they make one little mistake or even are a little bit throw slow through a section, it can take a gap of two to three seconds and turn it into 15 or 16 just like that. Yeah, exactly. And uh, it's amazing how fast these things can turn around and, and the strategies that you got to live by and, and, and that you got to come up with on the fly. And, and throughout the course of your racing career and how often things and strategies change as well. But uh, here we are today. Uh, no strategies, I think, changed other than the fact, uh, well, maybe the pit stop strategy. But th the main strategy is win. Uh, go out, ride as hard as you can, put yourself in that position on the final lap to try and take the checker flags. And that strategy has worked out for all three of these riders up front today, talking about uh, uh, Caleb, talking about Thad, talking about Trevor Bollinger. All three of these guys have done exactly what the game plan is. They've got themselves in the position. Now it's a matter of being able to capitalize and put the seal on the deal here on the final lap. Talking about putting the seal on the deal on the final lap, this guy looking to do just that for the sixth time this season. There he is right there. Now that's Grant Baylor, but the guy we just saw, there's Stu Baylor, the guy we just saw on screen, the number one, the other number one FMF KTM, that was Ben Kelly looking to get win number six in that XC2 Pro Lights class. Uh, this guy's just been on a terror this season, winning every time he gets on that machine and goes to the starting line here at GNCC Racing. So there we see Baylor still in that fourth place spot. Uh, does not look like Strang has been able to chip away any more at that gap. This is a lap rider we see here, and Baylor has definitely not been able to make any inroads towards Trevor Bollinger just yet. So looking like he's kind of riding a little bit of a lonely race not right now in that fourth place spot, but still a very solid points day for him. And... Uh, you know, a rider that uh, we know is capable of being up there, getting wins, battling for podiums, and uh, seeming to be, you know, just just missing that little something right now to be banging bars with Caleb Russell, Thad Duvall, and Trevor Bollinger. There is the number 114 machine, that Babbitt's Racing Kawasaki of Josh Strang. Well, somebody call the fire department. We've got the barn on fire. It's a barn burner here at the John Penton GNCC, my friends. Thad Duvall, Caleb Russell, Trevor Bollinger. It's going to be a battle to the checker. Stick around. GNCC Live continues after this. Here comes the storm. is just heating up and we're just getting started stay with us live action on racertv.com the 2019 yamaha yxz 1000r sets a new standard for all sports side by sides offering increased performance and expanded drivability over a wider variety of terrain improved overall comfort in yamaha proven off-road durability there's no other side-by-side -side like it, not even close. Consistent clutch fuel is vital to effective starts or to confidently maneuver around obstacles on the trail. AMS Oil Synthetic Dirt Bike Oil was subjected to an extreme simulated start test. After 32 simulated race starts, AMS Oil Synthetic Dirt Bike Oil continued to deliver consistent clutch fuel and the clutch plates remain clean with no visible wear. The competitor's oil, however, allowed discoloration and significant wear after just 16 starts. AMS Oil Synthetic Dirt Bike Oil. Give your bike the protection it needs. 
Grand National Cross Country, a race like no other. Two hours of battling in the toughest conditions an ATV may ever see. And you get to watch it in the comfort of, well, wherever you want to be. Just click us right here, live on Racer TV. Tough out here in the great outdoors. It's summertime and things will get heated. Do you have what it takes to be part of the action? The Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship will put you to the test, but reward you with the thrill of a lifetime. Join the fastest motocross racers in the world as they endure the elements and the toughest racetracks in America for national championship glory. Tickets for the High Point National in Mount Morris, Pennsylvania on June 15th. Available at promotocross.com. This week in Yamaha history, the 2006 Wisp GNCC was a banner day for Yamaha riders in the GNCC. The number four, a young Charlie Mullins, had taken the early lead in hopes of stealing the light from GNCC greats such as Yuha Salmonen, Glenn Kearney, Jimmy Jarrett, Paul Wibley, Nate Caney, and the legendary Barry Hawk. A muddy day in the Maryland mountains set a challenge for all. Hawk started out in fourth, but by mid-race had caught Yuha Salmonen for the lead. By the race's end, Hawk had taken over the number one spot on this brutal race course and claimed the victory on his path to GNCC greatness. Then in 2007, Ohio native Charlie Mullins, who was still in search of his first ever win, took the early lead, piloting his Yamaha through all the challenges that GNCC had to offer to finally take that first GNCC career overall win. That win set the standard for this young rider as Charlie Mullins went on to capture two GNCC championships throughout his career. And that's this week in Yamaha history. And, and what? Well, this back to TV broadcast is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Specialized turbo e-bikes, it's you, only faster. And by Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. Now, and welcome back to GNCC Live to Millfield, Ohio, for this 30th running of the Weiss Coach John Pitt and GNCC. And what a big 3-0 it's been, Johnny. Uh, right now, we got a big three race going on between our top three competitors. We've watched them switch back and forth. Thad Duvall, Caleb Russell, and Trevor Bollinger have uh, pretty much stretched out over a minute. Stu Baylor back in the fourth place position. And another song ride by uh, Josh Strong. Uh, another strong ride by uh, Josh String out there. Josh Strang as he rounds out the uh, top five. And we look down through the uh, results here. We got uh, Josh Tooth in six. Ben Kelly, uh, XC2, is uh, seventh place overall leading the class. Ricky Russell, whose favorite memory was uh, that win there of uh, Charlie Mullins. And how about that hair on Charlie Mullins? <laughs> Justin Bieber, way <laughs> earlier? Way earlier. And then, of course, Grant Baylor is running in the ninth place position. And Andrew DeLong still running a solid top ten right now. Ninth in class on that Phoenix Racing Honda. You know, uh, we've been talking a lot about Andrew and and touting uh, the performance that he's been making. And I'll tell you what, he's got a really great team behind him. And we had a chance actually to catch up with him and the team for this week's episode of GNCC Rigs. Hey, everybody. Uh, this is Andrew DeLong here. I ride for the Phoenix Racing Honda team. And uh, I'll just show you a little bit of my bike. I run Pirelli tires with the custom axis shocks. Um, Got a great bunch of great sponsors on board like FMF, ODI, um, Parts Unlimited, and uh, Moto Hose, and uh, XC Gear Clamp. Uh, I have eight wrist problems, so this is a big helper for me. And uh, we run the IMS Big Tank for these three hour races. And uh, my, my bike's a 450 RX, it's a Honda. So, uh, yeah, I'll just show you around the tour here. This is the canopy set up here. Um, we keep all our stuff uh, in here. We bring three quads and two dirt bikes. And we got 
pressure washer set up pretty much just like a whole semi would with everything, generator, all that. Come on in here. This is uh, where we have all our parts, uh, air compressor, uh, some tools in here and stuff like that. Motion Pro supplies us with. Um, these are all our parts. That's Eric's. That's our mechanic. Uh, pretty basic stuff of RV. Um, they, they stay in here, so it's, uh, you know, we make our food and uh, everything like that. And this is it. So this is a Phoenix Racing Honda rig. Hey, this is Andrew DeLong, and you're watching Racer TV Live. Great setup, no doubt there, as uh, we check in with the uh, Phoenix Racing Honda team. And uh, I don't know if you noticed that on there or not, but they're also sponsored by the Cherokee uh, Indian Tribe out of Cherokee, North Carolina, the gambling casinos and stuff down in that area. So uh, got a lot of back uh, sponsorship on that team and doing some good things. And as uh, Andrew pointed out, a lot of uh, specific sponsors for this uh, off-road version of racing two hours 39 minutes call it two hours 40 minutes now into this race as uh, we check in uh, still uh, last report uh, Duval Russell and Bollinger the gap had opened up to about 30 seconds between second and third so it looks like we're about ready to see that classic matchup between Duval and Caleb Russell something that we kind of missed out on last year because Josh Strang kept that from happening Trevor Bollinger was trying to play the spoiler this year but so far that's not the case but we haven't made it to the six and a half mile marker yet that's but right here here we are Rodney as they come down this hill and I don't mean to cut you off I want to say one thing real quick Whoever's leading here is in trouble. Yes. Because whoever's been leading at this point has yet to be leading at the finish once they make it around. Whoever's leading here, it seems to flip-flop in between there. So, you know, if you're a Caleb Russell fan, you want to see Thad Duvall leading here. If you're a Thad Duvall fan, you want to see Caleb Russell. And here's your answer. Caleb Russell is out front and no Thad Duvall at the moment on his rear wheel. You can see him taking the main line this time. Oh, nope, he steps out, gets to the side there. There is the 989 of Thad Duvall. So he is not at all far behind. That's not a step out. Those guys, that's the way that rut goes now. Yeah. they got to go that yeah, way. Yeah, they got to go that way because the rut is so deep. There's a guy without a front number plate, and it's not Trevor Bollinger. <laughs> Let fake out there. Uh, still no, I don't think that was Bollinger there no. that came by either. Again, we think he's about 30 seconds back last we had heard. But, uh, you know, based off of the last couple laps, you know, I, I hate to uh, I hate to be the uh, the bearer of bad news if you're yeah. a Caleb Russell fan. Looks like Thad Duvall's going to win this. Thad Duvall will be leading <laughs> the next time we see him if things go according to plan. Now you got to wonder whatever those lines and how they've been shaken out. You know, are these guys picking up? I mean, they've got to be you picking think, up on the man, fact that the they're leading, and next thing you know, you got a rider in front of them. So has Caleb Russell been able to pick up on whatever lines There's or whatever moves Thad Duvall's making through there? There we see Trevor Bollinger now, the 739 machine. Still in that third place spot, but not looking like, unless he can put on a pretty impressive run here in the final few miles of racing, doesn't look like he's going to be a part of this lead battle coming down to the finish. Again, like we say, we haven't gotten to that six and a half mile marker. The six and a half, in, in listening this morning, and that was where the trouble spots were for the uh, for the morning class racers. Uh, this is the six and a half. Okay, so we'll seven and a half then. What I was going to say uh, between this and the seven and a half then, uh, around the seven mile marker. The, 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 that's where Jared Bolton kept talking about this morning and, and Ryan Eccles. If, if Bolton can get through the seven-mile marker, if he can get through the seven-mile marker, and all I kept hearing was near the six-and-a-half, near the six-and-a-half, just past the six-and-a-half, just past the six-and-a-half, there was riders getting towed out. This happened, that happened. So this area at the near six-and-a-half to the seven-and-a-half, eight-and-a-half to the nine-and-a-half to this 11-mile marker we see coming onto the motocross track, basically the six-and-a-half to the 11, a lot of crazy things have been going on. And those crazy things may not be on camera, but they're transpiring right now. And any second now, we're going to see that shot at that FMF PowerPoint, and that is going to be the tail of tape. Will it still be Caleb Russell or will Thad Duvall have been able to pull the magic again in this section? We've seen it the opposite. We've seen Caleb Russell make up time in here. So it's not, oh, Caleb Russell still has the lead wow. as they come to FMF PowerPoint. So you got to wonder if whatever, oh, look at that. His back end steps out, but he's able to save it. Thad Duvall definitely still right there, though. Both of those guys hard on the throttle, letting that back end dance. And this one. Rodney, should somebody call the fire department? <laughs> I think they should. Uh, we, we still have a barn burner. It's, it's kind of uh, gone into a smolder at the moment, kind of so to speak, because of, it looks like Caleb has really got uh, his head uh, down and charging. But at the same time, again, we're talking, we're talking about this, this track and the changes that we've had from the last camera shot to the 11-mile marker. Here we are at the 7.5. 
again, traditionally throughout the course of this race, we've seen those changes taking place. And look at this. This is, might be a, a change that has taken place. Bollinger looks like this uh, gap might have stretched out a, a little more than the 30 seconds that we were looking at just a mile ago, as a matter of fact. I think at this point, uh, Caleb Russell and Thad Duvall have really picked up the intensity. Bollinger obviously having the speed, obviously having the condition, but something happened there that dropped him from that lead battle. And in the, in the case of right now, what's happened is the locomotive took off, and he's a car trying to catch up. He just yeah. It doesn't seem like he's got the oomph to get up there. Still hard on the throttle, absolutely charging, you know, doing everything he can. But right now, those guys are just a one notch higher on the intensity level, and that's what's caused them to be able to open up that gap. Well, I don't know if folks can tell. You can't tell but this shot because it looks still sunny and beautiful uh, outside those trees. But uh, the skies are starting to darken. The clouds are starting to roll in. The wind has been blowing a slight breeze all day long and we talked about the possibility of some showers. Johnny, I don't think it's going to happen during the race, but shortly after the race, we might start seeing some rain start to fall out here. And if anybody's left on that racetrack, ooh-wee, it's going to be a long time to get to the finish for those guys if it starts raining on them. Yeah, they say the clouds are rolling in, the storms are rolling in, so as soon as this one's over, I'm going to be headed to try and pack up, so I'm not trying to pack up in the pouring rain here in a little bit. <laughs> I don't blame you a bit. Still waiting here at the seven and a half mile marker watching for more riders to check in we were expecting to see Stu baylor he should be about to check in with us now josh strang another minute or so back behind that uh but so it looks like caleb and, and trevor or straight caleb and trevor caleb and thad trevor happens to be caleb's brother uh <laughs> caleb and uh, thad battling up front trevor bollinger back in that third place position uh Stu baylor in fourth now the minute between second and third now is what we're looking at a minute between uh, third and fourth and about a minute between fourth and fifth place position so this is really starting to settle down in that third fourth and fifth place box leader on screen caleb russell coming through the fmf powerpoint again that gap seeming to have stabilized at this point oh look uh -oh. at this caleb russell is stuck oh look at that he's stuck but he's able to get going thad duvall takes the outer on line Caleb Russell still struggling up that uphill. Thad Duvall making up a bunch of time, and wow. by the time they get to the top, he will be right on Caleb Russell's rear wheel. This one, Rodney, just got a whole lot more interesting. Another battle as we will wait for our third-place rider, Trevor Bollinger. We got a little bit of time just watching on this Sunday Creek Moto Track, Rodney. Don't need to look at results to see Jesse Ansley and Cody Barnes, only a few seconds separating them, and Mike Wachowski now has battled all the way up to and gotten around Liam Draper, which I believe put, puts him all the way up into that fifth place spot in that XC2 Pro Pro Am Pro Lights class. So those guys out there battling all within the same section of track, the XC3 guys have caught up well into the XC2 Pro Pro Lights class. So battles all over this racetrack, but the biggest, most heated one right now may very possibly be over the XC1 and overall win between the leader right now of Caleb Russell and Thad Duvall, the riders who's won here the last two years in a row, taking the wins away from Caleb Russell. Caleb Russell wanting to lay claim not only to the win today, but keep his win streak alive that he's got rolling so far here in the last couple races of 2019, but Thad Duvall badly wanting to grab back the momentum. This one's really going to come down to the wire. Just a few moments ago, Trevor Bollinger was in this battle. Now we see him in the third place spot. Still a about solid ride for this guy in a third place spot today. I'm thinking about a minute and 20 seconds now behind the leaders is what we're seeing Trevor Bollinger at. So you're right. I believe that uh, both Duvall and uh, uh, Caleb Russell have picked up the intensity of this battle here in this final lap as they roll now uh, past that nine and a half. We'll be seeing them come out on the moto track at the 11 mile marker here, probably in about a minute and a half or so. And... Uh, as we're looking at the XC2 Pro, yeah. Pro, or XC2 Pro Lights class here, Rodney, uh, Ben Kelly with a 4-minute and 14-second lead now, so he stretched that out even further despite some on-camera struggles. Austin Lee, 4 minutes and 58 seconds back, but Evan Smith only 4 seconds of wow. back of Austin Lee. The guy you said just a few moments ago you didn't really know that well, you might get an opportunity to meet him a little bit more on the podium today. That's right. We might get to get a chance to know him a lot better here as uh, he continues to battle Lee for that uh, final podium position here today as we watch here still at the nine and a half mile marker we've seen our leaders come through uh russell was leading the ball looked like the ball may have made up some time there as uh, russell struggled getting up through the monster mile there uh not only at the beginning but all the way through that monster mile all the way to the top uh somehow or another a whole totally different line completely on the outside that the ball comes around rails it and he is closing up 
hard and fast on the number one. And it almost looked like Caleb just made a little bit of a mistake there, got a little bit too hard on the throttle, grabbed more traction than expected, popped the front wheel out of the rut, and once it was on top of the rut, he was kind of, he knew if he stayed on the gas, he was going to end up stuck around his side. So he's patient enough to pull back, but you know in his head, he was absolutely freaking out knowing Thad Duvall was right behind him. Thad really railed that section, made his own line like you said up on the high side there. Absolutely pinned coming through there, made up some time, and very nearly got to the rear wheel of Caleb Russell. And they'll be coming out on the Sunday Creek Moto Track here. Look at this. A lot of guys struggling here. Our fourth place rider of Stu Baylor is really struggling through this section. He's trying to use that outside line that Thad Duvall made look so easy, but he struggled to get into it. Well, I tell you, it got to be, uh, you can tell these guys are starting to tire uh, as uh, some of our amateur class riders uh, just dropping the machines right there in front of us so these conditions have certainly taken their toll on the uh, masses including the uh, well the front of the pack we saw uh, that uh, 514 of uh, Stu Baylor he seems to be uh, struggling a little bit and again I would say conditions have uh, worn these guys out zap them uh, struggling fighting through this mud because uh, it, it takes a lot Rodney there goes the drone and it is taken off and I surely hope it's taken off for the four far corner of this Sunday Creek Moto Track That's exactly and trying to get the shots of these guys coming into the finish line as they're working their way back and I think we may in fact see is that now the riding style says it's not but it kind of looked like it might be Caleb Russell so probably about another minute if they're running a, a, now unless they're running ahead of schedule uh, we're within a minute a little less than a minute or so now we should be seeing the guys check in so I'm gonna say somewhere in the neighborhood of about 40 seconds or so before they come into this area. They're oh, due. boy, oh, boy. I see Thad Duvall leading, and I do not see Caleb Russell. Coming across the top side, and it looks to be to me. I could be wrong. There he is on screen. That is Thad Duvall leading. Caleb Russell has not made it on screen yet. It looks like Thad Duvall has wrestled this one away in the final moments. Wow. Deny, deny, deny. Caleb Russell looked to uh, take win 58 in his sixth win here, or his fifth win here at, uh, at his home track in uh, Millfield, Ohio, on the Russell family farm. But that not be the case. The home track advantage maybe on the racing side of things belonging to that 989 of Thad Duvall. He's got a lot of fan support, and he's got himself uh, three years in a row set to cross that finish line and grab that checker flag and take the win here at the Wise Coach John Penton. One more turn to go, and there it is. Thad Duvall is on his way home to sweetness once more as he captures the big 3-0 here at this John Pitton GNCC, the win of the big 3-0, I should say, and the 30th celebration. This one means a lot to him because, well, number one, straight up, he was able to beat Caleb Russell. Last year, uh, we saw him do just this, and this is kind of where the momentum was really starting to pick up, and those championship points were starting to tighten up. And if he can get right back into that kind of mode of where he was just one year ago, we might see the championship tighten up before the end of this year, and this one could come down to the wire. But when... Uh, here, the win here for uh, Thad Duval once again at the 30th running of this uh, Wise Coat John Pinton GNCC and phenomenal. Johnny, you called it. The rider that was leading at this point usually isn't leading whenever they come across the finish line. And uh, wow, and you called that what at the six and a half, seven and a half mile marker back there several miles ago, and you were exactly right. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty crazy to see how things uh, unfold and shake out, and it's. Uh, you know, pretty cool to see these guys obviously shake hands, and uh, you know they've got the uh, they've got the obviously pushing each other to the limit, uh, absolutely hanging it out, leaving everything on the track. Here comes Trevor Bollinger in that third place spot in that XC1 Pro and overall. But uh, yeah, what an absolute battle today. These guys threw down Trevor Bollinger in it for over two hours. You know he's going to be frustrated, but again, things he can build off of. He knows he can do it. He's just got to clean up the very end of these races if he wants to be the guy sitting there like Thad Duvall is right now with the win. Well, Thad Duvall once again takes the win here for the 30th celebration of this Wise Coat John Pinton GNCC. Russell was 14.8 seconds back in second place. And a minute and nine seconds back was Trevor Bollinger aboard the 739 as that will be our overall podium today. Our race time for uh, Thad Duvall, two hours, 51 minutes, and 17 seconds is what it took him to uh, complete this uh, near three-hour uh, race today. And uh, you don't, uh, I mean, 
that's pretty close. And I, I can tell you right now, they, I don't think these guys wanted any more than that today. No, I think two hours and 51 minutes was plenty. It's a warm one. It's a tough one. You can see uh, Bollinger giving his uh, team manager there, Timmy Wiegand, giving him the uh, the lowdown of exactly how things went down. And he's got his arm around him telling him, hey, buddy, you're you – Well, something definitely is uh, bothering Caleb Russell as he has uh, headed back to the uh, to the kit to the uh, pits. It could be a matter if he's got uh, a lot of grit, a lot of mud, and Sandy wants to get that all washed off. You know, these guys uh, they go down a lot. Uh, mud gets flipped up. You know, there, there's there's a number of things that that uh, could cause uh, Caleb to have to leave the winter circle like that. Uh, but uh, I can I can bet that he'll be back here pretty pretty soon with a pretty good story to tell us about what happened out there because I, I imagine each one of them have their own great individual stories to let us in on of what their perspective of this race was like. Yeah, we'll get the load on on the podium here in just a few minutes. Looks like Trevor Bollinger telling his side of the story right now and his team manager saying, man, thought, thought we maybe were going to have a one-two sweep up there, but uh, Caleb Russell getting in the middle of them. Uh, what a battle, all these guys, man, laying it on the line. Three hours of racing, two hours, 51 minutes for the leader. Uh, absolutely battling. See, you got some guys out there doing some swimming. Uh, hot day, and they wanted to cool down. So they, Oh, there he that, goes, going under. That's that. Oh, that's that. <laughs> that's that. All right. Well, that's not just any old guy. That's the guy that won the race. <laughs> that's the victory swim right there, uh, and rightfully so. Hot humid we're like looking at 88 or so degrees 87 or so degrees out here today and uh, these are the hottest temperatures i know that i think i felt here in the state of ohio so far this year so uh, i'm going to go out on a limb and say the hottest day of the year here at the uh, john pitt and gncc well i'll tell you what as it is the hottest day of the year it certainly has been a hot race let's cool off let's take a break we'll be back with podium presentations and to talk to these guys right after this Consistent clutch fuel is vital to effective starts or to confidently maneuver around obstacles on the trail. Amsoil synthetic dirt bike oil was subjected to an extreme simulated start test. After 32 simulated race starts, Amsoil synthetic dirt bike oil continued to deliver consistent clutch fuel and the clutch plates remained clean with no visible wear. The competitor's oil, however, allowed discoloration and significant wear after just 16 starts. Amsoil synthetic dirt bike oil. Give your bike the protection it needs. What is your passion? Hitting the perfect line, finding the perfect trail, routing the perfect adventure, or just living and breathing the moto life? Do you feel pride for a job well done after tackling a late night in the shop? Do you enjoy time spent with friends and family in the great outdoors? Spanning over three decades, One Name has taken the lead for supplying the best power sport parts, accessories, and apparel to fuel your passion. One name that knows it goes beyond getting you the best prices, quickest shipping, or largest selection. One name that builds and innovates for our industry. One name that teaches, helps, and supports our fellow riders, racers, and organizations. We are Rocky Mountain ATV MC. We have transformed a team of moto enthusiasts into a powerful teaching team to ensure that you make the best purchasing decision with your hard-earned cash. We build communities with fellow riders to provide you with all you need to make a good decision. See customer photos, reviews, Q&As, and more while you're on our easy-to-use website. 
Need help fast? Live chat with our specialists. Email or drop us a line. Visit us today and experience the best in OEM and aftermarket parts, accessories, apparel, and industry-leading information. We offer lightning quick shipping, free on orders over $75, a huge inventory, free apparel exchanges both ways, and customer service that leaves all others behind. Experience one name that leads all others. Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. And welcome back to GNCC Live as uh, riders are now cooling off in the pond here at uh, Millfield and Sunday Creek Raceway. is It's been another hot one here, folks. That's one thing that uh, riders leading into this one have talked about. They've talked about mud. They talked about dust and they talked about heat. That seems to be the three major factors that uh, make up the, the John Pinton GNCC. And once again, uh, another thing that makes it up is great racing. We saw that one basically right down to the wire. It was a 15 second cap at the checkers, but man, we saw so many lead changes, Johnny Gallagher, throughout the course of this race. Unforgettable uh, battle, no doubt, here for the 30th running of the John Pinton. Absolutely. And the, you know, the uh, live timing and scoring may show 15 seconds, but you could see there in the the last moto track, once uh, Thad knew he had it, uh, he let up, and you could see Caleb Russell knew, and when he didn't have it, he let up. Right. So that, you know, hard to tell exactly what that gap could have or would have been, maybe more, maybe less, but the bottom line is they battled it down inches apart, less than a mile to go, and here in a couple minutes we'll get the story of how it unfolded. Caleb Russell was in the lead last we saw when they popped out on the uh, Sunday Creek moto track. Thad Duvall out front with a comfortable lead. Something transpired in that section. Judging by the, uh, you know, the handshake and the words afterwards, doesn't look like it was anything anybody's mad about. Uh, you know, disappointed maybe if you're Caleb Russell, elated if you're Thad Duvall. And, uh, you know, ultimately we won't know exactly what transpired until we get the story from them. Right. And uh, we'll be heading down with Mikey Waynes to the finish line here in just a couple of moments to get that uh, word on exactly what happened. In the meantime, let's check in with uh, some of our other classes here that are checked in with these uh, seven laps complete just to give you a heads up on how this is breaking down. Duvall, Russell, Bollinger, your top three. Stu Baylor checking in in fourth. Uh, Josh Strang will take the number five position. Ben Kelly checks in in sixth overall, taking the win in the XC2250 Pro Lights class. Josh Toth will take seventh overall. Ricky Russell will take eighth overall. Uh, ninth overall will be Grant Baylor from that XC1 Pro class, and we're waiting on second place, whom we expect to be our 10th place overall and second place in the XC2250 Pro class, and uh, we expect that to be Craig DeLong. Well, it looks like uh, we're ready to go now. Mikey Waynes down in the uh, winner's circle. Well, thanks, Rodney. Yeah, down here with uh, second place finisher here today, Caleb Russell. Caleb, uh, this was one heck of a John Pitton, man. Not the result you're looking for, but uh, talk to us through this. Yeah, it was a tough track. It was really... Um it's kind of, it was a little bit like last race, but the uh, <coughs> the dirt was a little harder in the woods, actually. It was uh, packed up really nice, but there's still some, uh, it's just got a hard base, so it's slick. There's not like, it's, it's, it's like good like like traction where the, the, the top of the roost is and the fluff, and then uh, once you like dig a rut, like it just, it's slick underneath. So it's brutal to try to get going and finding the, the ruts that didn't have the roots in them like halfway up, and then that still had traction at the top. So it was a little bit of a... Uh, you know, follow the leader day for me. I was just trying to uh, ride behind Thad, and uh, Bollinger caught up. He was riding really good. He was going fast, and I'm not sure what happened to him there on the last lap, or going in the last lap, but uh, I just kind of bided my time and got in the lead there when Thad uh, gassed, and I just tried to hang on to the finish, and I was doing a really good job. I hit all my marks really good, and, um, man, the guy just stopped in the rut. I mean, can I... I rode a flawless race other than that, you know. Made a couple mistakes, obviously, but, uh, you know, I didn't throw it away. I just kind of got robbed there on the last, but that, that was in position. He was riding really well, so hats off to him, and, uh, yeah, just frustrating. It's twice this year I've uh, just got held up, so. Got held up, man. Well, Caleb, also, by the way, hey, congratulations on the upside. You're going to be a dad again. Wife's pregnant, obviously, and uh, we're going to have a, another another kid, so uh, it's just, life's exciting. All right, there you go. Caleb Russell finishing second place here overall. <laughs> that audio fading in and out. Uh, hopefully the folks at home could hear it, but we don't know exactly how that unfolded. We know Thad Duvall said he had a couple mistakes, but uh, I believe uh, it looks like he may be ready now. Maybe we'll get Thad Duvall's side, and hopefully we'll get to hear exactly how that final pass was made. <laughs> 
Well, you know, amazingly, you know, a lot of times you see Caleb Russell in a scenario, in a situation like this, there's a lot of frustration, but you didn't really recognize the frustration out of Caleb. Uh, he seems to be satisfied with the fact that he didn't get the win, but uh, obviously disappointed in that same fact at the same time. Let's head back down to Mikey Waynes. Uh, thanks, Rodney. Hopefully the mic is working now. I don't know if I'm just a little too far away or what. Uh, but, hey, Thad Duvall taking the overall win here today. You just got done taking a dip in the, in the pond. pond. Yeah, it was a brutal hot day out there. And Man, like halfway through the race, it started getting really dark, and I'm like, oh, man, oh, please don't please don't rain, please don't rain. It was actually a little gnarlier than what I think I anticipated it to be. I thought it would be a little bit um, better as, like, uh, dirt conditions-wise, but, man, it got super ruddy and just uh, made for a long day. And, you know, me and Caleb were just kind of doing our own thing, and then halfway through, Trevor caught us out of the middle of nowhere, and um, he actually got in the lead and was, was ripping, and, you know, we got the two-lap board, and it was just um, – yeah, I tried to ride my own race, and then, you know, Trevor, he made a mistake, and I took over the lead, and then, then I crashed, and then, uh, you, know, we, you know, we got the white flag, and, um, yeah, the last really bad hill, uh, luckily my dad was there and um, pointed me a good line, and Caleb got bottled up behind the lapper and his rut, and I was able to pass him, and then, uh, yeah, the last two miles was just full out mud, like, go as fast as you can and hold on, and, um, yeah, just got it done, it, it's, I can't believe I've won this race two years in a row. And, um, yeah, to do it in front of all my fans, it's, it's, it's crazy. You know, it's the whole time people were screaming. It's like it's, un it's, it's crazy out there. Yeah, I love it. I, I love the races. I love this race. And, um, yeah, to beat Caleb at his home farm, it, it's pretty cool. There you go. And Ohio's own, the winner right there, Thad Duvall. What a day we've had here today at the 30th running of this uh, John Penton GNCC. Uh, Johnny Gallagher, reflections and thoughts about this weekend? Wow, just wow. Uh, that was everything that the, you know, not that the last race wasn't exciting in its own right, but this one was just, uh, it was, it kept you on the edge of your seat the whole time. These guys battled it out. Hats off to the top three, the top five, the top ten. Tough day, tough track. All these guys absolutely killing it out there, and I can't wait to get, do it again in two weeks. I'll tell you one thing, uh, I'm right there with